Hello everyone, welcome to Fast Friday here at the four-wheel drive off-road European Championships. It's the penultimate day of action here in Trelleborg in Sweden and that means two rounds of practice today for the four-wheel drive buggies followed by the opening three rounds of qualifying. Our coverage today here at RC Racing TV is brought to you by Team Durango and the DEX 410 V4, by VRC Pro and, of course, by J Concepts. And we want to thank EFRA as well. You can check out EFRA.ws for all the news about the European Championship events. Now, as I said, the, uh, the guys have got two rounds of practice this morning, and the first round of that is underway on the track at the moment. The organisers have reshuffled the heats for today based on the sort of practice speeds we saw yesterday. So we've got a much more even spread of drivers, um, and the drivers should ideally be in groups with drivers of cars with the same sort of speeds. That should make the qualifying rounds later today even easier and people can focus on getting a fast lap and a fast five minute time rather than overtaking cars. Now don't forget if you missed anything from yesterday or the two-wheel drive event, you can find it all on the RC Racing TV archive. Just log on to rcracing.tv and you can find everything on there which includes the fantastic inside look we had at Lee Martin's TQ two-wheel drive buggy. And again, I want to say a big thank you to Lee and all his sponsors for making that possible for us, allowing us to have a great look inside the buggy. And thank you to all of you for all your feedback on that, uh, on that feature we did as well. You can also check out all our pit walks and everything else we've covered from across the week here in Sweden so far. And we've got loads more to come today. We'll do, of course, we'll do another pit walk. We'll catch up with the top drivers and we'll bring you as much on-track action as we can as we begin those uh, three important rounds of qualifying to set the grid for the A-finals. It will come up tomorrow, Saturday, here in Sweden. Now, don't forget, as you have been doing all week long, you can interact with us via our Facebook group or via the YouTube channel. And I'm going to head straight back up to the commentary box and talk to James. And we're going to get people straight away into the Facebook group, as uh, there's uh, quite a lot of you waiting, I believe. James, I'll uh, pass it over to you. Hello. Good morning. Uh, yes, there are a lot of people uh, that have joined overnight. Obviously, news is spreading fast about our Schumacher uh, competition to win the um, Schumacher Cat four-wheel drive buggy. Um, you need to be a member of our Facebook group uh, and once you've done this uh, you can check out the question there uh, the question Ollie is just catch my breath and run back sorry, up the sorry caught you off guard there you did uh, right so it's you, really you easy explain it better than me all you've got to do is go to our Facebook group and you'll find at the very top of the page at the moment the post there for me, starting with time for another competition. In case you missed it, we had a competition during the Tudor event, but that one's closed now, so we'll focus on our new competition here. If you want to win that Schumacher Cat K1 Aero, all you have to do is tell us how thick are the, the fibre shock mounts on the Cat K1 Aero. Can I just put an answer down as quite thick? Uh, no, oh, it doesn't okay. have to be a, a, a thickness in millimetres, please. Okay. Millimetres. Um, and, uh, well, you may know that one already, or you may not. Oh. As uh, the organisers in the hall are playing around with some uh, sound equipment there. Um, yeah, it's right. We're not being invaded by transformers. That was just a, a, an issue with the PA system. The, uh, anyway, yes. Yeah, so if you want to keep up to date, if you want to find out the answer to our question, you could always maybe check out Schumacher's website. You might well find the answer on there. Now, because quite a few of you, we expect to get this one right, we're going to put a tie-break question on there. Question number two, therefore, is how long did it take uh, for us ordering our lunch here at the, uh, at the Trackside Cafe between ordering our lunch and receiving our food yesterday in, uh, in minutes and seconds, please? And uh, really please see that this time, everyone is putting the seconds down straight away. So uh, you can find that question. You can answer it on our Facebook group. Don't post it in the chat or anything like that. Just go onto our Facebook group, find that post, and make sure you comment in the section below. We've already had nearly 200 entries. 200 entries. Two, for this competition? Yeah, for this competition alone. What? I haven't but, looked uh, recently, to be honest with you. Oh, my word. Please yeah. do keep the, uh, your answers coming in. We will close the competition before a final number two tomorrow which is probably going to be about 5 o'clock in the afternoon, mm -hmm. your local time here, 4 o'clock if you listen to us back in the UK, and we will announce the winner between A final number 2 and A final number 3, depending on how long it takes us to sort through all the answers. Yes, I have so, a feeling uh, it's going to take us quite a long time. We will close the competition at 5pm local Swedish time tomorrow. So you've got all of today and most of tomorrow to get your answers in. If you need to try and find out what the answer is, you've got plenty of time to kind of do some research. And then maybe, maybe also come over to Sweden and visit the cafe yourself and see how long it takes you to order the food. See if that gives you an indication of how long it might have taken us. There'd be a substantial amount of investment required 
when you think about flights, accommodation, hire car. And the food. And the food itself. Yeah. To just, just come over to see how long it would take you. It depends on the time of day as well. Yeah. It, maybe, we ordered, maybe we had an early lunch and just ordered a, a couple of bottles of drink and some chocolate. Maybe we had a full lunch at lunchtime with a, with a long queue there. So there was a lot of food for them to get through. Maybe we threw... Maybe we threw away the RCTV uh, catering rule book and just went for a full five-course banquet. Maybe we did, yeah. Who yeah. knows? What did we do? What did we do? Nick, if you're listening, you can text us and we'll tell you what we actually had. It was well within budget. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, right, with it being Fast Friday, I'm going to do a Fast Facebook member request okay, Friday because we've got so many people waiting to join. It's only fair to get you all in nice and quick so you can get your answers in on aforementioned competition. So, with no further ado, Colin Carr, welcome to the group. Brendan, Fred, Roden, Rodden, Roden. I'll go with Roden. Five friends in the group. Anyone I know? No. I'll add you anyway. Hello and welcome to the group. Welcome along. Juan Antonio Bermudez. Bermudez. One friend in the group. Who is it? No, don't know. I'll add you anyway. Welcome to the group. Dennis Wolf. One mutual friend. Dallas or Skelding. Dallas or Skelding? Uh, I'm going to go... Who, who, who is it? Sorry? Who Dennis Wolf. I'm going to go with Dallas. It's got to be Dallas, hasn't it? Of course, it's Dallas, it's Dallas is our mutual friend. Hello and welcome to the group. Dennis. Darren Garvey. Another mutual friend. Now, this sounds like an English name, so I'm, I'm going to go Skelding on this one. No, it's Dallas again. It's always Dallas. Dallas is the mutual friend of Dallas. everybody. Uh... David Jose, Dallas has a mutual friend. This is getting quite a common theme. Hello, David. Welcome to the group. Mark Simpson, a member of two groups. No friends. No other friends in the group. Very much a newcomer to this scene. Hello, Mark Simpson, and welcome. Jesper Jensen, well, if you don't pronounce the J on Jesper, it's Jesper Jensen. I don't know. Either way, you know who you are. Um, you have a big brown monster furry looking thing shouting at uh, something small and yellow like a gecko in a field you know who you are welcome to the group peter fabry peter fabry again it's very early on day five day five yes you have to indeed. day five you'll have to excuse my pronunciation hello peter welcome to the group daniel schumacher nine friends in the group anyone i know no nope. Hello, welcome to the group. Chris Packer, member of four groups. Uh, picture there of you getting married by the look of it. Hello, welcome to the group. Emmanuel de Amico, 78 friends in the group. One mutual friend, Dallas. Why haven't you joined earlier? Hello, and welcome to the group. Connie Addison, 35 friends in the group. No one I know. Hello, welcome. All these people, of course, can now go and put their answers down for the Schumacher four-wheel drive buggy competition with our very difficult questions uh, that require years, years and years worth of research, yep. pro product research and development, uh, theses, thesis, 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 thesis. Thesi, Thesi. Uh, on uh, on all types of remote controlled automobiles. Only then will you know the answer. No, you won't. Just um, pop to the Schumacher website. Can I also just point out? You can. That you must be a real person to enter yes. this competition. You cannot be a pet yes. or a club or you, shop or a track or an organisation, I'm afraid, because we have to give this prize to an actual real person. To an actual real person. Right, so you a must be a real person. A and if you're a track or an organisation, my guess is that you've already got some buggies. Otherwise, in essence, you are just a loop of concrete dirt or astroturf in yes. the middle of nowhere that does nothing. So you've already got cars. You don't need another one. Let the real people win this. And also, I'd like to point out that you can only enter once. And it's only your first answer we will accept. Yes. So if you've already put a post down there, don't put another post in there. No. We'll only be able to accept your first answer. No double dipping. No double dipping, indeed. <laughs> uh, ben Mohammed Farid. Hello. Well, is that you or your son? Are you just a very young RC racer, or is that your dad? Uh, is that a dad taking a picture of his son? I don't know, but welcome to the group. And his uh, Facebook banner is Schumacher. 
Oh, he might have some inside gossip then, or knowledge. He might know the answer already without research, and he might be that much of a Schumacher fan. He just knows all of the, all of the sizes, dimensions, millimetres, uh, everything about every Schumacher ever made. Who knows? Yeah. Pascal Souffle. I'm sure I added you yesterday, or did I just see you yesterday after we stopped streaming? Who knows? Maybe just look in for another shout-out. Either way, if you've gone to the extremes of... Um, of different de, de liking us and uh, sorry demembering yourself and then remembering yourself uh, just to get a shout out that that's fine but just go to the YouTube channel say hi on there save all that hassle I'll give you a shout out hello welcome to the group Pascal Sami Huta hello and welcome to the group uh, someone else has joined whilst we've been talking oh Dali May Maybe they're watching along live now. They might be. Uh, where is he from? I can't tell. His friends seem to have very English in names. It could be England. It could be America. Who knows? Judging by the naff weather and the green in the greenery in the background of his uh, Facebook banner, I'm, I'm going England. Oh, no, I don't know. No, it tells me down the left. I could just look on the left. Um, he lives in um, Adelaide, South Australia. South South Australia. Yeah. Um, and he is the owner of S A Hobbies. Wow, we've already got an awful lot of people watching online straight away. So good morning to you wherever you're watching it around the world. Thanks for getting up early or getting to the office early to stick us on. I'm watching on live. Don't forget you can comment on the YouTube channel as well. If you're watching on YouTube, the comments box on the right-hand side. But I'll let you get through with adding some people as we uh, build up the action on the track as well. In the words of Lionel Richie, hello. No? You're not like that, Ollie? Uh, it's, it's not the best. It is Lionel Richie, isn't it? Mm. I nearly said Lionel Blair. Lionel Blair. Classic. Gavin Suckling. Four members in the group. Hello. Welcome to the group. Dally May, I didn't add you. Hello. Welcome to the group. I've got two more people here and they're tingling my spam senses oh hey. only because you've not got a Facebook profile picture I right. can't believe that people don't have Facebook profile pictures in this day and age maybe you're just a really private person yeah and Telford works at hmm works at Telford Works at Telford College and Arts. Went to Phoenix Secondary School. From Telford, lives in Telford. Films. Doesn't say how many friends he's got. David Williams. Uh, I can't call it. Of course, Telford, home of uh, the Neo race. Do you know David Williams, Phil? David Williams. It, not David Williams, no. No. <laughs> Phil might know David Williams. <laughs> London's a very yeah. small place. They all know each other down that neck of the country. So but Phil and I never meet in London. No. I, I, no, I, I never meet you in London. No. That's because Phil's never in London. He no, has such like a busy, hectic somewhere. lifestyle. <laughs> L London's it's just got this place that he just drops into, <laughs> necks an espresso, swaps out his equipment, yep. new clean pants socks, bam, he's straight out on the next flight to the next event. That's just Phil's lifestyle. It's just the lifestyle he chose to lead. Is that your real address on the um, Facebook Neo Buggy page? Oh dear. I'm now being called a stalker. Now. <laughs> it was uh, sorry for looking at your Neo Buggy page and having to see your address with a map down the left hand side. All right, that's it. I'm not going on that page again. Now, do, do go and check out Neo Buggy's page. Loads of photos, and obviously, Phil has a website as well neobuggy.net. I can't believe Phil from Neobuggy just called me a stalker. I'm really hurt. I feel really like... You really are central London there. 
David, I'm going to add you. Please don't let me down. I, I don't think you're a spammer. If I see any fake sunglasses, I'm not going to be happy. Hello, welcome to the group. And Krista Carlson, this is another one where I'm not sure. One like. I'm going to add you. Don't let me down. Not in a stalker way at all, but it would only take me 26 minutes to get from my office to Neo Buggy HQ. That's the long way round as well. Yeah. You could walk it in... No, no walking, walking takes uh, an hour and 22 minutes, apparently. I don't have that long on a lunch break. Hello to anyone who's watching me from my work. I hope you are working hard. Hello to anyone watching me from my work, but I don't think they are because I've not sent any of them the link. Oh, there's Gerd. Morning to Hang on. Can we just... Right, whilst we assess the track, we can confirm that there are no signs of grass or uh, any grass sprouting from any areas of the track yeah, at so, the moment. Uh, I don't know whether we need more time for the grass to grow or uh, I bought the wrong sort of grass seed. It could have been the wrong grass. It could have been the wrong water. It could have been the wrong sort of water, yes. That's a good point. Maybe this soil doesn't lend itself to Gerd's gardening methods. Who knows? It's Swedish it's soil, really soil with a German garden method. You know. What's the difference between soil and dirt? Uh, I like to think of soil. You plant things in soil, but dirt is just dirt that doesn't have things planted in it. Right. Dirt gets, like, ridden on, walked on, raced on. Okay. You don't race on soil. Not wanting to avoid the... Uh, not talking about the track, but are we done in terms of our Facebook member groups? Uh, at- we're done. Okay, I just want to say hello to the first four people to comment on the YouTube channel. Hello to Ian Thompson, David Fraser, Chirivita, and Rene Jesperson. Where's hello Fanta? To all of you. Where's Fanta? I don't know yet. I, don't I know. need my daily Fanta check in. Right. Come on, dude. Don't let me Talking down. Talking of people, I guess. Talking we're, of the we, reason we actually, why we're here. Yeah, why we are here. <laughs> Let's check out some of the action on the track now. As we're on group number 12 out of 14. So these are, I guess, the C group of drivers from yesterday's open practice day. Um, drivers, I guess, not using that yesterday's practice day to, to go to the absolute speed, but this should be a good indication of who is quick and who isn't. And fast in this heat at the moment is our favourite driver, who I think we should create a fan page for today. Jesper. Jesper Rasmussen, car number eight, the purple and white coloured car. Uh, he is coming around in front of our camera position now, going to make the right hand off camera turn and launch over the triples. So Jesper from Denmark out in front in this one. has got a best lap of 17.4, which is pretty quick indeed. I mean, yesterday we saw the absolute fastest lap of a 16.9. I've had a thought if we did set up a uh, fan page for uh, Jesper. Yeah. Jesper's surname. Rasmussen. Maybe we could adapt the uh, famous Boney M song. Uh, and, and amend the lyrics using his surname instead of Rasputin. And like people would go onto the Facebook page and have that music that we'd recorded. And we could spend some time in the studio and lay some tracks down. We could. But yeah. We, I'd rather focus on the track. No, actually. no, no. If we're going to do this, we do it properly. Right. We either have the Facebook page and his own dedicated musical personal track, or we okay. just forget it. I'm but not, as time not... comes to the end, uh, yes, but he's fastest in that heat. Is he? Yeah. With... Uh, Pulls off a very fast 16 lap run with a best lap of 17.4. In fact, everybody in that heat is into the 17s in terms of lap times. Who else is looking quick? Tom Cockrell with a 17.6 with that Schumacher Cat K1 Aero, which you can win. Not, not Tom's actual car. I hadn't realised we were on Group 12 as I was going into remixing Boney M songs. Do apologise. That's that, quite that's right. a, that's, That kind of conversation is a Group 10 or below subject. But I've now got that song in my head. On loop. On loop. On loop. 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 Do you know why I'm saying silly things now? It's that time of the day already. <laughs> it's five days in. I'm surprised we're not just going <laughs> down the microphone. Uh, and Rene Jesperson says it's nice to see Jesper's lap times are getting better. Yes, it is. We'll see how fast the next few groups are to see how relatively fast it is compared to everyone else. As we are, have Group 13, they're going to get a couple of warm laps, then we are going to set them off in number order and let's run through them in number order for you okay. as we are uh, I've not put any graphics on the screen yet we're going to have some graphics on the screen now so we can now actually see you should now be able to see on the right hand side of the screen the well that's basically the start order and you'll be able to see the lap times or the, the orders as we go through the run 
The drivers are Yuna Hatton, Miguel Matas, Mark Lovsky, Reno Savoya, Petri Strom, Christopher Svensson, Daniel Kobovic, Peter Binish, and Joachim Nikolaisen. That is who we have in this group, group number 13. Uh-oh. Here on Fast Friday at the 2014 two, uh, four-wheel drive European Championships, we are brought to you by Team Durango and the DEX 410 V4, by VRC Pro and by J Concepts. Thank you to all of them for making this possible. And, of course, thank you to Efra. The current local time here, just after 20 past 10 in the morning. So uh, if you're watching on the archive, you can skip around. It's 20 past 10 right now. I'm going to go and put a battery in a camera. Okay. Would you like a coffee? I... I'm going to go hot chocolate again. That was <sighs> another good hot chocolate. Hot it chocolate's is, such a bedtime a, drink. This does... Well, it is, but... Uh, you know. Um, however, it does... Uh, I'm well aware of, obviously, a very popular Swedish thing is IKEA, with this self-assembly flat pack furniture. My hot chocolates are also self-assembly. <laughs> I get given the, the, the constituent parts and then make it myself. So maybe that's just the way they do things here in, in Sweden. It's just efficiency. It is, it is indeed. Right, do you want to go and nip off and get some drinks? Stu, would you like a drink? Is Stu going to mime a symbol? He's pointing at the monitor. He huh. wants a monitor to drink. No, oh no, he wants, he wants some generic, dr- generic uh, carbonated drink. But he wants Mountain Dew. Do the Dew. Oh, you've dropped some headphones. I'm going to grab those headphones and put them on my head so I can hear me. And uh, Stu's going to stand <laughs> long, look, staring longing, long, longingly at the table as uh, James picks up the can. and pass, uh, We've done live commentary on Stu taking a drink now. So uh, the can has been passed up to Stu. He's holding it in his right hand there just with a couple of fingers. He, he smells it carefully to make sure there's no bugs or anything inside it. And uh, then takes a nice long swig, uh, clears his throat, gets back on the camera. So here we go then with group number 13. And it is Yuna Hattonen, car number one fastest so far. The, uh, the young Scandinavian driver. No, sorry, I can't even read my own screen. Car number seven. Seven and one, not the same number at all. So uh, around the far side of the circuit, up onto the tabletop, off the tabletop, bright yellow and blue. Really easy to spot on this track. You know, won the B final in two-wheel drive and probably got the largest round of applause at the prize giving of any driver, even more so than Jorn, who took the overall victory. And I think that's well-deserved. The youngster from Finland leading this, group number 13, practice Controlled practice one, I guess we'll call it. As no, we've now sorry, we've now had a change. Daniel Kobovic, car seven, to the lead, F- battling with Yuna Hassan. So I've got those two drivers completely muddled up. It was of course Daniel Kobovic who won the B final. Yuna was up into the A final. Both of them are young Scandinavian drivers, driving very very well, uh, showing off their skills this week. As we're now going to switch over to Yuna, car number one. That's why I got confused. Because Yuna's car number one and, and Daniel's car seven. They, the cars don't look anything like each other, so I do apologise to both of them. So we're now wa- we are now watching Yuna Hassan, who was in the A final in the two-wheel drive class. Two-wheel drive, generally the preferred class for most of them. They don't race an awful lot of four-wheel drive, but uh, it's right at the top here of the B heat, so going to be challenging for an A final place, no doubt. Let's run you through a few other cars in this race. We've all now got Miguel Matias moving up to second in the number two car, running for Team X-Ray, of course. Comes off the uh, tabletop, down the back straight, hitting the Durango doubles in front of Stu now. X-Ray did not have the event they wanted in two-wheel drive, let's be honest, but uh, much more on the pace here in the four-wheel drive class. As we've got a couple of cars spinning around in front of us, but uh, here we are with uh, Miguel Matias running second, Daniel Kovic is third, Let's now grab uh, the other X-ray in this heat, Renault Savoia, car number four, with his classic orange colours coming around in front of Sue, orange and yellow, making the right-hand turn. Over the triples he goes. Lands that very neatly. Then the uh, TV double and the J-Concepts jump. We've got about... What have we got left? Two minutes to go in this one. So we're watching Renault Savoia moving up to the fourth spot with his X-ray. Again, going through the centre of the circuit now. 
the jump's a lot easier in four-wheel drive, but still can be very tricky as Renault is just uh, pointing out there as he clips the end of the J-Concepts jump. So that is Renault Savoia in the number four. Michael Orlovsky, car three, now moves up to fourth, taking fourth off of Renault. And Michael, where is Michael at the moment? He will be right in front of Shu now. Red and white. Team Durango buggy. Oh, gets the triple very, very wrong. They're landing on the third jump. But back underway straight away. Clipping the end of the J-Concepts. Uh, you can see how one small mistake there really throws off your rhythm for the entire lap. As he slides it down the back straight, spinning out almost as he uh, tries to get the power down in his DX410 V4. Making the right-hand turn over the triples. Again, cl clipping the end of the triples there, but uh, running in running in fourth. Patrice Strom is in fifth. Savoia now... S no, Patrice Strom is sixth. Savoia now seventh. Joachim Nicholson in eighth. And Peter Pinnish in ninth. It's Hattonen. And now Christopher Svensson jumps up to second. Car number six. That is the bright orange buggy. All orange going over the TV double. Through the J Concepts jump now. Rolling over. Local driver and uh, good friends with Phil from Neo Buggy. Known as the top privateer. And we believe rocking the HB D413 that Ty Tessman has done so well with. No factory HB drivers here, so uh, a lot of eyes on this Swedish driver to uh, find out how far up the grid he can get. Not a factory driver, as we say. Not even sponsored, I don't believe, by HB. But also pitman for uh, David Ronnefelk. Although that's not kind of working out so much for them this weekend because uh, Christopher showing so much speed that he can't actually pit for Ronnefelk because Ronnefelk is up in the very next heat. So uh, Ronnefelk having to draft in some other help in uh, putting his car down, but I'm sure there are plenty of people from the uh, Kosho Orion, a.k.a. Stable, from Sweden that are going to be able to help him out. Uh, no, it's, not, it's none of those. It's actually going to be Ben Jemison who's got his car at the far side of the circuit. Not quite sure why you'd give your car to Ben Jemison, really. It's not a good idea, is it? Ben, again, one of those, uh, those very popular drivers on the internet. And uh, he's been up to our country box quite a few times so far this weekend. Uh, wanting to... Uh, basically, he wants to get a sight at the timing screen as well. And we've got, we've got the best view in the house here. Unless you're a driver and then you haven't got a timing screen or, or the referee up on the driver's stand, we have the best view in the house here. Great view over the track and a timing screen right in front of me. And I've got also the brilliant th thought of just being able to look at Stu Noble. All day. All day long. Just stare at, just stare at the side of his head. He doesn't, look, he doesn't he looks uncomfortable now. Oh dear. It's not like I'm staring at you while you're sleeping. Good morning to all of you. If you haven't listened to us before, yes, it gets weird this early in the morning. Hope you are enjoying our coverage. Brought to you by Team Durango and the DX410 V4 VRC Pro and J Concepts. And of course, thank you to Ephra and the Trelleborg Motor Club for making us feel very, very welcome indeed here, giving us, really giving us everything we need. We've got a fantastic internet stream, which means you should be able to watch this in HD. And I believe there are a number of you not watching HD. Naughty, naughty you. All you've got to do is go to the little cog, normally in the bottom right-hand side of the YouTube's, YouTube stream, click on it, and then click on 720. And the 720 stream is broadcasting in glorious HD. So that's why I'm not in front of the camera very often today because it's in HD and you don't want to see that. You want to see these beautiful buggies driving around the dirt circuit here in Trelleborg in southern Sweden as the cars get gridded up, ready for, uh, ready for this practice seat. Group 14, running through the cars. Jorn Neumann, number one. Hooper Honegel, number two. David Ronnefelk, number three. Lee Martin, number four. Robert Battier, number five. Martin Bayer, number six. Neil Craig is number seven. Kerry Samella, number eight. And the screen's just... Something a bit of a hissy fit. And uh, Patrick Hofer, number nine. Nine cars in this heat. Stagger start as per a kind of a mock qualifying run here almost. Jorn Neumann with the DX410 V4 will lead them off. Here we go. So Jorn with the Durango, clearing the Durango double on lap number one. Does the right-hander over the triples. 
Let's give them a lap or so, and we'll start looking at some lap times as well. I didn't really look at lap times in the last one. Let's uh, try and bring that up on my screen as well. What sort of times were we hitting in the previous... No, I don't want that one. I want that one. In fact, I don't want any of those. I've got another screen to find here. If you do want to find any of the timings from this meeting, you can go to myrcm.ch. Click on Trelleborg's Motor Club. You'll find there the European Championships. You can click on that, and it's all there for you. Uh, give you some ideas of some lap times. It was it was only kind of around 17 to 18 second lap times we saw in the last heat. 17.5 from Yuna, I think, one of the quick laps. So that's 17.4 from Tom Cockrell. Looking pretty good at the moment as we go into this one. And no longer, to be fair, is that looking pretty good because we've got a 17.2 from your Neumann. 17.2 from Lee Martin, who we are now following on the screen. Car number four, the white, blue and orange Yokomo down the back straight now. 17.2 from... No, sorry, that's, that's Jorn and Lee dropping down the uh, list uh, the list being sorted. For these, these control practice rounds, we're going to get a ranking based on the best two consecutive laps. So not just about swinging one fast lap, but it's two in a row together. And that's put Ronne Felk on top from Craig Neumann. Battier now moves to second. Craig down to third. Then Neumann, Martin, Hoffer, Salmella, Honegal and Bayer. Best lap times, though, are falling to Neumann and Martin with 17 twos. Craig... Battier and Ronnefelk 17-4s as Ronnefelk sticks in a 17-3. Closing the gap to those front runners. Hupo has done a 17-4. 17-7 for Bayer, 17-8 for Selmela and 17-9 for Hoffer. That's the running order and that's, that's the times as we have got three minutes left. Let's pick up Neil Craig running in the... No, let's pick up David Ronnefelk, sorry. Running in the lead of this heat technically on those two combined laps. Goes over the J-Concepts jump now. Does the left, then the right on the flat section up onto the tabletop hill over the VRC roller. Getting up on two wheels as he powers it down the back straightaway. David Ronnefelk with a 17.3 best lap time. Trying to get that lap time down as we are halfway through this practice. Group 14, round one of control practice. He lands the buggy sideways off the uh, J-Concept jump, which allows him to get perfectly squared up as he rolls it as he goes over the VRC roller. And that was a 16.9 lap time. Boom, we're below the 17-second lap bracket again. David Ronfelk is the man, the fastest guy on the track, 16.9. Let's now pick up Martin Bayer as he jumps to the top of the time sheets on the two, con two consecutive laps. The orange and blue buggy clearing the triples. Over the TV double now, then the J Concepts jump. Martin Bayer the fastest on the two laps, followed by Ronnefelk, Martin and Neumann. 17-2 from Bayer. 16-9 still from Ronnefelk is the best individual lap. Neumann sticks in a 17-1. Lee Martin's got 17-2. 17-4 for Battier, Craig and Honigal. Then a 17-8 for Salmella and a 17-9 for Hoffer. Martin Bayer, the defending European champion, is fastest. He's got up to speed with his X-ray buggy. Renfeld is second. Norman is third. Martin is fourth. Let's now switch over to Robert Battier, who runs in fifth. Robert is going to be coming in front of our camera position right now. Car number five getting hooked up on the pipe as Lee Martin, his teammate, both Yokomo cars, together clearing the triples. Then the TV double, and then the J-Concepts jump now. Battier keeping very close to the pipe. Lee trying to have a bit more speed around the outside. Battier in the sixth spot as Hupo jumps up to the fifth spot with a 17.3. Nobody else into the 16s. It's just Ronnefelk with that 16.9. Martin, uh, Neumann the close with 17.1. Lee Martin and Martin Bayer. All the Martins there. Martin Bayer and Lee Martin, 17.2. As we have got one minute left. This is group 14, practice round one of the 2014 four-wheel drive off-road Euros. About 45 seconds to go. As we got a few mistakes there from uh, from Robert Battier. Martin Bash still in, Ron Felk still second. Anything else in terms of lap times being stuck in there? Nothing really fast coming up at the moment. 30 seconds left though. Has anyone got anything left in the tank as we run through the time? 20 seconds to go. It's still Ronnefelk, 16.9, the best lap, followed by Norman with a 17.1. Anyone got anything else? 15 to go. One more lap around the Trelleborg circuit here. And that 
is basically time expired. The guys are finishing their last lap. Fastest will be on two laps combined. Martin Bayer with a best of a 17.1. Best single lap, Ronnefelk, 16.9. Neumann, 17.1. Then officially our finishing order, Bayer, Ronnefelk, Neumann, Martin Honigal, Batea, Craig, Salmella and Hoffer. That is how they finish up. As that completes the first practice for today. One more round of practice. We're going to now move into happy hour. The final practice. Okay, we've got eight and a half minutes to the start. That will kick off in about eight minutes' time. So uh, I'm going to quickly grab a coffee or a hot chocolate, which has now come fully assembled. I don't have to make it myself this time. And uh, we'll be back with you in eight minutes' time as we kick off uh, the final practice. Final practice underway, eight minutes' time here in Trelleborg.
Okay, so we're about to get qualifying underway. Hello to everyone watching along on the YouTube stream. Thanks for your comments. Uh, hello to Chris O'Donoghue. Yes, ready to run hot chocolate for me. Perfect. Um, so uh, here we go. Group number one of final practice here on Fast Friday at 2014 four-wheel drive European Championships. And I've noticed Stu has picked up um, one of the Greek drivers here, Manolis, running his own design of buggy. And we know Phil from Neo Buggy is trying desperately to get a uh, an under the hood with that car, but uh, shaking his head now, it's just it's not going. With, Manolis is not letting us take any photos of that car. So this is the best you're going to get, I'm afraid. Our, our long range zoom on Manolis' car as he clears the Durango double. back through the infield section, but out in front in this heat is Roy in the four, followed by Iaco in the six. Uh, Nicholas in the one moves to second now. So our leader, car number four. It's Roy, Nicholas, Jorgen, Iaco, Pavor, Arne, Maximilian and Manolis. That's running order as we have got four minutes left in group one, round two. Final practice here for the four-wheel drive US. Last chance for drivers to tune their cars. Before we get ready to kick off with qualifying. Qualifying starting at 12.45 local time. It's 11.45 UK time. And uh, you know what? We'll go through... We'll pretty much go through the entire first round so you get a chance to see every single driver out on track. We'll try and go through the entire first round of qualifying. We'll splice in some pit walks and stuff as well with that as we uh, go through the different qualifying rounds today. But our coverage brought to you by Team Durango, by VRC Pro and by J Concepts. This is the uh, final practice for group number one. Jorgen in the three is still fastest. Uh, Arne Pela in the two is second. And Roy in the four is third. Lap times this one. A couple of guys under the 20 second barrier. Everyone else just over 20 seconds a lap. So quite a bit slower than we saw the guys from the top heat when they were uh, pushing into the 16s for David Ronnefelk. So two minutes left in this one. And uh, trouble there for Manolis is, uh, looks like he's out of this one, but we've still got seven cars running. One and a half minutes to go.
so that's uh, Group 1 for their final practice completed. Up next is Group 2. So group number two about to get underway for f their final practice. A, uh, a question okay. in the I can't hear you that helps to turn the microphone on again there we go, there we go. Um, always professional in the YouTube channel yes from McLogo it's not much of a no, this is a question what happened to the track it looks kind of broken today uh, I was actually going to come back from when I changed the battery on the camera to discuss this with you Ollie okay um, the reason I think McLogo unless Ollie corrects me um, well you saw them you saw uh, on our post about Gerd um, soaking the track last yes. night. Of course, yes. it wasn't to plant grass seed. It was just helping out with the track. They did put a lot of water down mm. last night. Yeah. Uh, well, that was really just to kind of compact all the dust down as much as possible. Yes. Um, it is very dusty in here. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say it's a now a muddy track. There are some muddy puddles in the outside of the turn, especially the one that's in front of us, uh, in front of the camera stand. Um, but the, the track is the track is damp today. It is. It's the first it's time I've seen it damp. A bit soft and spongy, almost. And when you're saying, I think the track looks uh, broken. Um, I think what you can see are kind of flecks or bits of of mud that are getting churned up. It's not a lot. It's not going to affect the vehicles. They're tiny, probably no bigger than a pea. Yes. And a couple of cracks appearing on the surface, and that's just where the, the dirt has now sat here for a couple of months. Um, and I guess just, uh, well, we're just uh, being used, really, as, the, as it dries out at different speeds. And in probably 30, 30 hours' time, the organisers will start firing up the bobcats... Yep. Picking up the shovels, pulling up the tubing, and um, this track will be no more. Indeed, yes. About 30 hours left of dirt indoor track here at the hockey arena before it ends up uh, as an ice hockey, ice hockey, ice skating rink again. Uh, no problem, McClogo. In fact, what I'll do, as soon as we're still in practice, is at the end of this practice session in three minutes and 40 seconds yep. I will steal the roving mic off Ollie um, and I will do a quick close up on the track ok yep. so McClogo can get even more information you can do um, I've just seen the thing there from David Fraser can you have a chat with Martin Bayer we have done twice now Yep. Um, if you've missed it you can check it out on the archive RC Racing TV it was from yesterday's pit walk we definitely spoke to him then 
And we spoke to him in the two-wheel drive event as well. I will get the pit walk up on our Facebook okay. page. Fantastic. A link directly to it. Um, but in the meantime as well, uh, yeah, we have spoken to him twice. I don't think we've got anything more to say to him at this point. No, uh, not at the moment. Well, uh, I don't, I don't want to save the pit walk until after at least the first round of qualifying so we can yeah. start getting an indication of how fast people really are. So uh, he's the defending champion, so we'll no doubt talk to him at some point. I'm pretty sure, looking at his practice speed, he should make the main, if he can keep that up, if at the very least. Sorry, I keep cutting across you because I'm just enthusiastic. Um, if there's anything that you want us to ask uh, Martin Bayer or any of the other drivers out there, obviously the only condition, there are two conditions. A, they have to be here. Yep, always uh, helps. And B, although we will always try our hardest, um, well, there's actually a third condition, uh, they need to speak English and be happy to come on the camera. Uh, it doesn't even have to be very good English. Yep. We'll make do. We'll do pigeon English. We, we, to be fair, yeah. almost everyone's English here is better than my Swedish or Danish or German or French. I know. So, it, yeah. it's, it's a frustration of mine as an English person. Well, that everyone you're frustrated that I can't speak German, French, Swedish or... I'm d- frustrated that English people generally don't speak another language okay. and whenever we come and do these events... Nine times out of ten, the person, the European person you are speaking to speaks English, and I think it just puts our efforts to shame. Yes, it Especially does. now I work for a company whose parent company is German. Um, mm. It's quite frustrating that I didn't study harder at German. I studied French quite... I did all right at French, but I've just forgotten yeah, it Très bien. Yeah. Écoutez, s'il vous plaît. Où est le gars? Un éléphant qui se balance. There was one elephant who was balancing. Fantastic. <laughs> Bellissimo. Um, um, yeah, so, having said that... I've forgotten my sweet, my two lines of Swedish from earlier this week. Do you remember? That that was a good lap and... Bra, uh, your butt is a good job. How did you just remember that? Ah. You're like some kind of l- language computer. Language com- Not really. Okay. Maybe ask Martin Bayer about the mid-gear diff. How does it affect the handling on his car? Before you say anything, Colly, okay. for the likes of me, I represent the non-RC racers who might have, yeah, have an interest in the sport, but haven't yet really got into the nuts and bolts. Yep. Um, does, right, that question's kind of saying to me, other racers don't have a mid-gear diff. True yep. or false? True. Okay. Uh, is Martin Bayer the only person with a mid-gear diff? No. Okay. He's not. I know a differential. A differential to me allows the wheels to turn at different speeds when going around a corner. Absolutely right. So, so it doesn't the twist four-wheel drive buggies will have two. Dif- all of them will have two differentials: one in the front and one in the back, between the front wheels and between the rear wheels. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. And as you said, there the differential allows the two wheels on each side of the car to turn at different speeds. Yes. All a, all a, all a, blah, 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 blah. Let's try again. Ah. All a mid differential does is it is on the on the drive shaft that connects the front and rear gearboxes. Yeah. So it allows different drive between the front and rear wheels overall. Hold okay. that thought. I made a promise. You did. I made a promise. I'm going to miss it. We can switch switch mics. There we go. So we'll let James head out onto the track. If Stuart can hear me, I think he's pretty much pointing in the right direction anyway. If you could zoom in down on this corner, kind of where these cars are here. Can you get a close-up of that? So, McLogo was asking about the state of the trap this morning. It looks it looks torn up, but it isn't. It's a little bit bobbly because of the amount of water that they put down last night. And there is a bit of mud, but only on the outside of the corners. Everything on the inside of the track, although a little bit damp, is just the same as it was yesterday. I hope that answers your question. Oh, and James has just come back, showing me his muddy hands. So he's now off to the uh, the bathroom facilities to wash them. Stu, do you want to film something you find really pretty on the track? Just we just got warm up for a few minutes. So, uh, anything? Are you, are you on shoe watch again today? Uh, yes, he, of course he is. 
So if there are any brightly coloured shoes out there, he will uh, he will find he will he will find them. How about the marshal sitting at the end of the triple? What about his shoes? What do we think of those? Is that a yes or a no? That's a no. No. Not a fan of the red. Just red. Uh, yes, so what we're saying, talking about the mid-differential. So the mid-differential yes. is there to give different power to the front and rear axles, as the differentials in the front and rear axles will give different power to the left and right wheels. Yeah. Um, so up until fairly recently, all the four-wheel drive buggies basically didn't have a, didn't have a mid-differential. A lot of the 1.8, but well, most of the 1.8 buggies do. Um, so they gave equal power to the front and rear wheels. Obviously, having a differential in the middle, is going to increase the weight of the drivetrain, which yeah. makes it more inefficient. But with the power we've got in the modified motors nowadays, with these brushless motors... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We've got plenty of power there. So? So it just improves the handling, basically. Is it adjustable? It will be, yes. If they're using a gear differential, they'll be able to adjust it by putting different thicknesses of oil in that gear differential. So a thicker uh, oil makes the, that differential stiffer. Um, so if you've got the motor in the middle... Yep. Do you then, okay, starting with the motor in the middle, working up towards the front, motor diff? Uh, I'll tell you what we'll do. We could make this really easy. I'm just trying to find out whether there's a diff above and below the motor. There's got to be a diff on the front and rear wheels. There's we a diff between that. the front and rear axle, yeah. So is there just one diff in the middle? There is just one diff in the middle, yeah. And that allows you to balance either towards the front or the back? It will. It will just. It. You won't be able to tune directly the difference. The difference between the front and the rear. I need to see this. Well, how we'll all do. We'll try and nick someone's car. Well, it needs to be someone with the with the middle diff. But it does really. Well, no, it doesn't. It does. I want Bayer's car here now. Right. Get me Bayer's car. Well, it, yeah. Now. Okay. No excuses. Actually. I don't care I who he is. I know we might. Well, is mm. it Renault? I've just had a little bit of a thought. Oh, steady. Set it could be a little bit of an exclusive. What's that? Well, we have over here Co uh, Cody? Cody from Team Associated, flown over from the States. And he has got with him one prototype of the brand new Associated B44.3. It's not a complete car, so none of the guys are actually running it. But that car does now feature the differential in the middle. I might go and have a chat with him and see if we can get him and the car over to the camera to have a look at... I don't know if the car's completely built yet. It wasn't yesterday. No, but all we're bothered about, even if it was a skeleton, we don't need the motor or the battery. No, we, we just, just need the chassis with the, with the drivetrain on it so we can see. Yes. I may try and do that later on. I may indeed. So stay tuned to RC Racing TV just to find out if I can convince an American person to bring a car that's not built in front of the camera to give you an exclusive first look, I guess, inside the car. Because we've only seen, we've only seen the studio picture so far. And I think Phil from Nürburgring would be very annoyed if we got there first. Yes. Because he's beavering away in the corner. Phil from Neo Buggy got there before us on something else yesterday. So yeah. it's it's one nil to Neo Buggy. It is. So we need now we need to even the scores, we need to level the playing field. Phil's not listening because he's engrossed in a in he's the latest doing some, update. He's doing some work. Yeah. Talking of which we should probably get back to the track because <laughs> I get an email from someone from called HPI, but it's not the HPI you know. I'll delete that one. Oh. Uh David Fraser, yeah, get Bayer's car. Yeah, get Bayer's car. Go on, snick it. Run off of it. I'm sure we can have his tour drive. He's not going to want that anymore, really, what is What I wanted to play back from yesterday. What? The moment we sat on Lee Martin's car, I wanted Mo to see what it sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> no one commented on it at all. No. I it, I thought it was quite funny. Do you, want, do you want to put the microphone down then, unplug your headphones from this mixing desk, plug them into your laptop and look back through the archive and see what it sounds like? Okay. okay. Is that another way of you saying James just back off? No, not at all. Be quiet. Give me some space. You're cramping my creativity. No, we're, only, we're in group three at the moment, so uh, it's an opportunity to, for us to have these kind of random chats and let Stu do his thing on the camera. Uh, and we can chat to some of you through the live stream and uh, Facebook. Uh Kira pointing out, yeah, Hot Body's also got a mid-gear differential um, and saying it's just a tuning option. And Christopher Svensson has got the... It's not Hot Body, it's an, it's an HB 
sorry to correct you there, it's the HB D413. Um, as we are saying, Christopher Svensson has got that car. The, uh, we believe the only one here, certainly the only one at the top of the timesheets here with the HB car. Uh, and he's running it privately, not sponsored by them. Uh, Daniel Whitehouse asks, are there any S-Works? S104EK1. Um, I'll be honest, I don't know. I haven't seen any. And certainly none of the top guys rocking it. But uh, if we do spot any, I will let you know. I haven't seen any really in the pits so far. Maybe that buggy will gain some popularity soon with uh, a Tsushihara driving it. And now everyone's having a bit of an argument um, on the Facebook group, uh, on the uh, YouTube chat, about the middle differential and slippers and things like that. But we're not talking about slippers that old people wear. I'm talking about slippers. Did you get the car, did you get Lee Martin's car whilst I was talking by myself on the microphone? I think it was much earlier than the day than that. Well, it would have been before we actually looked at the car. Yes. It, this must be fascinating for people at home listening to one side of the conversation about us looking through a YouTube stream. Yes. Don't forget, if you've missed anything from yesterday, you can do exactly what we're doing and scroll back through the archive at www.rcracing.tv. You can see all of the action from yesterday and all of the action from every day of the two-wheel drive event as well. All of it as we streamed it live. It's all there on the archive, on the YouTube channel, so you can check it out. And because it is Fast Friday, we also want to see how you're watching us. We saw quite a few interesting pictures yesterday of people watching us on laptops, on TVs, on tablets, so send a, put a picture on the Facebook group. How are you watching Fast Friday from the 2014 four-wheel drive Euros? Brought to you by Team Durango and the DEX 410 V4, by VRC Pro and by J Concepts. As we have got group number four out on track now. Group four is out on track. Robert Ullman, Yoni, Sven, Michael... Joel, Andre, Nikos, Frode, and Christoph. Those are the guys out in this one. As I've now just finished my uh, ready to run hot chocolate. So thank you for that. Still going? I've, pardon? Is that still going? It's just, I just finished it. Oh. Still gone. All gone. I'll put that over there, not in the bin, because I never put anything in the bin, and then I get shouted out by James later on. Stu also never put anything in the bin. Okay, here we go then, group number four. Final practice here on Fast Friday at the 2014 four-wheel drive electric buggy off-road Euros. You're watching this on RC Racing TV, on effort.ws, or through anybody who may have embedded us on the website, including Neo Buggy. So thank you to everybody who has... Uh, taken the stream put it online if, well, thank you for, you for watching however you found us we don't mind as long as you have found us and you are listening in don't forget 
Uh, the competition still runs on our Facebook group. You can win a Schumacher Cat K1 Aero, the latest competition four-wheel buggy from Schumacher. So a big thank you to the guys at Schumacher Racing for giving us that fantastic prize to give away. Two very, well, one very easy question, and one thing, just guess a number at, basically. Do that on the Facebook group before the start of a final number two tomorrow. And we'll announce the winner after a two tomorrow afternoon. So, important times for today. It is currently ten past eleven local time. We're in the final practice round. Final practice, happy hour practice here for everyone. With their four drive buggies, qualifying gets underway at 12.45. So in one and a half hours' time, we will be beginning qualifying for the 2014 European Championships. Martin Bayer's title defence starts then, 12.45 local time, 11.45 in the UK. If you're going anywhere, going out shopping or going to work, make sure you join us for the start of qualifying. And uh, if you're looking out, wanting to see that real battle for the pole position in round number one, the top guys are out from just after, just after two o'clock. Five past, ten past two local time. Five past or ten past one UK time. So one and a half hours until we start qualifying. And then about a further, what's it going to be, hour, hour and 15, hour and 20 after that. So two and a half hours, we'll start to see the real fast guys laying down their first qualifying run as the battle for pole position begins. The vital pole position we heard that anyone could win from the top half of the grid, and uh, Jorn won two-wheel drive from second, but probably we're going to see a lot less mistakes in four-wheel drive. It's a very difficult track to pass on, as you'll see during the practice and qualifying rounds. So I think getting pole will be really, really helpful. Of course, anyone in the A-final is in with a shot of winning it, but you want to get yourself the best chance possible. That's what Martin Bayer, the defending champion, will be doing, as will the likes of Lee Martin, Jorn Neumann, Hooper Honigal, and Dad Ronnefeld. It's probably going to be those five who we think will fight for the win. But there's 10 space in the O-final. How will the youngsters do? The up-and-coming superstars. We heard from Neil Cragg yesterday. He used to be one of those up-and-coming stars a few years ago, quite a few years ago, and uh, now he's running scared from them. Didn't really appreciate how fast they were until they suddenly, he suddenly realised he might have to go wheel-to-wheel -wheel with them on the track. All that action, as I say, kicks off at 12.45 local time 11:45 uk time at the moment we are in happy hour practice the final round of practice for the four-wheel drive buggies it is group number four out on track let's just check if we look at the official ranking lists produced by efra and my rcm that uses two combined laps i shall run you briefly through the top 10 after the first round of practice it is Martin Bayer, the defending champion, who was fastest, followed by Ronnefeld, uh, Jorn Neumann, Lee Martin, Hippo Honigal, Robert Battier, Neil Craig, Una Hattonen in, in eighth, Christopher Svensson in ninth, Jesper Rasmussen makes tenth in that first round of practice. Behind them, eleventh, Petri Strom, Henry Salmon, Carrie Samella, Oscar Levine, Michael Olovsky, Miguel Matthias, Patrick Hoffer, Daniel Kobevic, Otto Osfeld, and Renaud Savoya make the top twenty. Who will it be in uh, the final round of practice? Happy hour practice, well underway here. Stay with us at RC Racing TV, and a big thanks to Tim Durango and the DEX 410 V4, VRC Pro, and J Concepts. Without them, we wouldn't be here, and without Efra, none of us would be here. So thanks to all of them for supporting us, making this possible.
That's a great view there, Stu's shoes and the water bottle he's got up there. He is such a professional cameraman, he even meant to do that. Sure alert, sure alert. Some fantastic shoes there. Wow. Okay, so I can't hear myself because I've not got my headphones plugged in. There we go, right. Oh, I'm a bit loud. There we go. So, we have two more people to add to the Facebook group. Um, don't forget, if you want to enter the Schumacher competition to win the four-wheel drive buggy, uh, details on the RC Racing TV Facebook page. Uh, pop over to there while he's pinned the post at the top of our page. Um, we need to get two bits of information from you. Um, one uh, is a bit of a technical question, not too technical. Uh, you have to research the information. Um, pop to the Schumacher site and you might be able to find what you are looking for. The second one is a tiebreaker question. Uh, how many minutes and seconds from the point of ordering our lunch yesterday to the point of receiving it did it take? Um, so, to answer the question, you need to, in the comments of the question, give your answer. So you'll need to be a member of the RC Racing TV group. By, and to do that, you need to go to www.facebook.com. Uh, up in the top left, go RC space racing space TV, three words. Hit search. Find our group. Click join. Uh, once you have passed our, uh, we have a, a bank of servers um, that carefully analyze uh, all kinds of information about you, including social security number, uh, bank details, uh, school reports, um, and shoe size, and those servers denote whether you are in fact a spammer or not. If you pass that test, we will join you to the group, uh, we will add you to the group, uh, and then that will allow you to answer the question, amongst other things, such as find out the latest uh, events that we're streaming, bits of news, uh, various other bits of information. But with no further delay, the next two people to add to the group are Mikhail Darlin, 14 friends in the group. Hello, Mikhail, Michael, Mikhail. Another one. There's another one dropped in as I've just added uh, Michael, Mikhail to the group. Bruce Haywood, one friend in the group. Don't know that friend. Anyway, hello. Welcome, Bruce, to the group. Bjorn Nail Nilsson also hello and welcome to the group that's the next three people joined welcome to the group remember you can't like us but you can join us we're one big happy family we don't want you to just like us we want you to be part of the group let's go and have a look at youtube is there any comments is there a way to watch live youtube via windows phone 8.1 I don't know um, is the answer to that. I'm sorry that's not a very technical, or well, it's not, not a very direct answer. Um, nobody in the group has a Windows 8.1. Um, a YouTube app, maybe, or you should at the very least be able to just go to the YouTube website through the web browser and watch live from there. That would be my suggestion. Uh, if you're in Germany, you may be facing issues as Germany 
don't like live events um, due to, I think, copyright reasons. I'm not sure. There are some various ways to circumvent those restrictions, um, but um, you'll have to research them. Uh, <coughs> proxy. <coughs> anyway, so... Um, you having fun there? Yeah, someone was just asking about Windows Phone 8.1 and can they watch live? So I was just, uh, me being a geek. Geek alert, geek, geek. alert. I'm a geek, I'm a professional geek. Um, so that was, that question was right up my street. Uh, did you listen back to that section of the YouTube channel that I just sent to you? Yes. Uh, score out of a 1 to 10. Um, mm. honestly. Uh, maybe, maybe 5 or 6. Yeah, five or six, I was seven. like that about it. I don't think it's worth highlighting, do you? No, 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 no. It's just move on, move on. I'm glad move you on, on. Mm, move on. Hey, Bert. Um, making sure Stuart is awake there. Is there any S Works S one hundred four EK one? I answered that one already. Okay. Uh, no, I don't think there are. If I have, if there are, if there are, if there are, I haven't seen any. McLogo, see the team associated webpage with the specs of the B forty four three. Hang on, I thought. I'm confused now because you said Bayer had the mid diff. In his X ray, yes. Ah, but the B forty four dot three point three isn't associated. It is indeed. Ah I okay. It's all fallen into place. McTavish, hello guys. Hello back to you, Mac. Good morning, thank you for joining us. Hello, thank you. The more the merrier. Greetings from Jens Ace Germany to Nick and Mark. Hmm. To Nick from Mark. Oh, sorry, to Nick from Mark. Is that Nick Damon? Because Nick's not here with us, so he's not going to be able to read that. Ah, Nick so, thanks for remembering our names. I'm Molly Veggett, and he's James Parry. And Stu Noble on camera. If you, want to, if you want to talk to Nick, you can go and watch them doing some large-scale stuff in Portugal on the other YouTube channel we've got running this weekend. Why would you want to do that? Stay with us here. Much more fun. Loads more action. I'm going to go and spy on them. Are you? Yeah. See what they're doing. I bet they're not even on. Are they even online yet? Uh, Thursday. No, no, it's Friday, Friday today. today. What time are they starting? I don't know. Oh, no, it says live now. Hang on. I just need to make sure my sound's off, otherwise it's going to get very confusing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very confusing. Well, we could. Ah, we could in a really cheap budget way. Hang on. So, we'll go live over to Portugal now for some of their commentary. And there you go, exclusive. Wow, the accidents fantastic. are bigger because the cars are heavier. Some fantastic insight there from the other team over in Portugal. Yes. For more insight like that, check out their page, their YouTube stream. Uh, they're into qualifying round three on their Friday, but uh, we're nowhere near qualifying. We've got loads more action to go. We're coming midway through practice, final practice, happy hour practice here. Happy hour practice. Happy hour practice. <coughs> Does... So what happens when the uh, happy hour practice session is finished? At what, what point of the day is that? Then it's lunchtime. Oh, you've not gone for my joke at all, which nope. was uh, regarding the happy ending. No. No, it's called, happy hour pra it's called happy hour practice because it's not an hour and generally most people aren't happy by the end of it. Ah, I see. Irony there. Thank you, NASCAR. Daniel Whitehouse. Hi. Daniel Whitehouse. Hello, back. Lots of lots of co uh, vowels there. Lots of vowels going on. Um, we still need a photo of something very specific, <laughs> which I haven't been able to find yet. Mickey asks, do they have a competition for large scale car in the large scale channel? I doubt it. I don't think they do. For one simple reason is they don't have. Um, any sponsors for that channel at the moment? That one's purely being brought to you by EFRA. Morning, guys. Cracking coverage, making excited run for some buggy in the winter with our new VBC Firebolt. Are oh, you trying to plug a product? Oh, hello, Jimmy. How are you doing? What is the VBC is Firebolt? Jimmy's going to do buggy racing now. What's the VBC Firebolt, then? It's, it's a new two-wheel drive buggy. There's a different company who is not sponsoring us, but has released. However, I can't, uh, a bit of a plug there. They are, I think they are supporting EWS this year. 
potentially. So, uh, EWS, what's that? Oh, it's just some, some, some touring car race series. Mm. So that's Where is it? It's in Essex in the UK. What time of year? During the winter. Oh, right. It's only the largest on-road series in the UK. No. Yeah. Really? It is, yeah. No way. And you can find all the results from that, thanks to RC Racing TV as well. Of course. Well-turned back plug. There we go. Back plug. Back plug. <laughs> Careful how we say that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to get taken off air for something. It's only 10 o'clock. No, half past 11 in the morning. <laughs> For more chat like that, tune in after half nine tonight. Who have we got up? Let's get back to some action. Yes. A bit of French there for you. That wasn't French. Écoutez. Écoutez. Play. Listen, please. Écoutez. I just, get, I just get told that a lot from the French teacher. That's why I know that. Écoutez. S'il vous plaît. Listen, please. Tommy, Dimitri, Tobias, Sammy, Ascari, Felix, Oliver, Lars and Max. Group six. Their final practice going out now. How good are you, James, at using like cameras for photos? Uh, not bad. Why? I know Stu can hear me, and I want to see his reaction to this. But uh, <laughs> would you be able to nick one of Stu's cameras and go and get the photo we need? Uh, I probably would. I would probably prefer to do that with my iPhone, to be honest. Because being a nice camera owner myself. I know what it's like when someone picks it up and wanders off with it. It makes you cringe a little bit. So, don't even ask. Okay. I'll okay. just go and take it with Sue's camera then. And not ask. Put you in your place. Yeah. Um, so, I can't believe. Look how many photos Phil from Neobuggy has taken and posted online, and none of them are other photos that we need. So, what we can do is very shortly I will swap with Stu. Let's see the top guys go back out and then. What? It's like an hour. It's not an hour. We're in group six. Six times five. 30. It's like 30 minutes with a bit of breaks in between. Oh, 40 because it goes up to 14. Plus two minutes between each heat. Okay. Quite an hour. Nearly an hour. Yeah. I want to do this now because I can't do it on Facebook because I've done it. <laughs> it's really annoying. Won't let me. Oh. Can I do it but make it secret? If you have no idea what, you're talk- what we're talking about, then. Um, Just for fun in winter alongside EWS. Oh, is that Jimmy again? Yeah. Right. Do you know Jimmy Madison? I do indeed, yes. Ah, who is it? He is a racer, uh, on-road racer primarily. That's why I was surprised to him doing buggy racing. But uh, good luck to him doing that. Uh, used to be, I'm gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna hate me saying. He used to be really, really good. He won the DHI Cup in touring cars, won stuff in Vegas at the International Indoor Championships, yeah. and he's now just very good, I would say, at touring car racing. Why would he be mad at you for saying that? Because I'd, like, I'd like to be very good at something. Commentary, would, you know, I can't do. Or speaking on a microphone. So could I. You're very good at that. Uh, Blowing smoke. It's not what everyone says. Let's put it that way. Well, I would invite them to come and give it a go. Because I can assure you guys out there, it is very difficult to come into race. I just sit here and push buttons. Um, Apple ad placement there. Heard it. Other smartphone devices are available. Like what? Samsung. HTC. Yeah, but none of those are Apple. Nope. Windows phones coming along. I didn't like <laughs> the first really? one out. Yeah. Oh dear. Hello, Pernod, this is my work. If you agree with me that Windows phones are not any good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the problem is, is everyone goes, oh, Apple's the best. Everyone doesn't go, oh, Apple's. Everyone who hasn't got an Apple product goes, oh, Apple's the best. Everyone who has got an Apple goes, yeah, Apple's the best. That's why I've got one. If Apple would like to send me a new phone, I will happily test it out live on air. I don't know if I'm supposed to, but I will do. Uh, David Fraser, small plug, it's the first round of much more GP at Stonehaven, Scotland this weekend. Hope to see some of you there. Yeah, we don't mind doing small plugs. At the end of the day, it's about the whole, it's about the community and the, the kind of, the industry, the, everything around RC racing, surely. Ollie. Yes, yes. Should I have not done that? I don't know. Last bit. <laughs> 
It's all about the sport. It's all about the sport. Even better if it's about buggy racing as well. That would be ideal. Uh, yeah, no, so if you are going to much more GP at Stonehaven, good luck to you. That would be a better way to plug it. I feel like I've been naughty now. You haven't been naughty. Any guys on HPD 413 in this event, says, Mark, uh, says Matt Tarrant. Have you not been listening for the last hour and a half? We've been on already. Yes, Christopher Spencer, top privateer driver from Sweden, is running the D413 and is up in the top 10 after one round of today's control practice here on Fast Friday at the 2014 Four Wheel Drive European Championships. Fast Friday. Fast Friday. Uh, Fast Friday. Uh, who who are we sponsored by for this event in Talking the Plugs? Talking the Plugs? Well, it's not the plugs, it's the people that we have to thank massively for being here. It is Team Durango and the DEX 410 V4, VRC Pro and J Concept. Thanks to all of you for making this possible. Thanks to everyone who is watching this, all of you, and this doesn't really work. I was pointing at the logos, the sponsors of all of you, and this time I'm still talking to all the people in the chat room when I say all of you guys for joining in, taking part, and over of you who are just watching or listening along. Thank you. Two more people, thanks to the Facebook group. Okay, let's say, oh, go on, do those quickly. Hello, Nick Moore. Hello, Nick. Hello, Mark Tupress. Hello, Mark. Nick Ben is a Nick of Oh. And, hello to Ben Jennison. Hello there. Hello, Ben. Why are you wandering up into the media centre again? I'm just interested in what's going on. What's the real reason? That was it. Who's coming out next? You're going to have to sit down. Who's he watching? Oh, yes, yes. Do you want to? Yes. So, Fast Friday here. Thank you. What's the track like this morning? You've had one practice on, haven't you? Uh, yeah, the track's back to how we started yesterday. Okay. They put quite a lot of water on it, though, last night. More than probably was required. Uh, there were some, some puddles this morning, uh, which have gone now. But the track's... A little less grippy, I think. So that make it, you're going to change the setup back to where uh, it was previously? Uh, I didn't change anything yesterday. Uh, uh, no, <laughs> I, <coughs> I think I, going to McDonald's. No, I learned a lesson from two-wheel drive to not to try and not get lost in setup. Right. Because, uh, I mean, after two-wheel drive practice, I ended up back where I started. Yep. And I think it's very easy to get lost in, in what you're doing, changing all sorts of crazy pistons and shot combinations and all sorts. Um, but I think what we had to the game with was pretty good. Okay. So, same with that in four-wheel drive? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've just kept the car the same. And as as, as in two-wheel drive, it, it's just a case of going around about crashing. That's, yeah. that's the best. Um, is it easier to drive the track with the four-wheel drive buggy soon? I would have said so, yeah. The, uh, the jumps are a little easier. Do you think we are going to see less crashing? Uh, yeah, I, I think they'll be still crashing. It, it's still tight and twisty and um, very close racing because uh, it's a short layout. Yep. Um, especially the triples, really, really difficult when there's people around you. You sort of contrast to, to what's in front and what's behind. And okay, yep. if you take a little different line over the triple, and you um, you can catch someone and spin them round quite easily after that, which is very frustrating. Yeah, and could incur a penalty from the referees. Yeah, if they're on the ball and watching that bit of track, then. So this is uh, group number seven out of practice. So you, uh, is anyone in particular you're watching this one? Wooter Wynan. Car number three? Yeah. We had a chat with him yesterday. He came up here to our concert box as well. So um, he uh, has an excellent result at things like the Belgian GP over the years. Yeah, yeah, he's a good driver, definitely. Uh, but he was saying he hasn't really done much forward drive running. No, I think that's the case with a lot of people. They... Mm. Um, they do more two-wheel drive than four-wheel drive, maybe it's because yeah. of the, uh, the cost of, of four-wheel drive. You've got two sets of drive shafts and maybe a little more expensive to run. Yep. Two-wheel drive is the best class, of course. Is it? That's where more fun to drive? Yeah, I think there's, um, it's a lot more re rewarding when you get it right. Okay. Four-wheel drive's still cool, though. Four-wheel drive's faster, though. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. So let's uh, let's let's uh, to get underway. Car number three, the white and green buggy, going to make the right hand turn over the triples now. And what what are you looking at? Are you looking at his lap times? You looking at the buggy on the track, or both? 
Uh, consistency, I guess. Um, that's going to be the key here, uh, is, mm -hmm. is consistent laps. He puts in a 19-1 first lap. It's not a bad start. I think uh, the, the quickest two laps in this seeding round, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, quickest two laps from the uh, control practice. So it's going to be used the start order for the heats. But they've resorted the heats based on uh, everyone's pace from yesterday in the, in the free practice day. So hopefully that means we get people with roughly a similar speed in each heat, which should be good for qualifying. Yeah, yeah, I think um, Paul Wesley's um, done a pretty good job. Everyone's near enough where they should be. Of course, you don't want to base it, you don't want to make it just a case of running the A final every, every heat, but uh, no, no. We want to get the guys qualifying as best track conditions and best uh, lap time as possible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's sort of similar for the top guys. So we are just over one minute into this one. Uh, Wooster is down, sadly, in ninth place at the moment. Needs to pick up the pace. Yeah. That's not what we want to see. But he's on for 16 lap run, as are most people in this one. Uh, I think the order on the screen in front of us is showing that two lap combined time, which we then don't have a column for, hopefully. But we've got indication of the lap times people are notching up. So only a couple of people into the 18s at the moment by the look. No, most people into the Everyone into the 18s, sorry. Yeah. I was looking at the first column, not the second one. And uh, Christmas Five for leading, followed by Calais and Anti. It's seven, uh, five, seven, and four. Austria, and then two Finnish drivers. Both the Scandinavians doing very well here, aren't they? Yeah, I would have just put in a good lap then. Yep. Maybe you need something to back over and then. It was 18 3 last night, actually, one of the fastest in this heat so far. If he can back that up, then uh, he'll, uh, he'll stay. have a good start to the next one, yeah. Yep. Is it important getting that good starting position, do you think? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you can get off in the top couple of um, places, then that, that's a good start. A bit more breathing room. Because it just gives you the clear track in front of you and around you, yeah, I guess. Yeah, definitely. And on that, this track, it's key. Um, nice. Like I was saying about the, the mains, if you're in the middle of the pack, then you <laughs> things are going to get pretty messy. They are indeed. Um, and I guess just having that clear to play means if you get any mistakes, you're less likely to get caught up with someone else recovering. Yeah, yeah. So, so halfway through this one now, Wouter is at the top of the time sheet. Chris down to second. Alexander is third. Then Calais, Ante, Malin, Kim, Yori, and Alexander. Uh, still, oh, we've got an 18-1 from Ante as the best lap looks like in this heat. Otherwise, 18 threes from Wouter and Christopher. Yeah, if he can, if he can back that one up, which I think he might do, then that'll be good. And be he puts in two 18 ones in a row to uh, go top overall. Wouter drops to second. This is group number seven out of 14, so about halfway through the heat. And is it, uh, we talking uh, during the tour drive event certainly about the youngsters that are uh, up and coming. Yep. Um, have they surprised you with the speed of speed they've shown? Definitely in two-wheel drive. Um, I think they're still as quick in four-wheel drive, but people are getting into it a bit more now. They've had two-wheel drive to to get get used to the track and and the cars, um, but they're still rapid. Yeah. So do you think? Uh, as you said before, a lot of people generally run two-wheel drive more than four-wheel drive. Um, does that mean the guys who had perhaps the advantage in two-wheel drive are less likely to have that advantage in four? Uh, it's hard to say. Um, I think four-wheel drive, um, it probably levels the playing field a little. Yeah. Um, I think the cars are a bit more similar. Um, maybe there's less advantage to be had um, than two-wheel drive. Okay. Um, and lots of people we've seen, uh, well, a few people running shorty packs in their cars. People yeah. are choosing a saddle pack layout to get more weight over the rear axle. Yeah. Uh, what have you gone for? I've gone for a saddle pack layout. I mean, it, I think for me it's possibly a little easier to drive. I've not right. done much running with a short short pack in, um, in four-wheel drive. But I think the weight over the back probably helps a little. Okay. And then in two-wheel drive, shorty the way to go in the middle of the chassis? Uh, well, I... I didn't really like it to begin with. I I ended up on saddles and then I changed to shorty and um, for the last round of qualifying and my final and 
and I liked it, yeah. Right. Um, I think it was more the the setup of my car that just needed to be adjusted to the shorty. Right. Um, but yeah, it was good in there. Makes some stuff. So the end of that one there. Anti taking the uh, taking the win in that practice seat, and Uta finishing up in second place. A good yeah. run there for both of them. My tip to the for the start. Yeah. Was Uta. Yeah. So second place, not too bad. Yeah. That'll put him uh, no, that'll start in second. Then we uh, start that qu- heat off qualifying. Qualifying kicking off in about one hour's time at 12.45 local time here in Sweden. Next up, uh, group number eight. Two of the Brits. Two of the Brits. Next one, yeah, we've got Neil Round, car number nine, and Kev Lee, car number four. Kev will be one to watch in this one. I think he possibly struggled a little yesterday with his car. Yep. Um, but hopefully he'll... Get it sorted for today. I hope so. I know that um, Kev is uh, he's won UK nationals, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's 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 normally in the top five or six at, at our UK nationals. Um, so I mean, he, he should be one to watch today. To be honest, he um, he's definitely capable of, of making the final. Yep. Um, and I suppose if you if you look at it on paper, UK nationals are. Some of the most competitive national series, one of the most competitive national series in uh, in all of Europe, really, aren't uh, they? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the UK probably have the most competitive series in in Europe, I would have said. And we've got the likes of uh, of Lee and Neil uh, and Tom, who made the A final in two wheel drive. Yep, yeah, they've all looked pretty good. Um, they've all got a chance. There's probably I don't know, maybe twenty drivers that have got the speed to make the main. Yeah, it's just the case of doing it in not uh, making mistakes and not making mistakes yeah which I've just noticed is still happening a lot <laughs> still going to happen during uh, these practice rounds I think last chance pra- anything to try differently in this round of practice or is this kind of like a consolidation do you think people yeah I think it's just sort of get your um, get your cars in your head right and, yep. and just do what you've got to do So we're not like to see, uh, well, we shouldn't see too many people throwing it off the track now as everyone sort of gets used to their cars, makes sure everything's ready to go for qualifying. Yeah, then again though, when you've got it in your head that two quickest laps decides the uh, the start order, then you you might see people pull over and wait for cars to go past and um, just get some open track and then have another go. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see while we're waiting for this one to start. If anyone is saying anything interesting on the uh, on the chat room... Oh, you've got some fans there. Benny bird's Appleton. eye view. And bird's eye view. Hello. Oh, yeah. James Hellowell. I assume that is. <laughs> um, as Rene says, in Belgium, they run both classes on the same day, so most people choosing only one class. Same as in Denmark. Uh, also in the UK, we run two different... Um, we run Saturday and Sunday for our nationals. Um, and... I guess that encourages more people to run both classes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. So, yeah, hello to everyone who is watching on the YouTube channel, and thanks for all the messages coming in. We'll catch up with a few of those in a moment. We'll uh, focus on what's going on on the track at the moment while we've got, Ben, an expert with us up in the commentary box. <laughs> an expert. I want to go that far. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Kev Lee, car number four, straight out to the lead, as you predicted. Your prediction's pretty good at the moment. I... In all honesty, I think he's maybe a couple of heats uh, lower than he should have been. Uh, yesterday was just, uh, I think he was struggling with the car. Right. It didn't look like it had so much rear and traction, um, but it looks like he's got it sorted for today. So It does indeed, as he goes over the J-Concept jump now. Just clips the down ramp there, and that allows, as I say there, a back marker just to... Uh, get caught up with him and that's, yeah. that's what, if you see that in qualifying that's that's you know three or four seconds lost right exactly. away we've seen that quite regularly um, especially on the after the triple and the hairpins it's it's difficult sometimes to judge how quick people are going into them and yeah so it wasn't uh, it was uh, also he made a small mistake on the landing but that wasn't the mistake that cost him it was then the, the other car yeah where he got caught up who else looking quick in this one And again. Yes. So nice to, to come to Sweden. Sweden, somewhere different. And then we're going to your home track, the UK next year, 2015. Yeah. That should be uh, that should be a good event. How are you feeling about that? Uh, I, I think it's going to be awesome. Locking the practice laps already? Of course. <laughs> 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 I 
The track will be different for the Euros, yeah. I'm sure. We're going to struggle with that one, I hear. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure on that one. Um, the track works really nice as it is. Yep. Um, the first meeting we did um, was the, the first super race on it, and it was it was prepped to of an inch of its life, and it was absolutely perfect. You couldn't ask yep. for, for a better surface to race on, in all honesty. They, uh, it had really good grip. Um, but ever since then, we haven't maybe had as much time to prep the track okay. um, for the meetings that we've had on it. Um, but of course, if the Euros is there, then it'll be it's going to be stripped back to basics. Yeah, sorted out, ready to go. No, no sugar apparently on the track for the Euros next year. I'm I'm not sure on that, but I wouldn't like to see a, a sugar watered track because it. If you race on the sugar water track in the states. Uh, yeah, the the world's uh, yep. race on that was that was a sugar water track, and it was it was good, but tyre wear goes up and then the cost goes up. Whereas yeah. when Robin Hood is um, is prepped right, it's a set of tyres sort of for the weekend. But okay, yeah, That's um, good, which is good. Yeah, keeps the cost down exactly. So we've got about 20 seconds left. This one, Kev Lee is still the fastest by quite some way. The only driver with a 17 second lap, 17.6 for Kev. Yeah, that's a quick lap. That is very quick indeed. That's kind of on par with what the, uh, I guess, the slower guys in the top heat were doing. Uh, yeah, so, uh, they were uh, sort of mid, mid 17. Mid 17. So, as I say, knocking on the door of an 8 final pace, if you can, can do that for a, an entire run. Yeah, but yeah. consistency is the difficult thing here. Absolutely. Uh, it feels like you get the same line over the jumps each time, but. Maybe the uh, the takeoffs aren't quite the same across yep. the, the front of them, and um, they, they are difficult still. I think also with four-wheel drive is that because they're quite heavy at the front, you you uh, you come to the landing and you think you're like nearly perfect, and if you catch the top of them, uh, it's quite easy to dig into them. Right. Yep. Yep. The weight all over the a lot more weight over the front. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. With the motors being relatively far forward in most of the buggies now. Yeah, yeah, they, most of the cars have a similar sort of um, layout. Right, so that was group number eight. Next up is number nine. Yeah. When about you out? Uh, I'm up in 11, so not too long. You car ready to go? Yeah, just tires to put on in right. the, uh, the special tire fitting area. Tire fitting area. So we've got Marcus, you see Carly. Zacharias, Pavel, Alexis, George, Sylvan, and Ian Mellis in this one. Yeah. I think Yossi will be one to watch in here, and yep. Calais Fenton, he'll be quick. Calais has been doing a lot of racing in, uh, in America. Oh, right, okay, yep. yeah. Yeah, yep. and he's been living at OCRC for the last few months. And uh, that's kind of the home track of Stephen Hartson, the current four-wheel drive world champion. Yeah, yeah, he does a lot of running there. Ryan Cavallari spends a lot of time there as well, I think, now. Yeah, yeah, I think that's his new um, sort of home track now that West Coast has disappeared. Shame we lost West Coast, that was a great decision. Yeah, that was a really good decision. You were at the Rigi Race there, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, that was a, a really good track. But I love, I love uh, OCR with the uh, inbuilt sprinter system. Yes, that's cool. And they also have beer on keg, which is good. Do they? Yeah, always good. <laughs> always good. Most important. <laughs> you were at the Rigi Race Fair as well this year, were you? Yeah, you yeah. Right. With the Monster Energy Girls? Yeah. You liked that, didn't you? Almost as important as beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. So, uh, I think you was involved in the uh, Finland Worlds a couple of years ago. Yeah, he was a big part of the uh, the organisation of the, the Worlds. Um, I, I would have said it was definitely one of the best worlds that's that's being put on. What made it so good? So if we look, if we look at an overall event, I mean, you, you do always get constant people that, you know, if my effort events aren't as good as some of the other races that are out there, but you're saying the, you know, the if that world's in Finland was one of the best races it, ever. What made it so good? Uh, you think anything? Probably a key word would be organisation. Right. I mean, every single piece uh, was sort of thought about. Yeah. The pitting area was... Uh, covered, it was huge, you got loads of space to put on. Uh, the, the driver's stand was absolutely massive. It's probably one of the coolest driver's stand I've ever seen. Really? It's, it's like a house. <laughs> it's, it's massive. Um, well, so the track was perfect, uh, and it had uh, different layouts as well for the 
two wheel drive and four wheel drive. Yep. Um, which I think is is a good thing. Um, okay. Uh, I I would have seen, liked to see maybe at this track um, something the layout being a little different to the warm up race. Um, but back to uh, the yeah. track in Finland, it was it was just perfect. Um, everyone was very friendly as well, and they also speak good English, which is which is always handy. Very handy. Yeah, we were just talking earlier, in fact, about how we get to the European Championship races and interview most people, ninety percent of the people in English. And uh, they can speak in English just as well as we can. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel it's a bit embarrassed sometimes that we can't speak any other languages. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we um, we sort of try and speak other languages, but it doesn't really work. No. But obviously you're part of an international team as well, racing team associated, so you've got drivers from all around Europe here yeah. on the same table as you. Yeah, it's it's really nice to mix with, with all the other drivers from different countries. And see other people's ways of doing things and setups. That's nice. Yeah, and kind of guess yeah, it's a chance for you to interact with all them, chat with them, and see what's what they're learning about the car as well. Exactly. Yeah, um, it, it all helps definitely. Yeah. Um, so, is there a lot of in, obviously you go to different countries, you've got different styles of track. Is that helped in trying to compile some more information? Yeah, uh, I mean it's all experience for me anyway. It, um, <laughs> I did a lot of running on Robin Hood yep. a, a few years ago, and it definitely helped improve my driving, but I found that when I went to other tracks, I wasn't going as well because I was doing too much running on, on one particular track. Right, okay. so I definitely think it's, it's good to vary what tracks you race on, yep. and the surfaces as well. We heard from Neil Craig that uh, he didn't come to white race here in the two-wheel drive class, or yep. four-wheel drive class either, but we're talking about his two-wheel drive result. And uh, it wasn't so much the, uh, he didn't feel the lack of track time on this track necessarily hindered him, it was just the fact that he'd done so much running on the Astroturf mid-motor tracks in the UK that running the rear-motor car here was the, almost a bit of a shock. Um, and just if they'd have done some testing on some other tracks with the, with the rear-motor car, that may have been, been helpful for them. Definitely, yeah. I mean, he, he came here with a, a new car that he'd, he'd only raced, that he hadn't even raced it. He'd, He'd done one day's sort of running with it at Robin Hood before we came here. Yeah. Um, so not a lot of time to to get to learn the car and the setup and stuff. But I think he was already on the back foot yes. when we came because he um, the other guys had done a lot of running at the warm up. Yeah. Um, it's just uh, I think the warm up helps generally. You get comfortable with the the track, the surroundings, your car. Um, which all helps, but when you're trying to learn everything in six practice runs, that yeah, especially yeah. in two-wheel drive, it it makes it difficult. Okay. Right, we have got one minute and twenty seconds left in this one. I guess you want to probably get ready to head off to uh, get your car. You're up in about yes. five ten minutes time. Yeah. So, uh, Ben Jemison, thank you very much for joining us. Very welcome. Box. Feel free to stop back any time. I will do. Have another microphone in your hand. No problem. You'll be up for the top piece probably, won't you? So you can see the timing. Yeah. Well, you picked up the now we saw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He handed me the car and asked me to put it down. Oh, Change your team now, right? Yeah, change your team <laughs> on the car for you. <laughs> or change your team on the car for him, maybe. Who knows? Uh, I don't know. He's, I think he's pretty... He's pretty in with the car show. Yeah, right, he's pretty he? safe at car show. He goes very well with our eight-scale package as well. He does indeed, yeah. All right, well, Ben Jemison, Tim and Sorry, thank you very much for joining us. You're very well. Good luck in your uh, last practice run, and we'll catch you later on. See you later. Thank you, Ben. Cheers to Ben for that. How far did you get down the YouTube comments? Did you go through any YouTube comments or were you just talking to Ben because I was listening to something else? We were pretty much just talking to Ben. Uh, I guess this comment here was about when Ben sat down. Woo, ta 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 ta. Yes. Just like Donnie, is Manolis on top qualifier? No. Uh, no, he. Uh, no, we haven't started qualifying yet, so uh, no one is on top qualifier yet. Manolis no. will be up uh, a little bit later on, probably in about. Oh, yeah, Manolis, in fact, is up in 45 minutes' time when we kick off qualifying at quarter to one local time. Great coverage, chat. Thank you very much, Richard Clark. Glad you're enjoying the show. I know someone's jumped ship and jumped over to the large scale because we were talking about shoes. Were they? And it was only practice. 
Oh well. But Nick said we're just following the tradition from when we, uh, the trend from when we went to Italy earlier in February. Talking about shoes. Yep. And losing people to other channels. There are many things about RC racing other than RC, like shoes and pets. Pets, also Mainly trousers. Dogs. Trousers. Uh, hey, a- any centre disc spotted on the Yokomo? I didn't look, to be honest. Okay, well, I was just scoot around on the lunchtime show. Yep. Bird's eye view, no sugar, no way. Ah, oh, that might have been when we were talking about. Uh, Rock Hood Raceway track next uh, year, it's Euros. No, we don't think it will be sugar. It's just uh, a joke. Maybe some people with PL bow ties next year. Pro line? Pro line, yep. Bow ties are one of the uh, tyre <laughs> styles. A tire pro line bow tie. Um, if they make them, we would wear them. Track is open. What were you talking about, Ben? You know cider is more important than beer. Oh, yes, he was pointing out that he particularly liked some of the uh, tracks in the US because one of them had a beer keg at the track. <laughs> is he old enough to drink? Just about. I'm not sure he's actually old enough to drink in the States. It doesn't look it. It doesn't look very old. No. Are any of them using four-wheel drive? Um, yes. Yes, all this of is them. the four-wheel drive Euro, so all of them are using four-wheel drive. It says that in the top left corner of the screen. Is the weather guaranteed to be good in RHR next year? Yes, it is. Why is it indoors? Nope. But it's in Britain, and it's always lovely and sunny in the summer. <laughs> That's a no, then. How much is the average for one of these cars? Take a look at our lunchtime show yesterday. Uh, we went over Lee Martin's car, and that was my final question to Ollie. It was. Uh, the link is on our um, Facebook page. So head over there, have a look at the lunchtime show. It's also on our website, www.rcracing.tv. It is also on Lee Martin RC's Facebook page and Team Yokomo's Facebook page. It's gone viral. Yes. In your face. As Tim Westwood would say. Has any, have any of their videos from uh, Portugal been shared by such big brands and people as that? No. No. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying. But they haven't done any videos yet. Not well, yet. Why not? We're why not? We're big things. Well, they're at large scale, so you would expect big, thing, big things from the large scale. Large, big things from the big, big things scale. Big things from... Bar, what? What? What was that? I don't know. I was going to just... Noise is well, not what words. What noise was that? I don't know. I don't know. Take this opportunity to thank Efra, Efra.ws, Team Durango with the DEX 410 V4, VRC Pro, and JConcepts.net. Thought I'd add the .net in there because it's on the end of their logo. Look, thank you very much to them. Yes, without them, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be able to bring all this lovely, gooey, RC goodness your way. So we are on round. Sorry, Group 10 of Practice 2. How many practices have we got today? Two practices on Fast Friday. This is final practice. Happy hour practice here at the four-wheel drive European Championships. And then how long's the break? A short break. And then we get qualified underway at 12.45 local time. It's currently 12 o'clock. So 45 minutes time, qualifying kicks off with round one. The battle for pole position starts right here today on how many, Friday how many qualifying rounds there are three qualifying rounds today and then two more tomorrow on Super Saturday say that again there are three qualifying rounds today yeah and there's two tomorrow on Saturday ok I was just think about lunch time you say ah always think about lunch because even though it's past Friday I will be eating yes yes uh, to be honest the best time to get some lunch would probably be now yeah I think I timed it a Oh, I have to be careful with what I say about dimes and lunches. Oh, yes. Don't give too much away. I'm not saying any more. But no. off air, no more.
Right, so we're just discussing our lunch order there. Stu will talk to your lunch order later on, but we we'll probably know what you're going to have. It'll be exactly the same as you've had last, you don't want it. Ste- He's nodding already. Steck no is that You do want the steck no egg. Okay. He, so he is keeps having a pizza, which they've... It's obviously very carefully designed with a pizza, and then he goes, no, I don't know what you've designed, I'm going to have yeah. my own one, do that, but without that, and without that. Yeah, and it's called a steck, but it doesn't have steak on it. No. It has an egg on it, but Stu doesn't have the egg. It basically, it's a bacon and onion pizza. <laughs> bacon and onion pizza. <laughs> That's why we keep him up there, because we don't want to sit next to him because of his breath. <laughs> I'm sitting here drinking mints at the moment, so my breath is lovely. Oh, I wanted to say a big shout out to someone, actually. Okay. Because uh, it's an awesome setup. Uh, a few people... Oops, hang on. First person, uh, Chris O'Donoghue, uh, <laughs> watching both streams. Hello, Chris. I hope the volume is not turned up on both. That would be really confusing. You know what, you know what I hope? I hope you've got our volume turned up and Nick's volume yes. muted. Yeah. Nick talks too fast anyway. Uh, Brett Wildby. Well, Wildby? Wildby. Uh, from New Zealand. Uh, hi, Brett. Um, welcome to the show. I don't know if you're a regular viewer. Uh, watching the Euros after a hard day's practice at the qualifying at the New Zealand Indoor Championships. Oh, you've been racing. Come back and you're watching our racing. Wow. It's a day packed full of racing. And his setup with his TV on his screen and as somebody's pointed out, are those uh, BW speakers. Um, wow. Uh, awesome. And he's got um, New Zealand, he's got HP Source. HP Source? On his table, which is a, a, an English product. Uh, HP Houses of Parliament Source. It's a brown source. All uh, source brands are available. Hang on. Oh. Oh, I like this. The, uh, the thing I'm trying to do, the secret thing I'm trying to do. Yes. In your head, not out loud. Read that last question there. Is no in I'm your joking. head. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The answer to that is yes. Uh, hang on. The question implies or, but gives you a yes, a yes or, or no, no answer. answer. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. There, there was one at work for our uh, e-learning modules, oh, and and that's an interesting next question. Will yes, why not? Yes, why not? Yep. I wonder what we're doing. Mm. Um, before I go and get lunch, oh, hang on, there's another couple of shout-outs. So that was uh, that was Brett, Steve, uh, Curtis, Rich, working from home. He's, he's watching us on the Xbox on a nice little TV on the wall next to an aquarium. That's quite nice. I'd like my TV on the wall like that, but. Um, mm. My wife won't let me because there's a, um, a mirror there. Oh, no. I'm working on it. I need to um, leave her the situation with shoes and handbags, I think. Mm. I don't uh, think this is going to work. I want to make this uh, private. Uh, 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 right, anyone else make to go? Habib Sab, four friends in the group. Hello, welcome to the group. And Jacob Whitehouse, good afternoon or morning, depending on where you are in the world. Hello, Jacob Whitehouse, and welcome to the group. This, would, this would have worked better if I had the picture I needed already. Sorry. No, it's all right. Um, don't forget, if you want to enter the Schumacher competition, please go to our Facebook page. Check out Ollie's post. This will detail the steps required to win the Schumacher Cat. Is there a number in the Cat as well? The Cat K1 Aero. That's it. K1 Cat K1 era. I'm sorry, I'm having a mental blank. Sorry, Schumacher. I'm having a, a mental blank with numbers and letters this morning. Um, Four wheel drive buggy. Um, head on over there. You will need to do some research. Uh, you need to find out a bit of information about the car. Uh, I don't want to obviously give make it too easy or give any clues, but uh, I'd start on the Schumacher website. Oh, shouldn't have said that. Um, we've added people. We've done that. Let's have a quick check in on the YouTube, then I'm going to go and get some lunch. Has the sound died? Ah, uh, sorry, David. That's my fault. We were talking about something that um, shouldn't be aired. Actually, that makes it sound really bad. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what? I can't remember what we were talking about. We, we just didn't want to air it, and it was my fault. I should have just turned one of the microphones down to low and not both of them to off. Mm. Uh, my bad. Sorry, David. It's a lip reading test. We could try that. Let's, let's not. Let's point not. the camera at the rostrum. Do any of them shout 
out loud or talk You shouldn't to shout out loud. Is, is that a rule? You're not allowed to shout out. You're allowed to go, for God's sake, when you flip the car. Ollie. I, I don't think so. Ollie. Really not. Ollie's on Facebook. I, I am, but I'm on the Ask no Racing dedication. TV Facebook group. No, he is. he is. I've been tagged in lots of posts, so I have like millions of notifications going up at the moment. I'm trying to get through them all to make sure there's nothing important there. Only tag me in important posts, please. Uh, I'm just going to have a quick look at Neo Buggy and see if there's any. Uh, Phil goes around taking lots of photos he and does. loading them. And uh, there's actually one, a very unflattering one of me. And there's some. Uh, oh. You see, Phil, Phil gets on the real nitty gritty, doesn't he? He's, he's, um, he's advertised the round one practice pace, whereas we choose to talk about shoes. <laughs> That, that is a good way to describe the difference between RC Racing TV and Neobuggy.net. Yes. If we you want to hear a chat about shoes that people are wearing at the track, come to us. If you want to find out who's actually fastest, and boring stuff like that, check out Phil's website, Neobuggy.net. Don't worry, we will actually tell you who is fastest, because at the moment, Martin Bayer was fastest in the first practice round. This is now final practice, happy hour here on Fast Friday. Lots and lots of words I'm using here that I didn't need to put together. Uh, where's the gallery for this event on the Buggy? If you click on... What have you done? I've gone to gallery. I don't, no, 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 no. If you just scroll down... Stop. Get back up. Back up. There's a little link there. So you've got links to live scoring, live timing. Watch live, which is actually us. Photos is the next one. Ah. All there. Always thinking. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We haven't got Friday specs up yet. Can you view them all? Or do you have to go into each individually? You have to go each day individually. As I was discussing with uh, with Mr. Stuart Noble earlier in the week, uh, we had a... Uh, it's one of you from yesterday. No, it is. It's, it's one of me from yesterday. Thanks, Phil, for taking some nice photos. Um, we discussed about people taking photos at race meetings. And uh, I've come to the conclusion that the number of pictures Phil takes from each day is a sensible amount. We've got about six pages of photos, so about 100 pictures from each day. You do, you do get a good narration of the day through the articles that Phil does and the photos, uh, and none of the photos he puts up, they're not similar. You don't think, oh, same thing, same thing, same thing. They are, it does, it does do a good spread. Absolutely right, yes. If this was um, a buffet, I'd say that he'd put a good spread on. Right, a buffet with a good spread. Ra, 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 or buffet. Buffet. Sean Taylor, is this a job for the... That's a question that what? Dave Church asked me. Is this a job for the racers? For some guys, it is a full-time job. For some of them, oh, like well, I, thought, I thought he was saying, is our... Like, with regards to us, is, is this really a job for the racers? Oh. Because you two are just waffling. I waffle, Offy... Uh, offy? Offy, Ollie, thank you. Offy, that's... Uh, that's a dog, isn't it? I don't know. Offy, I don't know. Uh, Ollie, Ollie does the technical serious stuff. I waffle and do switching and stuff. 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 Say the word stuff a lot. Stuff. Right, I really should go and get some drinks <laughs> before, the, before the queues kick in. <laughs> was I stuck in a queue yesterday or was I first there? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Right, I'm going to turn this mic down a little bit for some ambience. Oh, I'll turn it down before I finish talking then. Okay. You should talk, keep, to the, keep talking for a second while I blow my nose. People don't, people don't want to hear that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I put the microphone into Ollie's face whilst he blows his nose. Right, I'm going for lunch. I will see you all on the other side. Okay, I will not go for lunch because I'm dedicated. I will sit here and talk to you about racing. Um, Stuart Noble on the main camera. Do you want a drink? What drink would you like? Would you like, and as we go through them, you can nod at the right time. Is that a good way of doing this? Okay, do you want Fanta? Coke? That'll be easy then. Coke it is. Coke it is. Oh no. Oh no. Someone has... Someone has arrived in our commentary box again, which is great to have someone join you. It's Dave Church, the announcer from this race. I will turn that mic back up again. Hello, hello. There we go, we can hear you. Good, how are you doing? I am very good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm very good, yeah, good, really good. So, we are going to a fast Friday. Good, that's, because good, we've that's got, good, yeah. That's good, yeah. We've got two rounds of practice, which in the second round, we're almost, well, coming towards the end of the second round now, 
and then three rounds of qualifying to start getting an idea of who is going to be quick, who might start at the front of the grid for tomorrow's A finals. Uh, what have you seen around the track, around the pits today? Any news? Um, no. No? That's no. Easy. Okay, well, thank you much. I mean, I did like your report last night about the grass. That was great. Oh, yes. yes. It's a shame I don't know how to Photoshop because I was here early. I was going to take a picture and put grass on it and post oh, it up. That would have been good. And if we'd have thought of that, Shu could have made, probably made one of those. Stu was just saying, uh, DC was saying if he was, if he was uh, earlier today, he would take a picture of the track and photoshopped grass all over it, like you did with the bag yesterday. Time. It would have ta oh, taken a lot of time. Oh, I, I would have just done a really cheesy looking one. But That's what I said Stu should have done yesterday, but he, he got really into that, making that picture of a, a bag of grassy with a Drango logo on it. Well, see, to my mind, it's pretty easy. Push a couple of buttons and it should happen. Yeah, that's what I said to him. I don't understand why graphic designers get so much money. No, neither do I. He hasn't heard that bit, so it's fine. Perfect. But um, th things are going well. I think uh, just from what I've seen over where I sit, the, the referees, as you might have heard, are really tightening up on stuff today. Yep. Um, you know, we, get, we get to the serious end of stuff now. So. That's right. Simple stuff like don't don't put your car down on the track too early. Yep. It, I suppose it's just one of those things that out of the corner of your eye, if you're qualifying and you see someone throw their car down, it's a little bit distracting. So we're like having a full blanket rule for everybody. So things like that, not you know, there was quite a few people in the two-wheel drive that were, um, when they finished, they turned around and started walking off the rostrum. And some guys still had half or three quarters of a lap to do. So we're tightening up on that as well. And I think there's going to be, in the early stages, well, you've already seen it in the second round of practice, loads of stop and goes being dished out. And you might say, well, what, what do you, what happens for a penalty in a practice? Well, it affects your seating of where you, your start yep. in round number one. And three drivers chose to not take a stop and go penalty. Right. And they'll be starting at the back. Okay. So I suppose as well as that, they would also then lose, <coughs> excuse me, some valuable practice time sitting in the stop and go box. Um, <clears throat> what's worse, lose a bit of lose a bit of practice time, or go off at the back of the back heat of the now. grid? Yeah, because I know one of the drivers was like looking at going off second now. Right, so that's going to make it difficult. We were talking to Ben Jemison camp earlier, saying that seating times don't matter too much, but you, you, if you can start towards the front of your group, that's, that's right. going to make it. You're going to get a nice clean first run in, then, or have the opportunity to get a nice clean first run in, which can then set you up for the whole of qualifying. Really, that's right. And certainly, if that's your pace, if you've done a, a quicker two laps, then say five other guys yep. you don't want to start behind five other guys yeah. you want them to see you coming up behind them and that'll give you much more opportunity to get get past them yes absolutely it, it could you know throw your whole day off kilt you've seen it happen many times also another thing they're going to be really hot on is when now for whatever reason I don't know why they decide all these rules I don't but that's what they decided before the track is open they don't want anyone driving around I mean no driving in circles no driving to another part of the track to try to find a bit of they're going to be really strict on it, and I think they're behaving now. That's, well, finally. It's only five yeah. days. Um, what are you here, actually? Something we talked about yesterday was, was about full-time drivers. Yep. That's and just problem, in the yeah. chat, uh, a few minutes ago, literally, uh, Sean Taylor said, is this a job? Is this a job for the racers? So I've just sat down while we, you just got here to remind yep. me. Started putting a list together who, who I think might be full-time racers. Yep. Um, now, we know that Jorn is a full-time driver. Jorn, uh, Jorn Neumann for Team Durango. Um, Hupo. Yep. He's a full-time racer, racing for Team C. Um, David Ronnefelk for Kyosho yep. is full-time, as Lee Marsden is for, for uh, Yokomo for the on-road side and Mugen for the off-road side. Yep. Robert Battier, the same teams as Lee Martin there. We spoke to Martin Bay, I say to check, he is a full-time driver for X-Ray. Uh, Miguel Matthias, I believe is full-time. Um, right. He races a lot more Nitro stuff as well, yep. off-road. Uh, Renault Savoy, also for X-Ray, I think pretty sure he's a full-time guy. And then uh, Tom Cockrell is kind of full-time because he, yeah. he works at Schumacher all the time. Then I had a look at some of the other guys that were up there. That's, do you think I've missed anyone from that list, really? Is there anyone you can think of that you know is a full-time full racer? Um, no, I think that's, uh, well, that's more drivers than I expected to see on there. So we've kind of got nine, eight, eight slash nine if we include Tom. In that that, one. That's a lot. That is quite a lot, isn't it? You know, I mean, people might think that there's loads of people flying around the world that are paid full-time racers, but there's not. There's only it's a really, handful of yeah. them, really. But, I mean, that, we're talking, that is, most of these guys also do the nitro buggies as well. Yes. So that is, there's not many more to add on to that in terms of off-road racing in Europe that is their full-time job. So you're only talking to 15, you know, maybe 15, 20 people tops for the off-road class, yeah. and perhaps 
a bit less than that for the on road, maybe maybe five to ten people for on road. Mm. So there's not a huge number of people that are full time racers. Um, Interestingly, I'll put that two names over this side of, of the list. Yep. Neil Craig, who uh, we know he's a, a fantastic talent, was third on the on the podium in two drive. Not a full time driver. That's correct. No, he has a, he's, a regular job. He's got a regular job to do as well. And the one I wasn't sure about is Peter Pinnish. I think he's got a full time job as well. I would agree with you. We could ask him. We could do. Yeah. yeah. If I see him out in the pit, yeah, I will. Him, we'll I'll catch we'll up and check him. with him. I'm not sure if he's in the industry as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it kind of does make sense for manufacturers to have people like Tom Cockrell yep. who still go into the shop and still do stuff, you know, on a day to day basis ish. But he has spent a lot more time traveling racing. Yes. Which I think that is part of Schumacher's strategy to promote the brand more. Yep. Yep. As uh, just seeing now, Stu's picking up, uh, looks like Ellis Stafford, I think. It is, yes. Uh, going down the back straight. Ellis, another driver who uh, has had an awful lot of success, but. Not a full-time racer. No, definitely not. He has got a real job. So I mean, that, don't mistake us out there. When when we say full-time racer, meaning that is what they do to earn money for their life. Yep. Lots of other drivers still earn money. Yes. But have full-time jobs. Yeah. Yeah. So I think Ellis falls in the latter category. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. So that means come Monday morning he'll be back at work. Yep. As we watch the internet's favourite driver now. Yeah. Oh, that's great. He is, he is a wonderful, nice guy. Jesper, have you got him up yet? Uh, we spoke to him. We did a pit walk uh, yesterday. We had chat yeah, to him then. He did talk to you. So we, did, we had a few words in there yesterday. Good. So uh, I'll try and grab him again before before the week is out. Well, if that's what the fans want, exactly. Yeah, it's just unusual, isn't it? Uh, well, not unusual, I suppose. Interesting to think who likes who and for what reason. Yes. And for whatever reason, Jesper has the look. Yeah. And uh, you know, probably the personality and the talents are backing all up, but. Yeah, someone on the someone on the chat yesterday, I think it was, saying that uh, uh, he's really, you know, he's, he's one of the guys that helps a lot of people out yeah. back at back in uh, his native Denmark, and also I guess as he comes to bigger races as well. But and that's that's why I think he's gained a lot of fans. Yeah. And uh, yeah, not really nice guy, really nice. Well, I was talking to someone else about him, and I won't name who it was because yep. it's not important. But he was saying that he was give, giving him some advice on how to practice. Yeah, and he said, "Go down to your local track." He said, if your track is two and a half meters wide, he said, make it one meter wide. Right. And drive around that. He said, when you can do that, make it a half a meter wide. Right. He said, then drive that. He said, as soon as you get to then, make it two cars wide. And when you can go around and do five minutes without touching the side. That's, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty impressive. That's, yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. It is. It's a great way to think. I mean, obviously, you have to have the facility and the ability and the time to be able to go do that. And you wouldn't be able to do that here, would you, to move all the track markings? Yeah, yeah. But um, what an interesting way on the inside on how much or what these guys do to train. Yeah. I suppose you don't even need to be able to move. If you've got a, if you've got a, a can of spray paint, yeah. a couple of uh, lines of spray paint around the out on the corners may be enough just to get that same effect. Exactly. Yeah, so I thought that was rather interesting. Oh, interestingly, Eric Pedersen on the uh, on the chat says he doesn't think Ron Felt is a full time driver, but still studying. Can you double check All that? Right. I will double check that. Yes, I what? believe he is studying. Yes, but I suppose what we're saying is he doesn't have a job at the moment. His yeah. his full time income. I know. I know. Num- I know a number of racers who uh, have the opportunity when they're away at college or university. Uh, they're studying full time in university commons, but obviously that. They've got a major source of income from racing and therefore do do race most of the time for that yeah. reason. Um, we're going to have a chat with David, though, and I'll see what he says. As David is going to be out on track very shortly. We're coming to the end of the final practice here at the 2014 four-wheel drive Euros, group number 13. So the B group of drivers. Yep, this um, has the two young superstars in it. It does indeed. Una Hattonen, number one, and Daniel Kovic, number seven. Um, and we've seen the heats have been reseeded for today yes. based on uh, that's kind of the practice Completely speeds. Completely, entirely reseeded. They did it. So that should mean that everyone is in heats with people of about similar speed. Yep. So there shouldn't be an issue with lapping uh, an awful lot of lapping of like, the slower cars, which should make the referees' jobs easier as well. It should make it easier. I mean, unfortunately for Team C, Kevin Lee had a bad day and ended up in Group Number Eight. And then I was looking at his two lap time was over a second quicker than the next person. Yeah. So, Kev Lee might have a bit of traffic trouble. But yeah. Interestingly, that was around the time when Ben was up here, and he was saying exactly the same was thing. He? That, uh, he thought, yeah, he was one of the one of the drivers who have lost out to that, that reseeding process. But 
I guess it's all been done um, by Paul Worsley, and he's got he's got a, a system for doing it. They do, yeah. I think they they do look at a lot of information, and as much as we might say about organisers and stuff, they really have gone very thoroughly into trying to find a way to seed it correctly as to the statistics that they had. Yes. Yeah. So that, I guess that's all you can ask for, it isn't it? it? Is indeed. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, lots of stuff goes on over there, lots of really, really detailed stuff where people think that something doesn't make sense or they might not have thought it through. I can tell you, they do. Yeah. But not everything, of course. If everything made sense, it wouldn't be an RC race, would it? No. <laughs> no, exactly. All right, so this is uh, group number 13 about to kick off their final practice. So we are we're about 20 minutes away from the start of qualifying here. Uh, when we move into qualifying, I guess that's yeah. when it... That's when the, the proper stuff really starts, doesn't it? It does indeed. You know, we, you can look at someone's quickest lap or quickest five laps or anything like that, how they look on the track, but until you put it against the time, you still don't know. Yep. And I, I, looking at the times already, as we have over there, we believe we've got the seating correct, and certainly correct for, like, the top two or three heats. And I think uh, Paul was saying that uh, young Yuna would have been like fifth in round on his times from the first practice. I know it's all, all relevant. Yes. But, um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think there's a good 15, 18 drivers that have a chance of making the mains. That's what we want to see. A, a yeah. lot of competition. And uh, maybe five or six guys in with a shot of the pole position as well. Yes. Uh, we've seen, yeah. you know, we expected Jorn and Lee to be fast. Ron Felk was quick in that last round oh. of practice. He had some really good laps in there. He did indeed. And uh, Neil Craig, Hubo Honigal, also fast. And Robert yeah. Battier up there with the fast yeah. laps too. So yeah, it was always going to shine for people like Robert and um, Ronald Falk, who are you know specialist eight-scale drivers. You know, you, you give them certain tracks with two-wheel drive, and they'll be as quick as anybody. But it didn't work for him here. Yeah. You know, to be like at the sharp end. But certainly four-wheel drive is, you know, more up, uh, more their forte. As we are watching Una Hatton on the screen at the moment, second in this run at the moment, second in the heat, uh, best lap time of 17.7. We've got, some se we've got 17 5 for Petri Strom, 17.6 for Peter Pinnish, 17.7 for Miguel Matthias, everyone else, no, and Michael Olovsky with the 17.9, everyone else in the 18s at the moment. Daniel Kovic still in the 18s. Interesting. How long did that take? Oh, no, just kidding. <laughs> as lunch has arrived for us today, so you may be able to do some quick maths to see how long it took today and see if uh, that's how long it might have taken us yesterday. I, I don't think I won. We saw you put a post in and we did have a long discussion as to whether you were allowed to enter or not. Wow. But, but then we realised that the only rules were you could be a member of the RCTV family. Yep. And whilst you're here helping us out this week, um, you're here for the event. You're yeah. the event announcer. Well, I, I would like to win again because actually they had a competition here in the arena. They did indeed. And I won. You did, but I you did. very kindly then gave your car back to the uh, competition and yeah. uh, organised uh, organised some game for all the kids here yeah. to play. So to I was that way, so. I wanted it. Oh, I really did. Well, why didn't you? Why didn't you keep it then? I didn't want anyone thinking anything was rigged. Oh, feel sorry for me. Yeah. Oh, oh, you know what else? Yes. Did the um, Euro RC guy talk to you? Did Anti? Yes, we spoke to Anti. Yes, yesterday or yes, yesterday we spoke to him. Yep. And uh, we have got, somewhere down behind us, uh, some very nice t-shirts from him as well. So, But has he spoken to you since then? No. All right. He had heard from his boss. Right. And they're looking for team drivers. Okay. So you'd have to find the details of, um, I didn't want to say it wrong. I'm, that's why I've not announced it in the arena. Yep. But um, that'd be a good scoop for you that uh, your RC are looking for team drivers. They want yeah. people all over the world. So not just necessarily in Europe. <clears throat> so maybe... At some stage, we'll get Antti to come up and speak to you again. Absolutely, yeah. Send him up at any time. Send him up at any time. Of, uh, yeah. Of great, so great, that. It's great to see some, as we said yesterday, some, yesterday or one of the days when we yeah. were talking They'll about some, together. some new teams uh, kind of forming up and uh, how, uh, I guess, the full-time drivers might be changing as we go into the future. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to shoot off and okay. let you guys have your lunch. Thank you very much. Wow, that smells good. What are we having? <coughs> Chicken salad and a pizza for stew. Oh. Sue's got I, a pizza, like yeah. Pizza, but yeah. I'm having chicken salad as well. It's good. Okay, well. Well, thank you very much for joining us again, DC. Thank you, as always. Uh, we're moving to qualifying, so if you're not listening to me, you will be listening to DC throughout all of qualifying here yeah. at the 2014 off-road, four-drive off-road Euros. 
Good luck, DC. Thank you very much. Save your voice for the finals as well. That's why I've just turned the volume up on the arena speaker. Perfect. All right, and, uh, we'll see you later on. Cheers. Cheers, DC. Dave Church there, who is announcing this whole race. So sitting directly opposite us in the hall most of the time, but uh, spending plenty of time up chatting with us here in the in the box. Yuna Hatton and Farsis from Petri Strom, Vano Savoy, Michael Lovsky, then Kobovic, Ma uh, Matthias, Pinnish, Nikolajson and Svensson. As we have one minute left, looks like the best single laps going to Hasnan and Kobovic, the youngsters, with 17 threes. It's a 17-5 for Strom and for Olovsky. And for Svensson, 17-6 for Savoya, Matthias, Pinnish and Nikolajson. So coming to the end of that one, it's going to be, wait for the last few cars to complete the last few laps, is anyone going to notch up anything better? And that is time, Yuna Hassan and Fart in that one was a 17-3, Petri Strom 17-5, Savoy 17-6, Olovsky 17-5, Kovovic 17-3, uh, Matthias 17-5, Spencer 17-5, Pinnish 17-6, and Nikolaisen, 17-6. One more heat to go in final practice here on Fast Friday at the 2014 four-wheel drive Euros. And uh, after this, there will be a brief lunch break. Qualifying get underway at 12.45 local time here in Sweden. As we will grab some lunch as well during that, that chance, we'll talk you through that first important round of qualifying. And then after that, we'll get on the way with the roving camera, I think. So, 12.30 local time now as heat number 14 blasts off for their warm-up laps. As Phil from Neobuggy sprints past the commentary box, going to switch cameras or switch lenses, ready for uh, this heat, so uh, getting ready to take some nice photos for Group 14, final practice. Hello to wherever you're watching us around the world. As we wish the drivers the best of luck. Final practice at the four wheel drive Euros. Thanks to Team Durango and the DX410 V4, VRC Pro, and J Concepts. Here we go. Last seat of practice. And we'll let the drivers get a couple of laps together to sort out their speed, figure out who is fast. And here we go. So our screen is showing the order on their two consecutive laps, which is what we'll use to start the heat order for. 
Um, I will let you know their best laps as we go through this one. And the best so far, Lee Martin, 17-3. Jared Ronnefelt, 17-4. Neil Craig, 17-4. Everyone else over the 17-5 marker. And all change around now as Robert Battier sticks in a 17.1. Martin Bayer, 17-1. Your Neumann, 17-4. Martin Bayer moves to the top of the times now with another 17-1. So the four-wheel drive defending champion on the pace. He's put his two-wheel drive event behind him. He is fastest at the moment. David Ronnefelt, 17-1, moves to second. Battier drops to third. Martin is fourth. Then Salmella, Neumann, Craig, Honigal and Hoffer. 17-1s for Bayer, Ronnefelt and Battier. Threes for Lee Martin and Carrie Salmella. And your Neumann now with a 17-3. Neil Craig, 17-4. Patrick Hoffer puts in a 17-3. Martin Bayer, the fastest man on the circuit. David Ronnefeld in second. Robert Battier, the fastest man on track. 17-1-3-5. David Ronnefeld, that's another 17-1 in that time by. Hoopo Honigal with a 17-2. And a 17-3 to move to second. As we watch Battier going around the flat stuff. Up to and off the tabletop. He's got Honigal on his rear bumper as they go down the back straight. Over the tabletop, he lets Honigal up the inside. Seventeen two from Lee Martin. We have got two minutes left here. Group fourteen, the final heat in final practice on Fast Friday at the four wheel drive Euros. Lots of Fs there. Bayer, 17-2. Let's check some more times this time, by with 1.45 to go. The best lap still with Bayer. No, with, with Battier, 17-1. 17-0 from Ronnefelk that time, by. Ronnefelk over the triples, then the TV double now. Ronnefeld 17-0, best lap. Battier 17-1. Bayer 17-1. Lee Martin 17-1. Hupo 17-2. Neumann 17-3. As there is one minute left. Fifty seconds to go. Anyone else got anything left in the tanks? Neumann puts in a 6 17 1. Lee Martin another 17 1. Hoopo with a fast 17 2. 30 seconds to go. This lap and one more for everybody. Seventeen zero from Lee Martin tops the timing sheets now. 16 8 from David Ronnefelk. 17-3 from Bayer. Who is it going to be? A few seconds to go. A 17-6 six from Lee Martin onto his final lap. Ronnefeld is done with the best of a 17-6. So, uh, sorry. But Ronnefeld done with a 16-8. Hoopo, 17-2. Robert Battier, 17-1. Uh, Martin Bayer, 17-1. Lee Martin, 17-0. Your Neumann, 17-1. 17-2 for Seth, Carrie Samella, 17-3 for Patrick Hoffer, 17-4 for Neil Craig. Officially, on my timing screens, Lee Martin wins practice with a best of 17-0, but the overall fastest lap, a ballistic time, two and a half tenths quicker than anyone else, David Ronnefeld, 16.8. That wraps up final practice. Practice is now done here at the 2014 Ford Drive European Championships. Thank you to Team Durango and the DEX 410 V4. Thank you to VRC Pro and thank you to J Concepts for making us
making it possible for us to be here supporting us. Thank you also to Efra for putting on the event and the Trollborgs Motor Club for hosting us here in Sweden. We are back with qualifying very, very soon. Stay tuned. More action for Fast Friday. That was an exciting round of practice. Who is it going to be? Ronnefeld, Lee Martin, Jon Neumann or somebody else? Stay tuned to RC Racing TV. All the action qualifying kicks off in about 10, 15 minutes time. We are back with you very, very soon.
45 left, drivers. Seconds left now, drivers.
Okay, so we're back. We're fed. We're watered. We are indeed. I it's can now hear myself in my ears, which is a lot better. <clears throat> everyone can hear us loud and clear, ready for uh, qualifying round number one, which is underway now at the uh, 2014 Four Wheel Drive European Championships. Yes. Just making sure we're about the same volume. I don't want to drown you out. Not a problem. I didn't expect you to come on the mic. I thought you were still lunching. I'm just... I've, I've eaten my food. I'm just kind of going through a few mints and drinks, so uh, I, can ha I can add the odd comment in. Interestingly, for dessert, we will have some of this a little bit later on. You've beat me to it. I was going to ask you about your plop. My plop. Uh, if you were listening earlier in the week, we had some cactus and pear-flavoured plop. Uh, I went, went to the supermarket last night and found... A red one, which I've now realised I've actually got English writing on it, so I can actually tell you what it is. Oh. It is milk chocolate with soft toffee filling. Oh. That sounds good to me, because I'd only read that bit there, which is just lots of, like, vowels and consonants, so. Yeah. Milk choc... Milk chocolate med wingladi toffee filling. Filling, Yes. Which translates to milk chocolate with soft toffee filling. Okay. Interesting, I can now read that properly. Milk being milk, chocolate being chocolate, med with ri ringland, I guess it's soft, toffee filling. Toffee filling. Toffee we filling. Go. filling. Learning Swedish. Yes. Every day is a learning day. Every day learning something. Wait for the race to be announced as finished. Before you start walking off the rostrum, please. Everyone clear with that? Yes? Yeah? Sounds so good. Thank you very much. Okay, no problem, Mark. Okay. Simon just temporarily disappears when we display messages on the screen. Yes. Don't forget does. you can see these timings <laughs> on my RCM. Thanks to RC Timing for helping out and uh, allowing us to stream the live timing to you as well. They're very quick at responding. Who? Have you ever, uh, Felix, Felix the developer. from my RCM. <clears throat> when you have a when you have a query, he's uh, he's straight on it, which is very helpful. Especially when you're broadcast. I'm going through these Tic Tacs very quickly. Can I have one Tic Tac from you? You can have one Tic Tac, but you may need to go to the supermarket tonight again. Nice more prop, maybe. What other confectionery can we find with silly names? We, to be fair, that is exactly what me and Stuart Noble did spend quite a lot of time doing. There was uh, What was the other one we found, Stu? I'd like to think there was a bar of cack. No. There was something... Was it Breakout? That's there was funny. something which then had a sequel as well, didn't it? Breakout 2. But something had a sequel. But there was something... And then... So, pub, well, it was, apart from the first one, wasn't called Power Bar One, it was called Power Bar, and then Power Bar Two. So, um, but this Power Bar One still existed. So, whether it was an improvement or not, or maybe they were just trying to get rid of some of the old stock, we're not sure. <laughs> Fair enough. So, hello to you if you uh, make Swedish confectionery. Sean Taylor, it's better with commentators. We agree. It is. But said commentators and cameramen need food, food and drink. And we are here for six days. And trips to the little boys' rooms. Yeah. I haven't done that yet today. Uh, Everyone wants to know it, didn't they? No. I actually went on a six-month tour to the little boys' room six this morning. Six-month tour? Mm. Right. I don't think it's something more than a trip. Right. I went backpacking. Backpacking to the toilet. Travelling. Wow. Um, yeah, so we, we are here for six days. And the most important stuff really is going to be those finals tomorrow. So we want to make sure that we are... Ready for those. I don't use up all of my voice. If you listen to the two of our finals, you'll know I use up all of my voice there. And mm. I'm kind of doing exactly the same thing again for four of our finals. And all, you also use all the energy and muscles in your right leg. I did, yes. Um, as I'm starting to do again today already. Mm. And I will do during qualifying because qualifying will be exciting here on Fast Friday yes. at the 2014 Four Drive European Championships. Yes. Only eight people in this. Um, yeah, they have a re. Uh, is that right, or is our time system a little? No, that sounds about right. They they have resorted the heats. The heats are now oh eight yeah. and nine buggies. Oh. After we had a few no shows. 
Are there less people? So there's less people in the four-wheel drive. There were ever so slightly less booked in, and then again we had a couple of no-shows. So I think they could have dropped off one final, maybe, or dropped chopped off one heat. But since the time hell was already done, we've got plenty of time to fit it all in. So we're going to stick it at 14 heats, put eight or nine buggies on the track, which gives everyone a little bit more space. A bit nicer for everyone. It means our days are slightly longer. Mikios, is it dead or is it just me? Is what dead? I hope it's not the stream. Everything seems to be okay here. Let me check it. I will have some buttons to click. Uh, McClogo looping. No Mikios. loops here. Mikios chopping. Click live. Oh, yeah, that helps. That was from a long time ago. Seems okay, our end. Are you having problems with us, with my RCM or with us? Do let us know. Comments like, is it dead or is it just me? As the technical geek, make me worry. Yeah, for me, my RCM is running. But I'm also aware that I am on a very different network to most people because I am slightly important this week. What network oh, no, are you on? No, I'm not actually. I'm just on the internet. I'm not for that. Yeah. yeah. Me and Stu are on the network Sweden. Oh. oh. The name of the telephone company over here. I'm Sweden. on Telia. No well, Telia. Actually, I'm not. To be fair, I'm actually on Neo Buggy's Wi Fi. Ah. Don't tell Phil. No, we brought in some highly trained technicians and hacked Phil's router. Yep. Stu created a diversion for us, kept on talking at the end of the pits. Stu is very good at talking, as we'll talk about, as we'll talk to Stu later on and get some interviews with him. Stu. Yes. Are you really good at talking? I guess. There we, there we go. go. Exclusive from Stu, he's very good at talking. Sorry, I caught him with a mouthful of stick as well. I can smell that from here. This smells good. It, it, is, it is a pretty good picture. What is it? We had, I had one. Yes. Another day. I just don't know what day. Am I a bit quiet? I can't tell. I don't know. I don't how know how high am I going up? I think I am. I'm going up to there. I can do a very clever thing with balancing the microphone on the deck. Which is I have two hands free to wave at this. Don't be an issue. Just be lazy. I do like waving. What we need to do, what we should do, is I should get some sort of like headset microphone for future events. You do what? Get some sort of like headset microphone. It would be so useful. Then you need, you need the little wireless radio boxes as well. Yes, it would work there, but then we need more of those and they're not cheap. Um, it freezes yeah. every now and again. Hmm. We are on a fairly good stream here. In Sweden, it does dip every now and again. If you're, I guess if you're struggling, maybe you might have to not watch in HD. Either, yeah, either drop down from 720 to 540, or if you uh, press pause and pop to the loo, or, or give it a minute, yes. and then press play and not press live, you will be a minute behind us, but then it gives YouTube a chance to buffer whenever it's, it kind of gives you a, a minute's worth of grace. It's up to you. Yep. Either or. And you know, a minute behind, you won't miss anything. And if you don't watch my at the same time, everything will be, it's, it's like being here then. It's like being here. And uh, as we were talking earlier in the week, if you are not, if you are not here and want to get the full experience, go out to your garden, dig up some dirt, and sprinkle that all over your laptop. Yep. Um, Get yourself some DEX410 V4 grass seed. Yep, chuck that around a bit. Yeah. Um, if you also uh, turn the temperature up relatively high and sit there in the same position for eight hours a day... It looks beautiful outside. It does, doesn't it? Luckily, it's quite cool in here at the moment. It is. It has been warm. And I'm then if you, want, if you want the real RC Racing TV experience, you also then get Stuart Noble to actually with a pizza, which smells very nice and a very interesting hat today. Apparently he's wore that hat earlier this week. He has done. I did see that earlier in the week. And I can tell I did because that's one of his hats I can read the writing on. If that's the size, is that the size of the amount of year the company would be getting? Seven and a half. Seven and a half. We can confirm news just in. Stu is a seven and a half. 
any of you would well, like eight, to... Eight, two size seven and a half. Head size. Head size seven and a half. If any of you uh, would like to buy Stu a hat, yep. um, then please send it to the RCTV offices. I think it's building 13 for inbound hats. For inbound hats is yeah. building 13 indeed. Building 13. Um, and uh, I make it for the attention of Stu, make sure it's a seven and a half. Yep. Uh, and, but the only condition is uh, one stipulation, which is strict, very strict on is you must leave the label on. Yeah, must have labels on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you take the, la- the label off a hat uh, and send it to Stuart, he will just throw it in the bin. Yeah. After talking into it aggressively. He'll, well, maybe he'll, maybe he'll pray into it first. Pray that next time you leave the label pray on. Pray you leave the label on. ISO Bell 2005, have you seen my dad? <laughs> yes. Is that ISO Bell 2004? Maybe ISO Bell from possibly 20 years ago is. Isabel? ISO is Bell. Isabel. Isabel. ISO Bell. ISO Bell. That sounds very American. ISO Bell. Maybe, oh, that sounds like an American telecommunications company. Mm, that, that works. I was thinking more of a sports gel for elevating muscles. I've tried to stop the bench. I cannot see the track at all. <laughs> but I can see you. If we face each other like that. <laughs> like some gnomes. We get some cards. Hold the microphone and we can play cards. Yes. We can play cards in the middle. Yeah. Um, I'll do this for about two minutes until my feet go dead. I can do this all day. How, uh, again, this is the sort of thing that we need a bit more information on because... We've probably seen your dad, we just don't know who your dad is. So if you let us know who your dad is, then um, we can tell you if we've seen him. Um, maybe, oh, maybe her dad's Martin Bayer and she wants to do another edition of Bear Watch. It could be. So, the latest update on, on Bear Watch. Uh, Have you seen Martin Bayer? He is not at his table at the moment. Not at his table. Tune in later for another episode yes. of Bear Watch. I've had to turn my, my feet back and, and my shoes. That's a long time, eh? Well, they stink. My shoes stink. Yeah. I should have bought flip flops with me. I was tempted, but it's very dusty in here. It is. I don't like having lots, dusty lots of Lots of washing of feet required. Yeah. Yes. Well, we have got showers here because we are a sports centre. Fluorescent shoes alert. Where? Um, I can't see them. Nope, can't see them either. I also can't see them because I'm just looking at. All I'm looking at is the side of Stuart ah. Eagle. I think they're on the washroom now, which means they'll be marching next. Oh, exciting time. Look out for fluorescent shoes. I keep pulling his head around. Oh, dear. Stu's messaged me on Facebook. What's the photo you need? Oh, that right, that photo. Ah, yes. Yes. Right, well, I'm not going to say it on... Ah, uh, that's what you messaged. Right. I'm going to read things before I say them from now on. What was the lady's name that I put that in the week, was it? I didn't know the lady's name. Okay. So if you know the lady's name, the, the lady's name, name the, lady, the lady driver, you know, hey. hotel, cop, cop, Danica cop, Patrick. Lee. Hey? Danica Patrick. No, it's a boy's name. Danica Patrick is not a boy's name. Danny. Danica. Oh, Danica. I thought right. it was Danny Kirkpatrick. Not Danica. Danica. Patrick. No. No. Danica. Sorry, Danica. No. I thought you said Danny, not Danica. Danny could be a girl's name as well. Danny could be. She needs a flash on that camera. Oh, you can't use flash, can you? No, if no flash well, photography. Not in the finals. Yeah, but. Yeah. She probably needs uh, a faster lens as well. Do you think? Yeah. I don't know much about photography. That's why I try and take all the photos on my generic smartphone device. Faster means it, le- it means it lets more light in, and you let more light in. It means the shutter can be faster. And yeah, I'm going off on one now. It's all getting very geeky and technical. I like it. For more geeky technical things, check out our look at Lee Martin's two-wheel drive buggy. Oh, I'm supposed to go do that, aren't I? Yes. Go and do what? Go and have a quick wander to see if I can make a friend. I need you to find a friend with a mid diff. Yes. Mid-diff friend. Mid-diff. Oh. 
in between us two is out soon. That is not a plug for any reason. I just thought I'd mention it. Again, a bit more of a British joke there. In between us. Computer friend. It's, it's a worldwide film, though. It is very popular in other uh, countries. Funny you should say that. When I was going to get food, I heard the Pop Pop Americana song at the bar, and it did make me think of the dance of the film. Oh, brilliant. If you've not seen that, uh, after we finish shooting tonight, why not uh, go to your local DVD store? And, they don't uh, do DVD it. stores anymore. Why not? Where are you from? The, the 80s? <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I, Netflix. I, I, or other online streaming services. I, I bet that uh, I bet that scene is on YouTube it is as, as a clip. It is on YouTube because I've watched it on YouTube. I know that. It's next to the one with dancing cats on skateboards. The other things that are on YouTube. Mostly cats on skateboards. Anyway, um, yes, so we have got a video store near my old house, actually, the house that I'm moving out of at the moment. Um, which used to work, we used to go and rent videos from in the 80s. Um, I say we used to, I didn't rent them in the 80s, so I was four. Um, Is this when you went dressed out like a Backstreet Boy? I've never been dressed like a Backstreet Boy. I've never been, I've never been, I've never been anywhere near that cool. <coughs> I'm sorry, yesterday, what? I've never been anywhere near that cool. Uh, sorry, I'm talking into my bottle of coke yeah, now. Yeah, really wonder why I can't I'm hear going myself. To, I'm going to talk into this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused. I think we're a lot over confused now. Um, yeah, it then turned into a DVD rental store. Uh, we went there once to hire. I went to hire Robocop, I think. Fa fairly, I say fairly recently. Dead or alive, you're coming with me. Uh, I, at some point, I went to hire Robocop. And uh, it took about half an hour because I had to go through the registration process. So then I went home and just downloaded it from iTunes instead. Murphy, it's you. Is this the new one? No, the old one. Good. Oh, you were talking about the new one? No. 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 I haven't seen the new one because I don't really get film. As Stu Noble would say, films aren't for you. What was the buddy in Robocop? Clarence. What? Clarence. Clarence? Yeah, Clarence. It was Clarence. Was, hang on, here we go. Phil from Neo Buggy. Was Clarence the baddie in Robocop? Hang on. Oh, he's, he, you're going to look it up on the internet, aren't you? It doesn't seem like a very... It's not a very good baddie name, is it? No. Oh, Clarence. <laughs> oh, what have you done now, Clarence? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't put that in there, Clarence. Oh, no, I want the original Robocop IMDb. Oh, 1987. Clarence Bodinka. Bodinka. I knew it. It right. is. It's Clarence. Right, I'm going to quickly nip to the pits. Uh oh. To see if I can make a friend. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, waffle alert! Waffle alert! Ollie is leaving the commentary box. I'll be as quick as I can, although I may go via the little boys' room after now talking about it for so long. That would be good. Um, so I'll be back in a few, a few minutes' time. Have you seen Robocop two? Pardon? Have you seen Robocop two? Right. For more, I'll leave you with James for more Robocop chat i'll see you in a bit i'm more of a terminator fan that was 1990 three years after the first one okay is anybody waiting to join the group one person ian hunter welcome to the group. Remember, you can't like us, but you can join us. And you'll need to do this to take part in the Schumacher competition that we have to win the four-wheel drive buggy. Um, pop over to the uh, Facebook page. Have a look for Ollie's page, uh, Ollie's post, which is pinned to the top of the page, and it tells you there how you can be how you can enter the competition. Uh, it's quite simple. There are two questions. One is uh, a tiebreaker guessy question um, and the other is based on some technical information which oh, you might find on the Schumacher website. I won't say any more than that. Uh, take a look. You should be able to find that out and you can enter. But you will need to be uh, part of the Facebook group to enter. You will also need to be a real person, not an organisation, dog or other animal. One, one second, please. At the end of the run, drivers, when you 
Stu, is your lens okay? Sorry, Kim, thank you. Oh, it's okay. I thought there was I thought we had lens issues. Playing with his lens. It's quite a big lens. I have lens envy. So, if you want to join the group to enter the competition or stay up to date on RC Racing TV news, then head over to www.facebook.com. Type in three words in the top left search bar, RC space, racing space, TV. Search for us. Join us. Once our team of uh, highly trained uh, monkeys uh, confirm you're not a spammer, uh, a fake sunglass seller, or such, we will add you to the group. Come join us. Oh, just like Steve and Speedy Allen did two seconds ago. 34 friends in the group, one mutual friend, Frank McKinney. That's a new mutual friend. Hello, welcome to the group. Let's see what's going on. Clarence Bodiger, yes, William White, it was. Clarence. Oh, no, we're fluorescent, not, no, we're oh fluorescent shoes, I think, might be behind the timing. Let's see. No, they're out of shot. Six, two, and oh. Just see Kai there walking across the track with some spray paint. Ah, he's just re-putting the martial numbers on the floor. It's okay, he's not vandalising the track with some kind of street graffiti. Bayer watch update, I can confirm Martin Bayer is at the bottom of the rostrum, just in front of the media booth. Uh, who would he be looking at? Group 5 currently out on the, on the track. He's got his eye on someone. I can't tell who he's looking at. Someone in the midfield at the moment. Can up and over the tabletop turn. No, he's looking back at another car now. No. I can't identify who Martin Bayer has come to keep his eye on. If I can work it out, I will keep you informed. So it's group five on the track with four and a half minutes just under to go. Current best time, best lap time held by Henry Verter with an 18.297. Currently in first place, Finland, I believe. Coming up. As Ollie Wait makes his way back to the media booth without a car. Uh oh, serious look on his face. Turning his mic on. Should I be disappointed? Not disappointed, intrigued, I think is the word. Okay. I, uh, I've been, uh, had a little nose around the pits. And I'm. The uh, Timmy Toes out bag isn't in a, in a isn't in a state where we can kind of look at it really. Unfortunately, at the moment, maybe later on. But yeah. Uh, I went to have a look at Martin Bayer's car then. Yeah. He's not actually running a middle gear diff. Oh. However, his teammate Renault Savoia is. But. Neither of them were there, so I couldn't talk to them. Ah. They had their cars on the table. Because he's there in front. Oh yeah, there they are. Hello. No, I can't say that's the back of their head. That's not. It's not really house. Mm. So. I will try and find someone's that we can use. Okay. Maybe Renault's. Just go and ask Renault. I will do. Go and ask him now, is there? Right now. Yeah, because he won't be on for a while. What group is on now? Nice lady, Tanya. Group five, yeah, I'll go and ask him. I'll be back in a minute. Go and ask him. Henry out front still. Look at him doing 16 in a six. He's only 
Ollie, the official RCTV golden retriever. Throw him out into the pits and he will come back with something. Could on ro could on road cars work off road with road tyres? Uh, I'm looking across at two more people more experienced in remote control racing here, but I think even I know the answer to this one. Maybe could on road cars work off road with off road tyres? I think that's a big fat no. I'm um, being told there was a rally car that was higher shocks, never took off. No, it seems like there was one example where it might have been a possibility but um, didn't uh, ever come to fruition. Uh, but the answer is no. Um, the, the ground clearance and uh, the shocks are very different, uh, especially the touring cars. are extremely low to the ground. Um, so I think that's a resounding no. Anyway, Ollie, what did Renault say? Uh, talking of people saying no, oh. it wasn't. Re Renault said yes. Oh, of course we can. But no, but why haven't we, we got it there in your hand now? Well, because we kind of need to be on camera, don't we? Okay. When's he back on track? What groups Renault in? Thirteen. So he's happy to do it this round. So, um, what, what do you want to do? We've got a good half hour. How quickly can we uh, rig, a, rig one of our mobile cameras up? Uh, very quickly. So let's do that. Suggestion? Oh, what's uh? Yes. Yeah? Let's do that. Okay. Is he happy for us to just go over? Well, we'll grab him and take him over with us. Or do we... Oh, of course, because he can't bring it. Can he bring it in the pit area? Not as easy. Okay, we'll take the camera out to him then. Yeah. Uh, right. A half an hour, is this worth it? Yes. Okay, we'll do it. Shall I let you go and rig yes. that up? I'll keep talking to people at home. He's plugging wires into a camera. To make a big, it's, it's basically, I've decided that Stu's camera is kind of like um, uh, Power Rangers in a way. Because they, you know, they have a, they have something sort of it, and then they like change a little bit, and then clip other bits on and make a bigger thing out of them. And that's basically what Stu's doing with all his cameras. He's like, he's opening other boxes now to get other things out to clip other things together. I'm sure this cut would be fascinating for you. Um, So what we're going to have to do is I'm going to have to click over here now and we'll look at this little look at that low, low panel set of people going to walk right in front of it as they always pick up their cars and put the new cars down. So where are we? Group number six coming out on track now. So, group number six coming out on the track now. We have got a few minutes, about a minute before we start this run. So, in this one, we've got Tommy, Dimitri, Felix, Oliver, Sammy, Max, Tobias, Esco, and Lars. And uh, we are a few seconds away from starting this one. A 
Okay, so let's get underway with group number six. Okay, here we go then. So, group number six about to get underway here. This is 2014 four wheel drive European Championship. We are brought to you by Team Durango and the DEX 410 V4, VRC Pro, and J Concept. So a slight false start there. Um, so it's going to really grid the cars up for this group six first round of qualifying. We are trying to get into an impromptu walk up to the pit. Uh, we'll be uh, back to you on a moving camera as soon as we can. Uh, I'll just read re 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 reading up uh, group number six here. I think they're just about sorted out and ready to go. So here we go then, group number six. And uh, let's check some lap times in this one as we get underway with group number six qualifying round number one. Okay, and I just need to unplug these headphones and you've James has got some headphones on. Who I nearly called Matt then for a second. Um, I just had a very quick bit of research to do before um, I come out with you there. Um, to make sure some of the information I'm going to give you is correct, or at least as correct as it should be. And we're underway here with uh, the group, group number six, round one of qualifying. And uh, Tommy Lynn, Dimitri, Felix, Oliver, Tobias, Max, Lars, Sammy, and Oscari. But I think we are just about ready to dive off into the pits. So, the, uh, we will focus this pit walk very much on the, uh, the idea of centre gear diffs. And uh, so, we're going to leave our media centre and commentary box and just see where all of the guys are that we want to talk to. Uh, we've got a couple of them in the tyre gluing area at the moment, just seeing where, uh, where Renault himself is. Uh, he was in the tyre area a few minutes ago, I'm just hearing, but let's head back, let's head into the main pit area and see if he's uh, out into there yet or if he's uh, doing any other. No, he's still in the tyre gluing area, so let's quickly, let's go around this way. 
We can go and have a quick look, firstly, in fact, at the cars, which have still have got their body shells off, over on the uh, X-ray table. We shall dive straight in and have a look at uh, Renault's car. So what we're looking at here, and we can actually show the layout of the four-wheel drive buggies. Uh, they're all very similar in terms of layout. We've got these two slots here, which is where the battery pack will sit in a saddle pack format. So the two separate batteries there. Um, you've then got the motor position at the front of the buggy, in front of the, along with the servo, speed control and receiver. The electronics trying to balance out the motor side to side that way. This, the motor then drives the centre gear here, and then that then in turn drives the drive shaft to the rear gearbox and another one under this top deck to the front gearbox. Inside each gearbox there is a differential to uh, allow the two wheels side to side to rotate different speeds. But we can see here this, this block here is basically a centre gear differential. So that will allow the rear drive shaft and front drive shaft to rotate at different speeds to get different power to the front and rear of the car. Now we can compare that hopefully to Martin Bayer's car just down here very quickly as Martin's working on it and we can see that Martin hasn't got that differential in the uh, centre of the car. You're just running the sli sand and slipper. So Martin, um, can you explain the difference between, have you run the, have you run the differential in the centre first? Yes. I didn't try it here but uh, before the years I went to practice one t like two days near to me and I tried to yeah, but I decided to stick with this car because I was confident with it. And and the idea of the centre gear differential is just to change the power between the front and rear wheels, is, is that right? Yeah, yeah, it's just basically it has to give you more traction on low grip track, so it should be good here. But you're finding the standard slipper, d slipper in the middle works, works fine for you here? Yeah, I'm, I'm confident with it, so I just stick with it and trying to do the best of this. Well, there you go. So you can see the difference between the two different setups we've got here in the X-ray, the X-ray uh, four-wheel drive buggy. So a standard slipper in a, in the middle of uh, Martin's car, and the gear differential in the centre of Renault's car. Uh, both of them sitting up in the top ten at the moment. So I guess in terms of outright speed, probably not a lot of difference. Then it's just about the individual feeling the, for the drivers. Yeah, definitely. I, mean, I have different driving style, Renault have different style. So I mean, it's just about drivers. So. There we go. Right, well, we'll let you get back to preparing your car. Thanks for having Let's have a look inside the, inside the buggies. So we're now moving from, I guess, the, the classic layout, as you see on, on Martin's car. More and more cars now trying the gear differential in the centre. And we'll see if we can catch up with a few of the other teams around the pits and see if they're doing something similar as well. Thanks so much for talking to Martin and good luck in the first qualifier. Yeah, thank you very much. So there we go. Look at the X-ray, the current European four-wheel drive champion buggy. So you can see the difference between the two, two identical cars apart from that centre differential being the only difference. Uh, let us have a quick walk around as we go around the pits and see if anyone else we can quickly grab a word with to talk about the difference in the cars. We've got the associate team there. Their new B44.3 will come with the uh, gear differential in the centre as standard. So uh, watch out for that. We spoke to um, Cody from Team Associated. I spoke to him for the podcast, which I need to finish off today, actually, a little bit later on. Um, he basically said the new car should be out within a couple of months, so you'll be able to buy that in the shops as well. Um, as you will, in fact, all the cars that have been raced here at this year's European Championships. Um, let's have a quick wander around to the uh, the yoke motor. We had a question whether Lee Martin was running a diff in the centre of his yoke. Uh, Lee's not here, but Shin is. Shin, just really quickly, um, we've been asked to come into the pits and find out, are you running a differential in the centre of the car? No, this is no center depth. So just a slipper at the moment? Yeah. yeah. Have you tried a differential or is there, is there not one available for your uh, car? We're never testing. You haven't tested one at all, so you just stand, going with what you know, the standard stuff? Yeah, right. There we go. So Lee Martin running the standard slipper. Thanks so much for clarifying that, Fishin. Answer some of the questions from the guys back at home. Yes. All very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So Yokomo there just running the standard slipper in the center. And while we're here, let's go and talk to some of the other guys who we know are quick anyway and see what they're doing on their cars. Uh, let's go and talk to, we'll talk to Jorn, since we often talk to Jorn anyway. And we can have a look inside the, D, the DEX 410 V4 from Team Durango. And Jorn is getting very busy there building some shocks at the moment, as Gerd is uh, playing a game on his, uh, his phone. Uh, let's just quickly see if we can grab a very quick word with Jorn. I don't want to interrupt him too much, because I know you're building shocks is a very time-consuming thing. Uh, something we've been asked to try and find out about is uh, people who are running... Uh, differentials in the centre of their cars, on the centre drive shaft. Are you running one on yours at all? No, we cannot fit it in our car. You don't have one that fits your car, so uh, is that something you'd like to try for the future? Is it any different, do you think, or is it just a, a tuning option? We tried it already, like, I don't know, one and a half years ago, and it's more easy to drive, but always a little bit slower. 
And obviously you're looking for out and out speed, so you stick with what's fastest. Yeah, of course. So just, so just a normal slipper then? Yeah. Um, do you think, you've seen some of the other cars, we just had a look at the X-Ray, for example. We know the new Associated will have the differential in there. Might that be something you look at again in the future, do you think? Or is it just a case if you've tried it before and you know the slipper works very well now? Yeah, maybe it's good to have it as an option. So if you could fit it, and so maybe we think about it. Okay, well, there you go. So Jorn just running the standard slipper. Good luck for qualifying as we get that underway very shortly here. Thank you. There you go. So Jorn, as you just clarify on there, running the uh, just standard slipper in the middle of the car in his four-wheel drive buggy. Uh, Durango, as I say, said, had tested it a long time ago but didn't find it any faster. And that's the important thing, I guess, is the actual speed on the track. Uh, Hupo's down here, so let's have a quick word with Hupo as well. Before he wanders off, and we'll have a quick with, uh, Hupo, we've just uh, been asked to try and find out some information by the fans at home, looking around the different cars, trying to find out who's running a differential in the centre of the car, on the centre drive shaft. Have you got one available for your car at all? Are you running one? Have you tested one? Uh, we have one available for the car. I tested it a lot. Um, for me and this type of track, it was easier, but it was uh, a hair slower. So, and obviously, you're looking for. I was saying, I think the same thing. Jorn found there. It was easier to drive, but slower overall. So you're gonna go with what's fastest. Yeah, I go with a slipper. But I have to say, for the average driver, I think it's a really, really good option because it just makes the car so stable on power and uh, just pre more predictable. What's the, I guess, it, put it in really simple terms, what does running that centre differential do? It, ch it changes the power between the front and rear wheels is the, I suppose, the simplest way of explaining it? Yes, that's for sure the simplest way. It's just easier on power because the car won't slide over the rear. And so it just makes it easier to drive then, I guess? Yes, yes, for sure. But in terms of, in the terms of the front and rear differentials, are you running gear diffs in there at the moment or ball diffs for this track? I'm on gear diffs. And you can, you can tune those just by changing the thickness of the oil and the same applies to the centre diff as well? Yes, of course. I'm, I mean, I had a lot of experience with gear diffs because my previous car had gear diffs, so I pretty much know what to fill in. There you go. So learning the previous experience, it does translate from one car to another then? Pretty much, yes. There you go. Thanks for clarifying that for us, uh, Hupo, and good luck as we go into the first round of qualifying. Going to be off car number two. Um, practice has gone pretty well for you, so what's the, what's the plan for qualifying? Well, they're like five or six guys so close together, so you cannot really say it. I think the, the guy who stays the cleanest will be in front. So once again, no mistakes is going to be the key here. Yeah, that's for sure. Absolutely. Right. Thanks very much for talking to us, and good luck. Thank you very much. So I hope they're clarifying that he's running a slipper as well in the car. Uh, tested the uh, gear lift, but found it, found it a little bit slower, and these guys who are competing for the European Championship title, they're looking for the absolute speed they can get out of the car. Uh, we are halfway through group number seven at the moment, so since we're down here in the pits, I may as well have a walk around and chat to a few other people. Um, should we continue this theme? Yeah? Uh, who else? Let's go look at, should we go and look at the Koho Show car as well? So we hopefully now I've looked inside a couple of different buggies, and let's have a look at one other one. D uh, David Ronnefeld, right down the far end. No, in fact, let's talk to Ellis Stafford, who's... Uh, Ellis is uh, here working on his TLR car. I'll just quite quickly jump in here. We've got plenty of time before your race. We're not going to interrupt anything, are we? Yeah, no, I'm just getting ready. So we've, uh, we were looking around at the different cars and different sort of layouts inside the car, and the TLR is probably the only one with a very different sort of internal layout inside the chassis. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, it is very different. Obviously, three belts, uh, obviously very similar to the old car. Um, and most of the cars now are going for a shaft drive design. Yeah, a lot are shaft drive. I, I think some of that was uh, brought on by you know, racing on dirt and it's all sealed, but obviously with, uh, with this it's sealed from dirt as well, so uh, it kind of brings the softness of, uh, of belts, but the, the, the maintenance side of uh, shaft, so. So it's working very well on this dirt track we've got at the moment? Yeah, it's going all right. Oh, it's just the driver, really, that's the problem. <laughs> uh, the jumps are really tricky, you know, so you, you kind of get into a flow and then if you muck one up, you kind of ruin your flow a little bit, but yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, pulling some good lap time, so if I can knuckle down and have a good run and uh, it should be should be good again i suppose the same thing we've been talking about all week is the consistency making it good over the whole five minutes yeah it is yeah you know get get out get out of the blocks well and just and just keep it going over them jumps you know that's the, that is the ticket to the track um we've been talking to a few drivers uh, we've had a few questions in fact from people at home talking about the center gear differentials that some of the cars are running obviously you can't quite do that on your car have you got anything that's equivalent or similar to that that you can run on the belt drive car no not, so you, not on this, no. So you've just got basically the sand slipper on there, on the yeah, on the main the shaft? Thing, the only thing we can do is run the clicker for the one way, but uh, we don't tend to run it because it's, you know, it's nice to have permanent four-wheel braking and it's better for uh, in the air. 
Okay. So uh, most, in fact, other drivers, although they've got the option of the gear differential in the centre, most of the fast guys we hear are just running the slipper anyway because it, it's faster. Yeah. It's just... Uh uh, maybe they maybe they'll be good on high grip, but I don't think they'll help here because it will just it will just put the power to the the, fr the end that's got no grip, which will be the front. So you'll just light the tyres up, and then to stop that, you you'll be going so thick on oil that you'll probably negate the fact of having the centre diff. So yeah, it's just mentioned that. So if we can tune the differential through different oil viscosities, yeah. a thicker a thicker oil is going to mean uh, I suppose a more equal balance of power between them. And uh, yeah, as you say, that's almost negating the point of having the diff yeah, in there. To to a point, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think on the real high grip back home and and on bumps it'll be good, but I, I don't I don't think there's much in it around here. Okay, well let you get back to prepping your car, ready for your first qualifier. Good luck, and we'll see how you get on in the first round. Thank you very much. There we go, Ellis Stafford, former European champion, racing for TLR Team Lossy Racing, and uh, one of the few belt drive cars actually out on the market now. Let's uh, as we, let's go down and talk to talk to David Ronafelk if he's still around. I think he is down there. Uh, as we walk down the pits. To the farm, and actually, this is going to be able to. We can look at two different cars as we come down to this end of the pits. Let's firstly see if we can jump in here and talk to David once again as we're doing this pit walk. And hopefully, James can get through here. David, so uh, we're getting ready to start qualifying now. Um, how are you feeling? Feeling good so far. Yeah. You've got a very fast car. Yeah, it's fast. Um, hopefully, I can be consistent, but so far, I felt pretty good. Um, I caught up some uh, lap tra uh, traffic in the end of the last practice, uh, which cost me two small mistakes, but I feel the car is fast and it's pretty easy to drive, so it should be should be okay for qualifying. Good stuff. Now, we've, uh, we've been asked by the viewers at home to come out and have a look at some of the different cars and look in particular at the layout of the four-wheel drive chassis. So can we just pop your car up on, on here, if that's all right, so James can get in nice and close. We can see you're running the shorty pack next to the motor. Um, have you tried any other different uh, motor or battery layouts at all for this circuit? No, uh, I tried. Uh, I tried at. Uh, I think it was, yeah, at the warm up. I tried uh, the first time out with the car. I tried it with saddlebags, but I felt the car. For me, I like a lighter car. So for me, it's a shorter pack. Since it came, it has been the best for me. Uh, uh, like at the worlds, I was driving shorty. Like every time I put a shorty in the car, it feels just easier to drive a car for me. Uh, it's a little more like reactive, uh, responsive on the steering and stuff, and it rotates uh, super nice. Okay, and the other thing I guess a lot of people are talking about is uh, this the centre gear here and uh, centre gear differentials, which seem to be finding a lot of favour now, a few people running them. Have you got that as an option for your car? Are you able to run that at all? Not yet. I don't know if uh, they are uh, developing a gear diff or not, but this uh, one right here is a slipper clutch, like uh, like normal uh, standard clutch. and uh, Yeah, but I mean, on, I, I've set it pretty uh, soft, so, so it would be good for this track, but... I think um, yeah, the car is uh, is a good base uh, to start to go uh, with all the tracks I've tested it on, and for me it's way better than this old car, so it's a big improvement for sure. Excellent. Thanks for talking to us. Good luck as we go into the first qualifying. Thanks for having. Let us have a look inside your car. Yeah, thank you. There you go, uh, David Ronfelt for Team Co Show, and I'm going to have a quick talk to the person sitting next to him, Christopher Svensson, as well. You are running the Hot Bodies HB D413, one of the few drivers who actually run that car, and you're not, you're not obviously running for Hot Bodies, you're a private driver. Uh, how's the car for you so far? Uh, the car is pretty good. Um, it's just my driving, I made some mistakes, but the car is really good actually. It's really easy to handle and doing well over all the bumps, and yeah, I like the car. I know uh, you're right upside, certainly well inside the top 20 at the moment, so maybe shooting even for an A final place? I'm aiming for a, a final place, and uh, that's my main goal. And I think I will, I should be able to get to that easily, hopefully. And uh, obviously, the car itself has had a lot of success with uh, drivers like Ty Tessman in the states, and uh, that must uh, kind of spur you on. Even though there's not many other guys running the car here this weekend, you know that car's fast anyway. Yeah, well, when I see, I've seen Ty racing it, and he's doing well. Uh, well, he's a better driver than me, but still, I'm, I'm doing my best. It's pretty hard when you're all alone by the car. But I think it's going to be pretty all right. Okay, can we just spin your car around here for a second so we can take a look? James can get a nice good look inside it again. Another one of the drivers running the shorty pack here with the motor uh, opposite it and then the electronics spaced to balance the front end out. Again, have you tried any other layouts with the batteries or motor? No, this is the first time I'm running the car. And uh, the other thing we want to talk about again is the, is the centre differential there. So are you running, it looks like you are running a gear diff in the middle? Yeah, yeah, all gear diffs in it. And uh, have you tried, or have you tried kind of different oils or anything in that centre diff to try and tune any of the power? Well, I've tried to change the diff oil a bit, but 
the car feels like running on a one eight scale car, and I think it's yeah, that's the way I like to race it. So I think that's one of the one of the things certainly uh, from where you heard earlier in the year when we were talking to the, uh, the designers of the car that they really went for strength on the car to make sure you can you know it's a really strong car and I guess many many similarities to the eight scale cars then. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's I don't think there's any part of the car that you could break easily or anything. I, seems pretty pretty strong. Good stuff. Well, good luck in your qualifying. Let's see if you can make it into that elusive A final placings, uh, and we'll see how you get on. And we'll catch up with you later on. Cool. Thank you very much. There you go, Christopher, running the. Uh, HB D4 D413, the Hot Bodies buggy, running it privately, so one of the few uh, HB drivers here this week. Um, that kind of, I think, will wrap us up for this round of our pit walk. We've uh, had a look inside a number of different cars, so thanks to all the drivers for letting us look inside them. Uh, actually, tell you what, no, there's someone, just walk, since Cody has just walked back to the pits, uh, we are on group number eight, so I'm going to grab a very quick word with Cody from Team Associates. Sorry, James, I'm going to let you uh, carry the camera for a little bit more. Um, since we had some questions about the B44.3, let's just really quickly jump in here with Cody. Uh, we've been walking around the pits, um, looking at some of the cars, the four-wheel drive cars we've got out there. So I'm going to have a seat as well. And um, we'll talk about the, the new car we've got on the way, the B44.3. And one of the things people have asked us on the chat room about is the centre gear differential in the cars. We've seen a couple of the guys running it here. We've also heard a couple of guys have tested it and found the slippers easier to drive or faster. Um, what's your feelings on the two, the two different options? Um, yeah, I think it's a big difference in driving style. To me, the, the centre gear diff gives the option to really release some of the power to the front tyres when it can't be used on slippery conditions. Um, we have one guy here doing some testing with it this weekend, and he's uh, been running really, uh, really well. He's up in the A sort for qualifying, and he's going to stick with it. So I think it's a good option to have. And uh, I suppose you must have done quite a lot of back-to-back -back testing between the two before you decide what to go with the standard kit. Uh, yeah, I think it's the most durable option, especially like the Astro tracks and stuff where there's tons of grip. Um, I think it also provides the biggest tuning window, where if your setup's not quite right, it is forgiving and lets you get away with it. So. I suppose, and that's, uh, I guess, a key thing maybe for not just the pro drivers, but for also the club drivers as well, who just want a car that is reliable and easy to drive. Yeah, I mean, getting the slipper set right is really important, and now that you don't have to worry about that, it's just easy. You can put the, the right diff load in. There should be a pretty broad range of what works, and for any given track, you know, it'll probably be the same oil every time. You can just put it in, don't have to check it, and go for it. So Makes it nice and easy, and then also gear diffs in the front and rear of the cars now as well. Again, make it nice and easy, no ball diffs to rebuild all the time. Yeah, I think for the most part, people like the gear disc because they are uh, really durable, no setting, no building. When you build it once, it should be good as long as it, you know, you build it properly. And uh, we'll have ball diff options for if the conditions are necessary, but gear diffs seem to be more popular. So, okay, well, thanks so much for talking to us. Good luck with the with the team for those we get underway with qualifying, and uh, well, we'll probably catch up with you later in the week and see how the team's getting on. <laughs> All right, sounds good. There you go. So Cody from uh, Team Associated there, uh, talking about the difference in the differentials. James, James looks like he's got a bit of a question here. Let me just put the mic down to James. Have we spoken to Jesper yet? Uh, we spoke to him yesterday. So, uh... oh, he's down here. Yes. You want to try and grab a word with him now? Might as well. Yeah. Oh, we've got batch apparently. So let's see if I can just quickly jump in here and grab a word with Jesper as he's helping out uh, Daniel on his car. Jesper, can I grab a quick word with you? Um, you're getting underway with qualifying now. How do you feel about qualifying? Yeah, I think Daniel can make a very good entertain. B main, A main maybe. Yeah. And you? C main, B main. So you think he's going to beat you? Yeah. And you're helping him on his car? Yeah. He made a, a bit of his car to the next round, so I think it's going to be great. Okay, well, you've got a lot of fans out there, a lot of people cheering for you on our, on our live stream, so good luck with your qualifying rounds, and we'll see if you can make it up into the B main or maybe even sneak an A final place. We'll talk to you later on. Yeah, see you. Thanks very much. So, young just there, helping out another youngster. So, uh, interesting there that a youngster's helping a, a someone who's even younger than him work on the cars, rather than uh, getting the old guys who are mechanics on, the, on them to, to work them. But I think that should just about wrap us up. Do you reckon for now... Um, yeah, I think I think that will do. Oh, hang on, James. James looks like he's got, he's pulling his puzzled face. I'm just wondering if any of the viewers at home would, uh, who haven't been to an event like this, would wonder. I don't know. Is it worth doing a mini tour of the shop, or is that pointless? Be honest. We can we can have a quick walk around. We have got a shop here. Yes. Let's see what 
kind of products Let's see what kind of products you can buy when you come to one of these events. Yeah, obviously the thing with uh, a European Championships is a lot of the drivers here are either sponsored racers or supported racers, so I've got a lot of support from their teams. And you've seen we've got a lot of the teams there as well, so they're there to help out their drivers. But, you know, we always, it's always good to have a model shop on site because there'll always be something that you've forgotten. So, fairly obviously, we've got, we've got things like the wheels and the control tyres that uh, are in use throughout this, uh, this race meeting. All sorts of other useful things like a lovely car stand there. From J Concepts as well. Big thanks to J Concepts for supporting us. With, uh, you can paint that up into whatever your body shell colours are, so you can have a car stand that matches your buggy. That's really cool. So the tyres are controlled, but the the wheels are not. Yes. So the wheels are, and we were talking to uh, Dave Church about this uh, yesterday, uh, one other day, that all the different buggies seem to have a different fitting for the wheel. So. You might be feeling it, for example, with touring car racing or nitro on road, where all the fittings for the different cars are the same. It's not the case in buggies. Some of them have got a pin, some of them have got a hex and different size hexes. So hopefully, what I think everyone is hoping is over time, we will eventually move towards a standard fitting. But as we're not there yet, you do have to carry a lot of different wheels with you to all the different race meetings to, uh, to suit the different types of cars. Thank you. Okay. So as we move down, we've got lots of other spares there, lots of spares from Team Associate, their factory team line of different springs to tune the suspension. Always important to have things like the motors, the speed controllers at a race like this. Uh, if, if someone does damage a motor or, or wants to even put a faster or slower motor in, they can do. Lots of good Viper electronics there, as used by Lee Martin. We looked inside his buggy earlier on this week. Lots of useful little things like some wheel nuts, some, some shims and spacers. And here's a really useful thing for helping you build the tyres, tyre bands. So you mount the, mount the tyre onto the wheel, and then you can put the tyre band over the top. It's like a big elastic band, really, to hold it all in place while you glue it up so the glue holds the tyre nice and tight on the wheel. Also, things like tools. It's very easy to break tools out of a race meeting, as, uh, as I only found out a few, a few meetings ago when I broke one of my wrenches at a race meeting, but got that replaced, but had to borrow someone else's while I was here. And the good old classic brake cleaner. There's no brakes in the cars, but brake cleaning is it's just a, it's a desolvent, so um, it just breaks down the grease. So if people are rebuilding any part of the car where there's grease, so shock, shock absorbers, differentials, you want to clean everything out, get all of the oil out, something like the brake cleaner would, would really, really help. Thanks. Okay. Um, also useful things, I guess, like wires. Always handy to have wires. Lipo bags. Very, very important. Everyone's got a lipo bag. Lithium batteries, what we've moved to this, uh, the last few years. A lot more power than the NICAD battery we had before, but also they can be quite dangerous when charging them. So to make sure everyone's safe, you have to charge it in a LiPo bag like this one here, which keeps the whole thing sealed up so if there's a fire and thing does, does burn, the fire is contained within the bag and no one else is hurt or injured. And uh, I'm sure all of you have seen pictures on the internet of uh, LiPo fires or pit tables that have been ruined by a fire. So not only, is it, not only is it a rule, but it's also a really good idea just to make sure all your batteries are stored in a nice, safe pouch like that. Uh, what else we got here? I guess more, more tyres, tyre accessories, uh, some tyre inserts as well. So the inserts are not controlled for the tyres. You can run whichever inserts you like. So you've got different hardnesses, different sizes of inserts, closed cell foam inserts to tune the way the tyre's working. And then right, finally right at the back there, you've got a whole range of uh, shock oil. So you can tune the thickness of the oil inside the shock absorbers, again, to change the way the car handles the bumps and the jumps. So that's kind of a, an indication of all the stuff we've got here at uh, the shop track side. So that's the kind of things you have here. As I say, often for European Championships, most of the drivers will be supported and there's a lot of team support here. So in terms of the actual spares that the shop carries, it tends to be a lot lower, but it's the other products like tyres, tyre glue, accessories. That's the sort of stuff that is often needed instead. So that's where we are here at the European Championships. Um, I guess that can wrap up. Is there anywhere else you want to go, James? Is there anything else you want us to cover? I think we've done... I think we've covered everything over the week. Everything. So, uh, should we go back up to the commentary box then? Yeah. I, c I really can't think of anything else to cover. You can't think of anything else. So, let's head back up to the commentary box. And maybe Stu, if he's listening, can flick us over. If not, we'll have to walk up there and do it ourselves. Oh, he's giving us a thumbs up.
Okay, sorry for the, not much going on for the last few minutes. We're just uh, resorting everything out after uh, doing that pit walk. We have to get a few other things plugged into different places now. Uh, we do want to try and use the best camera, so we take the camera off the main camera stand to do the pit walk. So um, we'll be back with you in a few minutes' time, ready to go with uh, group okay, number 10. Okay, so uh, group number 10 off and running here for their first qualifying attempt. We'll give them a few laps just to get up to speed before we figure out who is fastest. Okay, one minute down, four minutes to go. It's the one of Luca out in front, followed by Oliver in the four and Marcus in the five. So the race leader, car number one. We have got, hang on, I'm just going to move the microphone around, sorry. There we go, that's better. Uh, we have got uh, two, three minutes left, two minutes down, three to go. Luca, Oliver, Marcus, one, four, and five. So the number one car, the white, pink, pink, pink and blue over the triple now. Then the TV jumps and the concept jumps. Down the back straight he goes. Over the Durango double. So 17 lap runs on here for Luca and Oliver. Also Marcus, Simon and Young on for... No, Yanni's just dropped off a 17 lap pace on for a fast 16. So, Luca, Oliver, Marcus, and Simon are on pace for 17 laps. Let's pick up our new leader, Oliver Space, in the four. Move to the lead. And 
Where is Oliver? That's him now. No, it's not. It's him coming round in front of our camera now. The green, red and white buggy. Over the triple he goes. TV double now. And the Joe Concept jump. Through the flat bit, onto the tabletop. VRC roller kicking out the rear end as he goes across that. Then down the main straight oh, one more time. As we have got one and a half minutes left. Oliver, Luca and Marcus racing for the lead. Simon Moss in fourth. Simon just got to the 17 lap pace. It's Luca, Marcus and Oliver on for 17 lap So our race leader is Oliver at the moment, Luca in second. Marcus is now down to fourth as Simon Moss moves into the three spot. So let's pick up our new third place car, Simon Moss. He is going to be turning right over the triple jumps now. Right, red and yellow tumbling off the edge of the triple jumps there. That will have cost him some time. And more importantly, he's trying to find another car, so he's going to have to work for back past that other car again. So we are coming to the end of this five minute run. Everyone is on their final lap. Let's let them finish their last lap and then we'll get the finishing order. And uh, that time is now done. All of the space taking the win. 17 lap run. 17 lap run. So, Oliver Space taking the win there in group number 10. Group 11 is out next. 11 is up next as we move up through the, uh, the heat order. As we let the drivers get themselves checked in on their warm up lap. So this is group 11, round one of qualifying. We will do our best to keep you up to speed with what is going on. So let's check the time, make sure that Oliver was the fastest. No, we've got Kev Lee is the fastest so far. Yes, Kev Lee from earlier heat has got the best time in the round with a 17.512. Let me make a note of this. If I had a pen that works, it would make it even easier. So here we go. This is going to be Group 11, round number one of qualifying. It's underway here at the 2014 four-wheel drive European Championships. You're watching this thanks to Team Durango and the DEX 410 V4. Thanks to VRC Pro and J Concepts. And of course, thank you to EFRA for uh, putting on European Championships and Trelleborg's Motor, uh, Motor Club 
for hosting us here at this fantastic indoor hockey arena. Specially built dirt track just for this event. It only existed for about two months and it's going to disappear come Sunday morning. You're with us here on Fast Friday, qualifying day of the four-wheel drive event. It is currently quarter past two local time. This is group 11, round number one of qualifying. I'm Ollie Meggett. You're very welcome along here to RC Racing TV. And I can tell you, out on track, it's Nicholas Manson in the three who leads this one, followed by Henry Salmon in the one, and our mate Ben Jemison in the number five. Nicholas, Henry, Ben, that is your first three cars. Those three are on 17 lap pace. Nobody else, no one else is on 17 lap pace at the moment in this heat. As we step it up, as we go through these last few heats here, it's the three of Nicholas leading, followed by the one of Henry and the five of Ben. So the race leader is white, blue and orange, making the off-camber right-hander. Over the triple jump he goes. Over the TV double, then the J Concepts jump now. That is our leader. Car number three, Nicholas Manson, leads this heat. Heat 11, qualifying round number one here on Fast Friday at the 2014 four-wheel drive. You're right. Henry Salmon running second, Ben Jemison is third, then Philip, Wesley, Carlos, Florence, Frederick and Frederick. So about halfway through this one, two and a half down, two and a half to go. It's the one of Henry out in front. Let's now pick up Henry in that number one buggy taking over the lead in this one. That's the red and white car through the flat stuff, up onto the tabletop he goes, off the tabletop, through the VRC roller, down the main straight. Two minutes to go in this one, two minutes left. Henry, Nicholas, then Philip, Ben and Carlos. Those guys are now all on 17 lap pace. So we're into the final two minutes now. It is very, very close on the times. Let's check them this time by. Nicholas leading now again from Henry. The gap is just under half a second as we have got one minute and 30 seconds to go in this. Everybody bar Frederick, Florent and Frederick is on 17 lap pace as Florent moves on 17 lap pace. So everyone apart from two Fredericks are now unlocking on a 17 lap run. Fastest time of the round so far is Kev Lee with a 17.5.12. Only one person going quicker than that, and that is our heat leader, Nicholas Manson. Henry Salmon is on to match the current TQ time, as now is Ben Jemison. Back to the third spot for Ben Jem. Let's find Ben for you, car number five. In front of our campus is now the yellow and blue jersey, turning right over the triples he goes. Then the TV double, then the Jay Concepts jump. Ben Jemison will be associated. Out over the roller, down the main straight he goes through the Durango double. As he moves up to the second spot and just onto TQ pace, as we have got about 25 seconds to go. We are going to have this lap and probably one more, one more time by for everybody. How many guys are, are they going to sneak on that 17th lap? Yes, it looks like a few of them are going to get this lap, this lap and one more now. So Nicholas, Ben, Henry is the first three. Then Florence, Carlos, Philip, Wesley, Frederick and Frederick. Now just the first three drivers on pace for 17 laps. Nicholas, Henry and Ben. As Ben moves back, no, Ben drops the third, moves back to second. He makes it on to the 17th lap now. So we're going to stay with Ben to finish off this run, I think. As he goes over TV double, through the day concept jump, we're just waiting for Ben now to finish the complete fifth run. Off of the tabletop he comes, over the roller, and Ben does take second now. Nicholas Manson takes him with a 17.509. That is the quickest time. Ben just missing TQ with a 5.15. Henry Salmon, 5.16.
and I'm joined up in the country box by Ty, our race director and the team man behind this event. Ty, um, you looking for anything particular that's come up here for this for Nova round? No, just it, checking out for everything works good for you. Yeah, everything here working perfectly. We've uh, we've got good internet signal we look at the moment. We've got everything we need, and uh, we've got some good racing going out on the track at the moment as we move into qualifying now. Yeah, I haven't seen any hits so far yet, so I will try to check at least one of the top hits today. Are you going to start here with us for the next five or ten minutes and watch the, uh, watch the first few hits? Oh, yes. That's what we'll do. Absolutely right. So you're going to nick our time screen off of here. So that's Ty, who is uh, looking after this whole event, the race director for here, but also uh, basically the driving force behind us. So I want to say a big thank you to Kai and all of his team for putting this event on and also making us so welcome. We've had absolutely everything we can need in terms of uh, our support here. And uh, as, the, as the crowd applauds, a massive fire up on the track with half the cars getting involved on their warm-up lap. Okay, so the cars are being lined up now. This is Group 12, the first round of qualifying. Nicholas Manson has the fastest time at 5.09. 17 that run is 5.09. See how many of these guys can go faster than that. Okay, here we go. So, off and running group number 12. We shall let the drivers get a few laps under their belt to figure out the running order. So that's one lap down for everyone. It's Tom from Ellis and Stefan. It's two British drivers followed by an Austrian. Let's let them get two laps under their belt. Okay, here we go. Two down for everyone. It's Monty followed by Sandro. Then Tom. And it's all changing rounds once again. Very, very competitive on lap time. Very, very quick at the moment. Best lap is a 17-6 from Tom Cockerell. Tom moves into a solid second place now. As we pick up Tom riding the uh, tabletop over the VRC roller, down the back straight he goes. One minute left. Oh, sorry, one minute down, four minutes to go. Sandro Bernard in the number four takes over the lead of this heat. And the four of Sandro, I think that is going to be him turning up onto the tabletop. Off the tabletop now. Down the back straight. And in front of our cameras is in the white, yellow, and black coloured buggy with special yellow wheels. Over the triple he goes. Then the TV double. And then the J Concepts jump. One and a half down, three and a half to go. And now Cockle moves back to the lead. Sandro is second, Stefan is third, Ellis is fourth, then Jasper, Otto, Marku, Oscar, and Martin. Tom Cockerell leading the seat on pace for a 17 lap run. The only driver inside our TQ pace at the moment, which is held by Nicholas Manson with a 17 lap run, 5.09. Tom Cockerell on for 17.507. Everybody in the seat, apart from Oscar and Martin, are on 17 lap pace. Halfway through, two and a half down, two and a half to go. And it looks like we've now got Ellis Stafford moving through the two spots. Let's find Ellis on the track for you. With his TLR, we spoke to him during the uh, during our pit walk. Here comes Ellis down the back straight. The car right behind Tom on the track. 
white, orange, and blue. Oh, the big mistake there from one driver just going through the uh, going through the Joe Contest jump. One and a half to go. One and a half minutes left. It's Cockrell, then Stafford, then Rasmussen now to the three spot. Jasper Rasmussen, the favourite driver of the internet. Let's find Jasper on the track for you. He goes round in front of our camera position, making the off camber right over the triple jump. That purple and white colour scheme on his buggy through the TV double. Then the Jay Concepts jump. Over the VRC roller, down the back straight. Jasper running in third. No drops out yet, stays in third at the moment. As we have got about 45 seconds left. So just two or three more laps for everyone. Tom out in front, Ellis in second. Stefan is third. Jasper moves to second now. Jasper to the two spot. Ellis down to third. Stefan to fourth. Otto, Marco, Sandro, Oscar, and Martin with 20 seconds left. It's this lap, and they might squeak in one more to get it on to 17 laps for everyone. Cockwood is definitely going to make that 17 lap run. He is just inside TQ pace at the moment. This is group 12 out of 14. 20 more drivers to go basically after this. Let's cut back to our leader, Tom Cockrell. He's going to make the right turn over the off camber corner through the triples now on his final lap in this one. This is going to be his 17th lap. What time are we getting up with for the British Schumacher driver? Few corners left. There's Tom. Let's check his finishing time. Tom going to take the with a 17.508. Just sneaks the TQ time there by less, uh, just about one second for Nicholas Manson. Nobody else has gone quicker than Nicholas's time. Ellis Baffer going to finish second. Jess the third. Stefan, Otto, Marco, Sandro, Oscar, and Martin. So 17.508. So Mr. Cockerell puts him on top with just two heats left. I'm now having bits of camera equipment thrown at me by Stu Noble, who's trying to change something on his camera. If I understood anything of what it was, then I'd let you know, but he's currently put on the table what looks like a large thermos flask. Oh no, look who's back. It's Ben Jennison. Do you want a mic again? Yes, yes, please, look at that. Not even all right, Ben. Yes, please, I'll have a microphone. Hello. It's a good run for you there. Yeah, it was okay. What's it okay? Let's, where are you? A bit rough around the edges. You're ninth overall at the moment. Yeah, the uh, the triple caught me out a few times. So it's definitely going to be a top 30 run for you. Pleased with that? Yeah, yeah, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. Better than a better than two-wheel drive start. <laughs> but uh, another Brit, Tom Cockrell, taking the fastest time in the round so far with that one, which was a 17.508. Uh, oh, yeah, that's good. Uh, Good run. See what these guys can do. Group 13, the B heat. Still a quick heat, definitely. It is indeed. Let's just turn you up a little bit so people at home can properly hear you. No one would miss you, would they? No. No way. Uh, Una, Petri, Reno, Michael, Daniel, Miguel, Christopher, Peter and Joachim. That is the starting order for this one. So here we go. Group 13, off and running. See what Una can do in four-wheel drive. Yeah, it's going to be uh, all eyes, all eyes on the youngsters. Yeah, I think in this one. Very quick in the two-wheel drive. It was indeed. Along with Daniel. So we have only got nine cars in this heat in the top heat. So uh, I don't say one person guaranteed to make the A final extra, but um, it, it, the, top, the guys in the top heat are fast. So uh, 
I suppose everyone wants to make sure they win the B heat at least. Yeah, exactly. And that will, uh, we know that's going to guarantee them into a, a top 10 place if they're going quicker than uh, Tom's time, 17.508. Yeah. If I wrote that down properly, it would be much easier to read, wouldn't it? 508, there we go. Right. Let's give them a couple laps just to see how they get up to speed. And... Uh, well, talking to two youngsters, it is the youngsters on the top at the moment. Daniel Kobovic leading from Una Hattonen. So Daniel going, which one's Daniel? I'll get him and Peter muddled up. They've got very similar paint schemes. So, uh, in fact, Una Hattonen now going to take over the lead. Yes, Una Hattonen now the leader in their black and green colours. Coming round in front of our camera position, make the off-camera right-hander over the triples. Renault Savoy to second. No, Miguel Matias to second. So X-ray two and three. So Yuna is on a TQ time here. Yep, 17, 501. 501. Seven seconds inside TQ. That's quite a lot quicker than you, isn't it, Ben? That's a lot quicker than me, yeah. <laughs> Please don't remind me of that. I won't. I won't, do, I won't do too much. So Una out in front. As we said, car number one, that black and green car. Everyone said uh, might be quick in two or drive, but are they going to make it in four? Well, at the moment, looks like it. It's looking that way, definitely. Second spot is... Oh, who's it going to be? Who is it? It's Miguel Matias, car number two. With the X-ray. I Where think he's been saving himself a four-wheel drive, Miguel. He has, hasn't he? We can't even find him on the track. That will be in there, coming over, uh, getting to turn, turn right on the off-camera corner, over the triples now. So Miguel in second, Christopher Svensson in third, Renault Savoy in fourth, then Orlowski. Renault's made a mistake, dropping, yeah, so dropping could drop him, him down. down. It does indeed. Michael Olovsky is up to fourth. So uh, let's let's uh, let's find Christopher Svensson. Uh, the bright orange buggy over the J Concept jump through the flat bit onto the tabletop now. Super fast privateer driver. Yeah, I, I guess so. I, I think he's still officially running car show, but he's running the the hot bodies car. Yep. One of the one of the few drivers running the HB D413. But yeah, it's a it's a good car for sure. Absolutely, he's a third in this one now as Miguel retakes second. Two minutes left in this. This is group 13, round number one. 14 heats, don't forget. So this one and one more to go to find out who takes our first TQ points. Sadly, it's not me, Ben Jemison, sitting with me, but uh, looking for a top 30, maybe even higher than that finish for you, Ben, um, as it's your teammate, Una Hattonen, leading this one for Team Associated and Finland at the moment. Car number one, the black and green buggy. Again, in front of our camera position, going to make the right hand off camber turn over the triple jump he goes. He's got all the jumps, absolutely perfect. He has, hasn't he? This is perfectly sorted out. Can you learn that from two wheel drive and apply it to four wheel drive, or have you got to learn it all over again in four wheel? No, he's, he's obviously naturally talented. He's, uh, <laughs> natural he's talent. Natural talent for sure. He's He's, uh, he's sort of scrubbing the, the doubles. Like yep. he, you can see that he accelerates up the, uh, up the takeoff right. and sort of turns into them to sort of uh, turn the car on the upslope. So line you up for the best landing possible. Yeah. You got see about that it, it, it kind of turns in the air. Yep, as well, we've got about 30 seconds, 35 seconds left in this one. Yuna out in front, Miguel in second, Christopher third, Renault is fourth, Kobovic is fifth. Olovsky in sixth. Probably two more laps here. Looks like everyone is going to make a 17-lap run. Peter Pinnish going to come up just short, though, on a 16, we think. Don't say that. Not one of your teammates. <laughs> We've got a teammate at the top and a teammate at the bottom. Yeah. Associated sandwich there. So 17.508 is the time Tom Cockerell set in the previous one. We've got... Only three guys going fast than that at the moment, with Hattonen, Svensson and Matthias, as this is the final lap now. Una is done with a 17.503. That's pretty quick. That's a very quick time. So that means maybe... I don't think he made many errors at all then. No. 
Christopher Svensson going to take second, 17.506. Miguel Matias with a 5.07. Tom Cockle going to hold fourth at the moment with his 5.08 from the previous seat. Then behind them, Savoya, Kobovic, Olovsky, Strom, Pinish, and Nikolaisen. But Yuna Hatton taking the win there in the B group, group 13, 17.503. Very good run. Track is open, drivers. So one more heat to go here on round number one of qualifying on Fast Friday at the 2014 four-wheel drive European Championships. We are brought to you thanks to Team Durango and the DEX 410 V4, VRC Pro and J Concepts. And also, of course, thanks to EFRA and the Trailer Borgs Motor Club for having us here. Ben Jemison with me up in the booth here as we get ready for the final heat of qualifying. And this is going to be a straight shootout, surely, isn't it, for the TQ in the round? Yeah, the big boys are up now. Um, had to put money on it. Yeah, go on. Lee, who's Martin, it going to be? Yorn, and David will be there for sure. So you're going to put money on three drivers. Yep. <laughs> Hedge your bets. Exactly. Not Martin Bayer. Uh, yeah, Martin Lee and um, Martin Lee. So you just oh, pick. Hot, you're going to pick. Him, should we put all of the nine in there? That's for gone you? completely wrong because I've just read it as Martin Lee, but it was actually Martin Bayer, Lee Martin, and Yorn Neumann. Right. <laughs> they they would be the three I'd pick. So we've got... Yeah, I think those three are definitely with the shot. David Warner Phil is so fast yeah. though in uh, practice with the fastest lap by over a tenth of a second. I guess it comes down to whether he can hook that up for five minutes. Exactly. Did you not have to put his car down that time? No, I didn't. Oh. No, I, I couldn't do it that here. No. <laughs> so uh, don't forget the heats get shuffled through each round. So after this one, we'll be into heat number four to kick off round two. But this is the big boys, as Ben said. Group 14, qualifying round number one at the four-wheel drive Euros. Drivers are ready. The cars are gridded up. We'll follow the first car off, Lee Martin. Here we go, then. So Lee Martin, the first car off the grid. He goes down the back straight over the Durango double. It'll be a case of making no mistakes on his first lap. That will be really costly, won't it, Ben? As we, be. as we see Simon making a mistake, was that Hoopo making a mistake? Going yeah. through the... Yeah, it was Hoopo on the very going first the corner. Straight. Just caught him out a little bit. And that's now put him down in traffic, so he's going to have to work his way through the traffic to get a good time in there. Yeah, a, a clean opening lap is, is key on this track. Right, let's let them get one lap under their belts and then we will check the running order. Just wait for Neil to come through, and he does. It's going to be Martin Bayer from David Ronnefelt, Neil Craig, and Jorn Neumann. Lee Martin down in fifth spot. So Martin Bayer, the defending champion. Car number six turns right, clips the pipe as he goes over the triple jump in the middle. The orange and blue buggy leading the way as he makes mistake, landing the TV double. And straight away, 18 lappers for a lot of these drivers. Uh, but Yuna's time is 17.503, still looking a really good time at this point. 17.2 from Lee Martin takes him to the top of the timing screens. David Ronnefelt is second. Neil Craig is third. Neil's not had the great time during practice, but he's getting it done now in, the, in this first qualifier by the look of it. Yeah, I think he'll... Uh, he had a, a pretty good car over five minutes, but he, he didn't have the... Sort of the raw pace of the top three or four. So, it's, as you say, it's down to consistency over the five minutes. So, we are watching Lee Martin, car number four, our race leader. His white, blue and orange joke mode. That's the fastest car on the track. No, it's not anymore. As David Ronnefelk moves to the top of the timing screens. The yellow and green co-show. Over the TV jump now. Through the J Concepts jump he goes. On the flat stuff. Up onto the tabletop. As soon as we can pick him up. Over the VRC roller and down the back straight. Ronnefelk versus Martin. They are split by three tenths of a second as Lee Martin goes back to the top with the best with a 17-0 lap. Jorn has a 16-9. Jorn's got there. a 16-9. Jorn moves to third. Neil down to fourth. As Neil Cragg makes a big mistake, gets it stuck on his roof right in front of where we are sitting. Going to drop him down the order. Yeah, that was a costly mistake. That lost him quite a lot of time. It did indeed. As Ronnefelk sticks in a 16-9 to jump back on top above Lee Martin. A mistake from Lee on his last lap with an 18-2. David with a 17-6 puts David 
about one second clear of Lee now. Jorn is third, Robert is fourth, then Hupo, followed by Patrick, Martin, Neil and Carey. Halfway there, two and a half down, two and a half to go. Do the buggies tend to drop off in pace a lot over the five minute run or can you, can you stick the fast laps in still at the end? I would have said it, it doesn't really matter across the five minutes. It's, it's, it's probably more driver than anything you... It's really difficult to sort of keep in a rhythm on this track. You, um, you maybe just get one of the jumps a little bit wrong, and that's it. You just you lose your rhythm. As we see David Ronnefeld doing right in front of where we are sitting, and I think he may have caught that on camera as well, that's going to cost him quite a lot of time. His lead last time by was a few, about just over one second. Let's check the gap this time by. He is now in the second place, and he is two seconds down on Lee. So a loss of two and a half seconds that time for David, helped by Lee with a 17-0. 18-lap run gone on here for Lee Martin. But more importantly, Yuna's time for the last heat, 17.503, will be good enough for about third in the round at the moment. Once again, a good start here from the youngster. Whatever happens now in this remaining one minute or so of racing in group number 14, the first qualifier here on Fast Friday at the 2014 European Championships. It's uh, another mistake from uh, David Ronnefelk. So that's going to put Lee nice and clear in the lead. I think he's going to move Jorn up to second. And Jorn six in a 17 point. No, David six in a 17 one last time by. Jorn with a 17-8. Jorn does move to second by about three quarters of a second. Hupo is there in third, three seconds back. Hoffer is there as well. Patrick Hoffer from nowhere seemingly up to fourth now behind Ronnefelk. Where did he come from? Robert Battier down to sixth. Then Neil, uh, yeah, Neil, who, uh, Martin Bayer. Where's Martin gone? Martin's down to seventh. Yeah, he had an error on the last lap. So a bad mistake there for Martin, drops him down the order. Hoopo's had a slow lap as well. It's a battle between Jorn Ma uh, Norman and Lee Martin once again. We've been doing this all through two-wheel drive. We're going to pick it up again in four-wheel drive. Lee Martin, though, out in front on for, a seven, and for an 18-lap pace. Jorn doesn't make the 18th lap, so Lee Martin's going to take the round. Jorn finishes with a 17-5 flat. Ronnefelk with a 5.03. Who's going to be fourth? It looks like Robert is fourth with a 5.06. Taking the round, though, the only 18-lap run. Lee Martin, 18, 5.16. So Lee Martin wins round one of qualifying here. Your Neumann going to take second. Who's going to be... We have a short break now. Has my screen updated? No, not yet. Come on. Well, you know what I'm considering short. As soon as this screen updates, we'll give you the top ten. Come on. This is painful. We want to know who third and fourth is. You know, it could be Una, third in the round. Computers, eh? Who would have him? I know. I can't even work it out from there. Oh, where's it going to be? Let's see if it's on this this page instead. Una did a 5.03.081. Ronnefeld 5.03.485. Una Hattonen takes third in the first round, we think. Yep, that's a very that's good That's impressive, run. isn't it? That's a very good start. <laughs> wow. Oh, dear. Uh, anyone older than him should give up now, I think. Yeah, so that counts oh, as that. most of the people Most of us here, out, so. yeah. What a first round there. Um, Lee Martin, immense pace from him. Yeah, that, was a, that was a very good run. Very, very good first run. Since we've got about a 10 minute break, Ben, thank you for joining us you're up here in the welcome. Box. I'm sure you're going to be back for later on, aren't you? Yeah, I'll you've, come and do something. You've got, a good, you've got a good seat up here, haven't you? <laughs> right, I'm going to go down and talk to Lee since he was first in the first one. Ben, thanks for joining us. We'll see, see you later. later on and good luck with your qualifying thank as well. You. Bye. But Lee Martin there taking the only 18 lap run in that first round. Let's pop down straight into the pits and grab a word with our round one TQ driver. 
Let's see where he is. In fact, he's, even at, he's not even at his pit bench ready. He's probably uh, still uh, in the tyre compound area. So I'm going to be very rude. I'm just going to stick a microphone straight in his face, wherever he is. Where's Lee? There he is. Uh, him and Shin are working on the car. Lee, TQ in round number one. That's a good start. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. The only 18 lap run. Yeah, yeah good. Uh, how was the car? I guess pretty good. That was pretty good, yeah. I just, I, you know, I set out... I, Set off first, which uh, was a bit of a surprise after practice. I didn't know how good I was running up until that point. We've been there or thereabouts, but not like ultimately fast. So um, yeah, set off and just I just tried to run a race. Really, I was just making sure that hopefully no one would catch me and just put a time in. And yeah, it was good. Just cruise around. We you aware of kind of, of of David and Yawn behind you at all, or did you just focus on your own race? I kind of focused on my own race to be honest. I knew they were both there. Um, I wasn't de I wasn't necessarily going out to try and set TQ in a run. I was just trying to do a run. First run, get top five, you know, make the rest of your day a little easier. So um, running my own race is probably the best thing we could do out there. Well, you've made your day quite a lot easier now with that TQ run. A very useful zero points on the board. Um, more of the same in the next round, or are you going to try anything else now you've got that TQ in the bag? We're still looking to tweak the car a bit to get more out of it. Um, Say so today, basically, is practice with results. It doesn't really mean... <laughs> That's an interesting way of looking at it. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything till tomorrow. I mean, you could not turn up today and still TQ and win tomorrow. So today we're... Well, you could do what you did in two-wheel drive and TQ would not win. Well, you could do that. We won't mention that, will we? <laughs> no, we won't mention that. But, um, yeah, basically I'm just going to try and improve the car as much as I can today and get it as good as I can for tomorrow. But, yeah, you know, I could TQ by a mile. But if I don't win, like, you know, it's kind of irrelevant. So, But the pole position on the grid is going to be handy anyways. We kind of saw in two-wheel drive. It just allows you to get that clean start again. So it's going to be helpful to get a TQ. Well, as long as there's no marshals in the track, it's fine, yeah. It is, isn't it? Okay. Well, well done for round one. We'll see you in uh, round two. All right, cheers. Lee Martin there. TQ's the first round of qualifying. Uh, let's go and see if we can grab a word with somebody else. Sorry. As uh, Let's go and quickly grab a word with who I thought was the fastest person, David Ronnefelt, down the far end of the pits, but straight onto his phone. Probably checking the results, actually, in the lap times. Yes, absolutely right. That is exactly what he's doing. Uh, David, very, very fast in that first round, but a couple of mistakes. Uh, Martin gets the TQ, and it's not you at the top of the timesheets. Yeah, it was. Uh, I was surprised I made uh, two mistakes after the straight and a double after the straight. And uh, yeah, it was the first time this week, but I guess it needs to happen sometime. So it's better now happen early in the qualify. I still got fourth, so... Uh, I was pretty. It was pretty decent run. I mean, the car is is good, and I just made those stupid mistakes. But I hope I can uh, race them for next round, and hope I can be on the top. Yeah, of course, only two rounds count. So good luck in round two. Thank you. There you go, David Ronnefelt. Probably one of the fastest, if not the fastest car, but a couple of mistakes keeping him off of TQ for that first round. So uh, is Yawn in the pits as well? He is indeed. Let's grab a word with Yawn. Rounding out all of our top three drivers. There's a. Uh, let's uh, see if we can quickly nip in here and grab a word with Yawn. Yawn, round one out of the way. Uh, didn't take the TQ in that round like you did in two wheel drive, but uh, how was the car? I think the car is pretty good. I just made a mistake end of the straight. So, uh, what can you do for the next round? Obviously, not make the mistake is the key, but any change or anything to make it easier? I don't think so. Just drive better. I was behind Martin, and he didn't let me go. And so I was, and then I passed him, but came a little bit out of my with with him, and yeah, made a mistake. So then Lee was gone. So uh, that's all it takes, isn't it? Getting caught up with I guess some slower cars, but you're gonna have a better starting place now for round number two. So uh, uh, good luck in round two, I guess. Okay, thank you. There you go. Uh, you're Neumann. Uh, unlucky not to take uh, the TQ in that first round, but again had a very, very quick car indeed with the Durango DEX 410 V4. I'm going to say thank you to Durango and also thank you to J Concepts and to VRC Pro for supporting us this week and making all of this possible. We are here at the 2014 four-wheel drive off-road Euros. Round number one of qualifying goes to Lee Martin. Round number two kicking off in about 10 minutes' time. We'll be back there for more action from Fast Friday. Eight minutes, drivers. Eight minutes to the start of round number two. We start with heat number four. So heat number three, you need to be marshalling, which I have quite a few of you here. It's nice to see. It's like we've got a fan club, isn't it? Cool. So let's talk to Mr. Burr. First one, okay. I got a bad
bad joke for I don't you. Realize you're there. You have a uh, sister, the sister named Ice. Was it the Prince of the Rookie Mouse? No. Called it Ginny. Um, an uncle named Hinden? No. But those are the best ones. It was quite eating seventeen pieces of uh, so What other annoying. jokes have I got? Simple jokes. Right, okay, um what branch of chicken pie is called the top of the chicken pie branch? Chicken pie branch is the chicken pie branch. What branch of chicken pie branch? Chicken pie branch of what?
Okay, we're just running slightly behind time schedule now because uh, the guys just uh, want to put, put a few more procedures in place. So we are waiting for group number four to kick off this round, round number two of qualifying, here on Fast Friday at the 2014 four-wheel drive European Championships. You're with us here on RC Racing TV. Welcome along to all of you, wherever you're watching around the world. And a special big thank you to Team Durango and the DEX 410 V4, to VRC Pro and to J Concepts as well. And also thanks to Efra as well for having us here. So we are now moving into qualifying round two. Helps if I turn my microphone up. Yuna's done well. He has indeed. What is he overall now? Okay. Uh, third, we think. Wow. I was, that was a bit of a hit. We're into qualifying round two, James. That's why you were pointing Mr. Flappy Hands at me. <laughs> I wasn't flapping my hand. I was, just, I was just pointing right, and just... Oh, Stu. <laughs> New technique for... That would, yeah, that's good, Stu. That, that'll that, do. That's good. Yeah. There we go. Stu cool. is just uh, climbing up the side of our camera rigging because Stu is now putting together another wonderful montage of car shots. So we're going to do that for the next, uh, I don't know, a few minutes, a few, yeah, few, few rounds. Yeah. If you, uh, if you haven't already, go and check out our video for the A-finals that we posted yesterday. Yep. Um, it's got some awesome commentary and some awesome montage creativeness from Mr. Stu Noble and has. Mr. Ollie Meggett. Uh, the other way around, though. Ollie didn't do the video, and Stu Shaw didn't do the commentary. <laughs> but if Stu wants to do commentary, it's an open. we'll have an open mic session later today. We could. <laughs> I don't know what he just said, but I'm going to ask him to repeat it. So, OK, let's, let's get social. OK. Okay, check out some social media ring stuff. Uh, let's make our way through the comments. Let's do you, do you, want, do you want to start with Kick that off with YouTube. Ow, I'm sat on my wallet and it hurts because it's full of receipts. So. Oh, not full of money. That was a no. good clever. It's oh, I'm sat on my wallet and it's too big because no. all of the £50 notes make it far too thick. It's full of receipts, Nick Damon. <laughs> <laughs> right. We, where do we get up to? Um, Durango Warrior, hello to you. What kind of motor should I buy if I'm going to drive two wheel drive next year? Uh, it's up to you. If you're going to mm. electric, electric would be a good start. Yeah, brushless one. Um, yeah. The guys here this week are using quite slow motors. They're using eight and a half or nine and a half turns. This is the turns, the coil number of coils of wire. The lower the number of coils, the faster the motor goes. So there are eight eight separate coils of wire going around the motor. That's correct. Yes. Right. Um, so they're using eight and a half, nine and a half turn motors, even ten and a half sometimes. Why does it make it slower? Just because it hasn't got as much oomph because there aren't as many coils. Because the electricity's got to go through more bits of wire each yeah. time. Yeah. If it goes through less bits of wire, then it's a stronger magnetic field around each piece, so it can go faster. 
Oh, very, s- very simple. Not completely. So less physics. coils is faster. Yes. Oh, oh sorry, I didn't realise. Oh, what was I going to ask you earlier? I thought of a, a silly good question when I was up on the tower. Huh. Um, why don't we see cars with chrome paint? That would uh, look pretty cool. It would. Uh, heavy? The easy, the easy answer, yeah, it's, it's heavier. Ah. It generally tends to be heavier. and. But people add weights to the car here, so just add less weights. Ah, yes, but if you're paint- the body shell is the highest part of the car. Would it really make that much difference? I we, suppose, yeah. Certainly we know, I know from a lot of the on-road testing, working with a lot of the factory teams, as I have done in on-road, that we do find a significant difference when running a lightweight body shell and a heavyweight body shell because it's the highest point of the car and that roll can affect it. So you want to keep the weight, if you want to add weight, you want to add it low down on the chassis. So you want to keep the body shells as light as possible, which also means why people sometimes don't run stickers as very hard. Ah, well. stickers. Uh, is that why we don't ask any of the drivers to allow us to strap a uh, GoPro or other generic small camera-based high-definition video recorder on top, top of their car? Well, it might throw the balance off a it bit. It will completely throw the balance off. Um, I do remember, and I want to say a massive thank you and shout-out to Victor Wilk from a few years ago when we were in France for this event, uh, back in 2011, I think. He did let us actually strap a camera to the roof of his buggy for one of his practice rounds. Ah. Um, Really, really appreciate that because we've got some absolutely fantastic on-board footage. Um, if you watch any of the TV shows, you'll see in part of the intro, the general intro stuff, there is a shot of a buggy driving around the track. That's what we filmed, thanks to Victor Wilk for letting us strap a camera on top of his car. Uh, why haven't we done that now? Because we're now into actual qualifying and no one's going to give up a qualifying run to do it. No. no. We could have done it during practice if we'd have thought about it then. And it, it's difficult. Out. The drivers want, quite yeah, rightly, as much the time as possible. They do, yeah. There's not many of them who will be able yeah, to give up a round of practice. No, yeah, even a practice. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure that the Durango actually started as a converted TC3. It did, many, many years ago. The first oh. Durango off-road buggy was an a- designed by Gerd, an aluminium chassis on the TC3 touring car making oh. the chassis longer and the new suspension on there. That was many years ago, and they are now purpose-designed four-wheel drive off-road racing machines, completely different to any touring cars. Cool. Uh, Mikios, this is the best coverage I've ever seen in RC Media, by the way. Thank you so much. Thank Seriously. you very much. If you can tell that to important people like IFMAR, that would really help us. And not naming any names, <coughs> Tonic Damon. Uh, then, uh, yeah. yeah. No, but seriously, we, d- we do appreciate the feedback because... Uh, we um, we are trying to, without overdoing things, we are trying to use different uh, methods and tools at our disposal. We are indeed to um, uh, to make your viewing experience more pleasurable, as yeah. corporate as that sounds. Yeah. Um, yeah. But to be honest, we do it this way because this is the way we have fun doing it as well. So yes. uh, it's glad that you're enjoying it. And if you think, if you think this is generally the best coverage that you've seen, then uh, we really appreciate that. So uh, we'll keep having fun because if yes. we're having fun, no doubt you are as well. Hope you're enjoying all the different things we are doing this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, indeed, amazingly free too, so it's even better. Yep. Or we'll f- th- there are no plans to not have it free. No, and we, we can make it free thanks to fantastic people like Team Durango and the Seamless DS Link. 410 V4 VRC Pro and J Concepts. So please do go and check out their websites and support those brands mm. because they support us and allow us to bring this to you. Mm. So just go and check out the website. Maybe even just send them an email and say thank you for supporting the coverage. Yeah, it doesn't uh, take long, and then they will go, oh, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Let me just. Uh, Hello to Jason Rona from J Concepts if you're watching at the moment. I think he might be in the States. I'm just going to say, because I just crashed over you announced them, which was a bit unfair. Uh, our, one of our main sponsors, Team Durango, the DEX 410 V4. Thank you. Sorry, I crashed over Ollie's commentary when uh, he said that. It's all right. Um, nice to hear from the drive. Great. Nice to hear from the drivers about these things. We think so. Yep. And thank you also to all the drivers for being really accommodating and chatting to us so freely actually this week it's been really, been really nice and made our jobs really easy it's so thank easier you when we can go to them yes which we can with our new equipment um, interesting statement from Hoopo what was that statement uh, possibly when we were talking about the gear diffs uh, differentials and things when we looked inside his car when he did our pit walk I'm guessing did he say um, something about a previous a pre- on a previous car uh, yes because Hoopo used to drive for Team Durango yeah. uh, which has gear diffs uh, in the car, um, so he was saying he's used to them, but he thought mm. that, yeah, I think he was basically saying there that for, for non pro drivers, a gear diff in the centre may well be the way to go. Ah, uh, but yes, I bet it was that statement, yep. Um, because it makes the car easier to drive, but it's not quick enough for him here. 
biggest thing having a third diff is allowing the car to drop back down to the surface as the wheel off the ground gets all the power. Is that why I keep seeing the odd car do a crazy flick off the roller? Uh, it could be. It flips uh, the front up. Interesting, interesting point of view there. Because if you've got the third diff not set right, all the power will go to the front wheel diff off the ground, which is not what you really want. You want more drive forward anyway. So uh, hmm. uh, possibly a bit of that. But no, from certainly what the drivers have told us, uh, that's not really the main reason why you'd use it. Yep, best coverage I've seen. Loads of technical details. Thank you, McLogo. Thank you very much. We've already covered previously that we appreciate those comments and why we yes. do it. Um, and they talk about other stuff too to change it up. We do. The thing is, let's be honest, we're here for eight, nine hours a day. I think yeah. I've done ten hour streams before. Um Yes, we are here for a primary purpose, but sometimes you need to mix mix things up. Otherwise, it would get pretty boring for you guys at home. And to be honest, it would get a bit boring for us. Yeah, if I'm sitting here the time, whole time going, it's number right, three car, the followed by the four, over the triple, through the double, through the other double. I'm already bored. Right, see? Point proven. Um... What's next? Are the tyres actually sold by the shops there, or do the drivers have to buy them from race organisers like at EOS? Uh, do they have to buy them from here? No, I don't suppose that... Uh, hang on, no. I'm, mm. they don't, right. Uh, oh, no, like my understanding, my belief, is the drivers could either have pre-ordered them uh. from the organisers, so each driver would then be able to say, I want X sets of tyres, they will turn up here, there'll be a bag with their name on it and their tyres in it. Um, or if they haven't done that, they'll need to make their own arrangements to get the tyres either from the shop on site or maybe from another supplier uh, on the way. I have interestingly seen over in the pitting area there was a big box which said uh, Yokomo on it and that was a box full of tyres. So Yokomo ordered their own tyres and had them shipped direct to the track. So they have to then give them to the organisers? Nope, so Yokomo have paid for them for Yokomo. Again, this is one of the perks of being that some of those top drivers. Yokomo will have paid for the tyres for uh, Lee Martin and um, Robert Battier. And then if it's controlled tyres, they must have to give them in to the organisers. Yep, so then. they'll walk, walk through the gate into the area. They will check they're the right tyres that they're allowed to use. And that's what they're allowed in. No other tyres of any sort are allowed inside the area. So they're the same uh, type of tyres, same make of tyres, same tread, same compounds. Probably just buy them in bulk and get them a bit cheaper. Yeah one would guess. Um, ah, yes, maybe I did turn the sound down a little bit too much when we went into our break. My apologies. I did try and leave a little bit of background noise, but we uh, don't necessarily want to be broadcasting boring chit-chat, so my apologies. I did turn that down too much. Yep. Oh, well, I guess it's a well-deserved chocolate bar. I can confirm that the bar of Plop has not been opened. No. More on, um, more on Plop Watch later. Indeed. Yay, Ben, good. Juno. Please ask Ben if he likes British or Dan British beer or Danish cider. I don't know if you saw that. I think no, we didn't when see ben, that. ben came and sat here, it was around 13, 14, so we wouldn't have been speaking about things like that anyway. Yep. Funny thing is that Una's first season in four-wheel drive. Oh, Una's first season in four-wheel drive. Oh, oh. that's, that, that's going to be positive for everybody else he's racing against. First <laughs> season in four-wheel drive, first round of qualifying at the European Championships, and I'm hoping that we can now officially read out the ranking list. Because that's just reminded me, we never actually got to do that. So thanks to my RCM, we should be able to do that. As I try and open far too many windows at the same time. I did get bitten last night. You got bitten? Who by, I Stu? I don't know, I stood on the grass. Oh, oh yes. You went for a wander around the grass. So, uh, for those of you interested, if you're interested in the racing results, and if you are, why are you here? Uh, no. 
Uh, we have got the racing results here as well. So after round one of qualifying for the four-wheel drive Euros, it is fast Friday here, so the times are fast. Lee Martin tops the board, followed by Jorn Three, Neumann. Una Hatton now. is third. Ronnefelt fourth. Robert Battier fifth. Hupo Honigal sixth. Christopher Svensson in seventh. Miguel Matthias is eighth. Tom Cockerell ninth. And Patrick Hoffer rounds out the top ten. Martin Bayer, defending champion, is twelfth. Neil Crank is thirteenth. And the internet's favourite driver, Jesper Rasmussen, 15th. Jesper Rasmussen. Ras yes. Rasmussen. Rasmussen. Jesper Rasmussen, driver mm -hmm. of a nasty car. These lyrics are coming together. Are they? Yeah. Good. You're not, you're not down with this Boney M track remix, are you? No, because I don't know what it is. You must know what the Ra Ra Raspi 2 song is. Nope. Make me feel old. Everyone knows all of Boney M's songs. Right, we have some people. Oh, to welcome to the Facebook group. We do. And why would oh, we want oh, to before welcome we do that, them? J Concepts is watching from the factory. Hello to everyone at J Concepts, all the way over in, I guess you're in Florida. What? So that's where J Concepts is based, watching this racing here in Sweden. Hello to you. I hope you are enjoying this. And thank you again to J Concepts for supporting us and allowing us to be here. Your uh, banners on the track were washed last night and I realigned a couple of them up this morning. Being our sponsor, that's one of the uh, value-added uh, features that you get as a sponsor of RC Racing. We, uh, we, we, we tweak banners for you yes. uh, here at the track. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the cars have thrown dirt on them and they've, they've gone skewed again. In some again. cases, driven over them. Yes. Right. Why would you want to be a friend, not a friend, a member of the Facebook group uh, the RC Racing Facebook group. That's a very interesting question. Why would I'm you want glad to do you've that? asked me. Hmm. Are you Tell attacking me. your eye with a knife there? I'm scratching the inside of my <laughs> eyebrow with a knife, which sounds really dangerous, but it is only a plastic knife from the canteen. If you're listening at home, don't do that. One in 25 left. So why would you want to be a member? Right, you would want to be a member of our RC Racing TV Facebook group because that will allow you to enter our fantastic competition. Amongst, that's the first reason. What competition is this? Can I finish all the reasons first? Yes. <laughs> Why am I speaking so high? I don't know. Um, Continue. What, what else might you want to remember? Well, you can interact with us. You can chat with us. You can, you can find all the latest videos. You can, you can help us out when Sue Noble sits there with his head in his hands. His hat is off his head. We'll leave him. Um, you can just interact with loads of RC fans around the world and stay up to date with all of the latest news from RC Racing TV. All of our, our Facebook group. So, if you would like to enter our competition, well, what's the competition for is a very good question. If you would like to win a Schumacher Cat K1 Aero, the latest Schumacher competition four-wheel drive buggy, as being used by the Schumacher team here, which includes Tom Cockrell sitting ninth overall after round one at qualifying. Well done to Tom, and a big thank you to Schumacher for supporting us and uh, giving us that fantastic prize to give away. All you have to do is go to Facebook, search for RC Racing TV, become a member if you're not already a member, and if you're not already a ready member, why not? It's very easy. You just click on join, and then we will induct you into the group. We will. And then find the post, which I believe is pinned to the top of the group. To the top. Which says for me, time for another competition. And that will give you our two competition questions. You need to answer both these questions in a single post in the comments section below. And uh, we'll close the competition just before A final number two tomorrow. And we'll announce the winners between A final two and three tomorrow. And the winner is, all you've got to do, put the post in there. And you could win a Schumacher Cat K1 Aero competition for a drive buggy. Okay. It's a pretty good prize, isn't it? It's a very good prize. It sounds very easy to enter the competition, but you need to be a member of the group. It is easy. So without any further ado, I have, have, I have four people waiting okay. to join. Leon Roll, member of five groups. Um, welcome. Welcome along. Hello. Oh, one's Hello just dropped in. Uh, Toby Vollerham Toby Vollerhampson. Track is open, driver. <clears throat> Let's have a look. You're a truggy racer. Ooh. I think. Is that a truggy? 
It's a short course truck. Welcome to the group. Hello to you. Clark Walhurt. Walhurt. 120 friends in the group. Two mutual friends, Nick and Dallas. That's like double points. Hello, double Clark. Double points. Welcome to the group. Chris Sharp Simkis. Double barreled. Hello. Welcome to the group. You can now enter the competition. And last but no means least, Anne Lundscog. Uh, welcome to the group. Someone else has. Some, that just proves the power of social media. Someone has uh, done what you have just requested. And here they are in front of me. Stepan Silhavj. Silhavj. I'm really sorry about the pronunciations. I've never seen someone with so many accents and symbols in their name. Um, right. No more that, please. No more I'll just say Stefan. Hello. Welcome to the group. Welcome uh, along. Let's have a look. Anyone else waiting? No. Done. Done. Uh, Paul Wynn. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Great job. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Paul. G'day from the Gold Coast, Australia. Crikey, I can't believe people watch from so far away. That's really cool. Yeah. I'm really glad you've taken the time to... What time would it be over there? Kind of... What time? Early in the morning? Like No, really late at night. Very late at night. Have a beer. Kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. Okay, I will. Oh, it's not for me, is it? No. No, that was for Will Anderson. Hello, Will. Alex Hoffender. Four-wheel drive is way more fun to watch compared to two-wheel drive. Oh. There's not a lot in it, but I do know what you mean. Four-wheel drive is faster, the cars look more stable, but I think a lot of drivers prefer two-wheel drive because it's a bit more challenging and they like a challenge. It's a bit more way, it's a bit more woo. Yes. It's a bit more whoop, duck and dive. Yep. What are you working on, Ollie? I'm just working on something on my laptop at the moment. Oh, okay. It's nothing important. Okay. Yeah. Uh, basically, just replying to a few emails and stuff like that. Oh, right, okay. What's that? It's other stuff. Looks very technical. It is. It is. This is a, Unfortunately, this is some secret stuff, so... Uh, I don't think Stu's very well. No, he's disappeared, hasn't he? Mm. It's quite warm up here at the moment. It is. Do we have a graphic for cameraman not feeling very well? Uh, no. Three and a half minutes to go, driver. What can we see? Who have we got on at the moment? Group six, because we started from group four because things have been rejigged. Why? So do they go six through to 14 and, one, and then one through to five? They go from four Sorry, through to 14. Through. Three minutes and and then four one, to 14. Four to 14, then one, two, three. Four to 14 and then one to three, all today? Yes, four, four to 14, one to three. Then the next round starts with about group seven-ish. The next... Uh, is that today as well? Can't be. Three o'clock now. We've got That's my morning. Th no, we've got three rounds of qualifying today. Really? Yeah. Crikey blimey, Charlie. So we are here till about half past six Swedish time, half past five UK time. <laughs> What's this? Great coverage, guys. Watching in New Jersey. Need some World of Warcraft commercials. World of Warcraft commercials. I know, I know exactly what he means, and no, we don't. What does he mean? There may be another company which does similar things to this in terms of streaming races online, ah. and uh, and that that consists of a number of commercial interruptions unless you wish to pay them money. I've got a commercial to put in. Have you? Yeah. Go on. Thank you to Ephra.ws, the organising body behind the event that we are all watching, and some of us are here parti participating in. Uh, Ephra.ws, thank you to Team Durango with the DEX 410 V4. 
Thank you to VRC Pro. And thank you to jconcepts.net. There you go. That is as commercially advertising as we get. Hang on. So we had some commercials and you still got to watch all the racing at the same time? No, not Whoa. possible. This is crazy. Wow. B b venturing into the unknown. Yeah. Groundbreaking. Groundbreaking stuff indeed. Talking of groundbreaking, how's the... Oh, the crater's still there. The crater is still there. On the right-hand side oh. of the first double the in TV the TV jump, of the screen. second part of it. Basically, where you can see the RC Racing TV logo on the track, just above that you can see on the uh, top of that jump, on the far side, away from the banner... A dark patch. It's a dark patch where there's a big hole in the ground. Yes. Phil's been to the shop. He has he got? Haribo and some kind of pastry-based snack. I guess it's a cinnamon swirl. A oh, cinnamon swirl. Is it? It is. That's. The, I like that one. It's got to be done. A cinnamon swirl, or as as it's known in Sweden, a cinnamon swirl. Is there a, an official? Is it? A, is it a, a Swedish dish, or is it just well known? What's its Swedish name? It trans translates to cinnamon bun, and in Swedish it's... It is a canel bulle. Canel bulle. Canel bulle. Phil could have said something really rude in Swedish, and we wouldn't have had any idea about that. So if we have just offended lots of Swedish people, my apologies. All complaints directed uh, to um, sales at neoboogie.net. To the complaints department, building 45, uh, Central London, neobuggy.net. <laughs> Has Neobuggy got more buildings than us? Yeah, of course they have. Of They're they in had. Central London. Yeah. <laughs> buildings are expensive around there. Ours are in the countryside, but yeah. we have got 17 of them. Yep. I think our complaints department's in number four. Is it? Yeah. Is that Nick? <laughs> Nick gets his or own Nick building <laughs> by himself. Nick gets his own building for his complaints. <laughs> <laughs> Hello to Nick if you are watching. Thank you for sending me all the way to Sweden. Appreciate it lots. And the beer. Thank you. Another blog. Do check out neoboogie.net. Some ace photos from the event. Guess what? I've just, I've just been doing a little bit of research. And not just photos. Articles as well. Yes. I feel like if I'm going to plug him, I should at least <laughs> plug him properly. <laughs> plug him properly. And not videos. Neoboogie yeah, got some photos. Let's move on. No, they've got <laughs> articles as well. And videos. And videos. Shouldn't mention that bit. And there's a link to our streaming as well. So thank you to Phil yes. for putting that on there. So uh, if you but found us through Neoboogie, a massive thank you to One them. big happy media family. Yes. We and share everything. Internet, photos, videos. Yep. Girlfriends. No, we don't share those. Nope. What have you just found on Tinder? Well, I've just been doing a little bit of searching around the internet, and uh, I have found something on Facebook quite interesting. Have you? You know, we've been talking about, um, well, about our favourite, the internet's favourite driver, Jesper Rasmussen. Yeah. Did you know he's, he's actually got a fan page on Facebook? What? I he didn't has. know this. He has. If you go to facebook.com forward slash Jesper Rasmussen RC, all one word, you can find... Jesper's fan page. I'm going to like that. If you go to Facebook in the top left and go to J E S P E R P E R. Oh, it's there already. Is that the one? No, that's that's his oh, actual Facebook. That's page. his actual Facebook page. Russ M U S S E N. Yeah. Oh, hang on. It's if just taking. Then out. you see more results at the bottom. It's taking that one. Perhaps if I spell it correctly. Hang on. There, there it is. There it is. I'm the first person to like it. Oh, I'm sure plenty of you will be now going out to find him. He's got an official fan page, apparently, on Facebook. Described as the official fan page of the internet, internet's favourite... God, the, it, <laughs> the completely official... Uh, 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 uh. Fan page of the internet's favourite Danish off-road RC. That's very specific. <laughs> the internet's favourite Danish off-road RC racer, Jesper Rasmussen. Now, I've put a link on our um, on our Facebook page. Right. So if you head over to RC Racing TV Facebook page, there's now a link to uh, Jesper Rasmussen wow. Facebook page. So, uh, yeah. Has that, so, been, has that been updated pretty recently? Because those looks photos like it, look like they've been done here. They do, don't they? 
I'm sure he was number eight earlier, wasn't he? In fact, he's number eight today. Is there? And there's just been a post on there about put, pointing out that he is 15th overall after Q1 of four-wheel drive. 15th overall after Q1. That's pretty good. That he said, we spoke to him in the pits. He said his aim was to try and make the B man. He's well inside the B with that 15th. He'll need a couple more runs like that, though, to secure him a B final place. Oh, and James Parry also likes likes this. Should we invite lots of... No, we won't yes. invite our RC friends. They can find it themselves. Yeah. yeah we're not so gonna... if you are a fan of Jesper, and why wouldn't you be? He's a great person. <laughs> it would be ironic to go through such spam prevention me- measures to then spam the people who are past <laughs> <Yes>. our spam. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want you if you're spam, but we, but we reserve the right to spam you. No, we don't yeah. spam you. So someone there has created a fan... A fan? A fan page. <laughs> Mickey Oss, athlete, lol. <laughs> <laughs> but there wasn't an option for RC driver Shh. that the person must have found when they created the page. <laughs> what else is going on in the world of the internet? And by that, I specifically do mean the RC internet. Should we check out? I know what I'm going to do. No, oh. I'll check out my emails first. There's no a few, one's emailed me. A few comments have been withheld. Oh. In the um, in the large scale feed. Oh. Are people being rude? Three minutes left on earth. Wooter wide and out in front. Because Wooter. Ha- Christopher. Well, I've got to let him come through. Hang on. Hang how, on. S- see how Stu's feeling. Stu just come back. Can we, uh, can we ask Stu how he's feeling? Stuart Noble, how are you feeling? Yeah, not bad. A bit close, we didn't have that. How are you feeling, Stu? About a you know, six, seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. That's, that's quite a lot of words. That's not too bad. Stu, did you know, since you weren't here, you may not have just heard, we've just discovered on Facebook that there is actually a Jesper Rasmussen official fan page. Oh, I have no idea where that could have come from no no idea at all it sounds thrilling it, it looks I thrilling will, join. will you go and join yeah. now excellent and uh, we'll try and get we'll try and get Phil from Neobugger to join as well Good afternoon, Ollie. I am back from David Fraser. Mikios. Public figure, he's not maybe. Sent he's not sent after you, just to me. You know, no, I'm no. Gonna, I'm gonna Politician. Or should run for Swedish presidency with so much following. I think his current following is three. You could change that. <laughs> three. Most popular person here. This Four man's liked by three people. By Joe, let's make him president. Uh, go, and, go and like him. More people than like the, pre- the Prime Minister in the UK, isn't it? So, eh, on to a winner there. Let alone like, that's more friends than I've got. <sighs> we have plop. I can confirm Ali plop into his mouth. Is that good plop? Not bad. Can I try one cube of today's plop? So, I think it's nicer than the green cactus pear one. That was a strange flavour, though. I don't want to feel left out of plop club. First rule of Plop Club. Never talk about Plop Club. Wonder if Stu Noble wants some Plop. Well, Mickey Mike, best road RC racer in the world overall. Oh, good question. Let's find out by asking the one person who Pardon. will know. Don't talk with chocolate in your mouth. <laughs> Phil from Neo Buggy. We've just been asked a question, and you're the person to answer this. Let him finish who his overall Danish. is the best RC off road racer in the world? Um, Great, fantastic, thank you. <laughs> no, if you're going to do it, do it properly. <laughs> um, probably Atsushi Hara. Atsushi Hara. Really? Japanese legend. I, I think that's a good answer, yeah. Better than Tebow? Yeah, definitely, I think so, yeah. Better than Cavallari? Uh, I, th- I think Cavallari's gone off the boil slightly in 1-8 buggy, I'd say. So, uh, going to be an interesting year with uh, Buggy Wells, isn't it, in, uh, in Italy later in the year? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's also a case, having said that, for Robert Basso. Obviously, he's one-eight scale world champion. He's doing quite well here. Maybe not quite at the sharp end, but, you know, Lee Martin's also in for a shout if you're just looking at two classes for off-road. But I think Hara, you know, if you're looking multi-class, he's just the man. Yes, man. There you go. Phil from New Berkeley. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Jesper's got eight likes on his page. We're up to eight. <laughs> it's not we. It's not we. 
Hey? It is up to eight. Not we are up to eight. I never said we're up to eight. You did say we're up to it's eight. It's not our page. It's not our page, no. Jesper's page. I said he's up to eight. He is. He's not eight. He's a bit older than eight. No, he's, old, he's nine. Nine. No, he's not nine. Yes, that's that's Jesper's um Jesper's fan, we, fan we page. just found it. We just found he has an official fan page. Mm -hmm. These look like some, some fairly recent photos as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can tell that does look like Jesper. It does. He's very Swedish. Yes. <laughs> he, apart from he's Danish. There's probably a bit of Swedish in him somewhere. <laughs> I mean, we all know which country's better. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Those are the views of uh, Phil there from... <laughs> Neoboogie.net and not the views of RC not Racing TV. Not necessarily the views of RC Racing TV. Hey, well, not associated. We don't, we don't do countryism. Countryism. <laughs> countryism. 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 Careful. Don't like country music here. <laughs> it's all drum and bass over this end. If I do that, we'll get banned. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Talking of which, uh, Tim Westwood references earlier in the week. They, er, they've er, dropped er. off. Anything else from the 90s you'd like us to reference? Playing with the big dog. That's all I could think of. She's probably cringing. I don't know exactly what he says. Things about big dogs, air horns, and he likes to uh, introduce uh, rappers that wear balaclavas, I found out last night. Pardon? <laughs> Pardon? Because they don't fly commercial, they only fly private. Yes. A stance similar to what we have adopted, but not been able to follow through. <laughs> Hello, Ryanair. We don't do hire car, only limousine. I don't like leaflets. I only like magazines. Right. I'm just laying these tracks down like a demon today. I would like to say... Yes. To Phil from Neo Buggy. Yes. Well done for the best RC headline I have ever read. Mar Lee Martin shins. Shines. I can see it now. Shines. I was like, shins. <laughs> Play on words with shin is his mechanic there. He, Phil, he's not here to be here. congratulated. Shouldn't have read that out. We should have said go to neobuggy.net. Yep. Oh, blimey, Phil so quick with this info. He's almost quicker than us, and we're live. Yeah. Yeah. Our leader's going to be in traffic, clearing two guys that crash. Second place, and the rest of the fast guys will be down along, you guys. Very clever headline, Phil. Let's all work together, please. Laddie, out front from yes. Kevin. Separate we like, we liked that a lot. Well done. Thank you very much. Uh, you know... Sometimes my education actually is put to good use. Right. H have you been like trying to use that one all week and just suddenly found a place to use it? No, actually, I was out the other night with Lee Martin and the boys, and they were saying that they've replaced most of their verbs, I guess it is, with the word shin. So in Japan, instead of using Google, they use shingle. Ah, interesting, interesting. It's working for him so far. Sorry? It's working for Lee so far, then. Definitely so, definitely so. He had a pretty full free run. I think, you know, the guys behind him were making mistakes like buy a run of up, but it seems to be working. He's uh, almost uh, shinning. That, brilliant. Yes. I'm, I'll leave that one with Neo Buggy. We'll use different phrases. Okay, you use most like seed and grass based uh, humour. <laughs> yes, we'll keep doing that. But no, that is, that's, that's genuinely the best RC headline I've ever read. <laughs> Uh, I'm not so sure, to be honest. Thank you, though. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> from Neobuggy. Check out neobuggy.net for the full race report from round one, which includes all the times. And, of course, all the times from everybody is available at my RCM. Fanta's here. Oh, right. Hello, Fanta. Dun, 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 dun. It's Fanta. Is it? Where have you been, Fanta? What country are you in? Why have you... It's Paul based in the States, too. Paul works for J Concepts in Florida. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know if J Concepts were multi-country. They are. They're primarily based in uh, in the US, but obviously they're being used here at this European Championships, which is great to see. Being used both sides of the pond. Two more people to add. Hello, who is it? Magnus Johansson. Hello, Magnus. Welcome to the group. 
Welcome along. Oh, no, it's one of those names. Dirk Zanuski. Hello, Dirk. Member of 17 groups. And now 18. The now most important groups. one being that 18th group. RC Racing TV on Facebook. Click join to be part of us. I'm guessing that you already know about this, but don't forget about our Schumacher competition details on our Facebook page. Do enter. You may win something. It's not just something. It is a Schumacher Cat K1 Aero. Yes. Not like, it's not like a piece of chocolate. Who won the Cougar? Neil Lewis. Has Neil been in contact to claim his prize? He has indeed been in contact. He sent me a Facebook message. I have replied saying thank you for your message, but we're all out the country at the moment and we'll get back to you next week when we're back home. Did he get voicemail? <laughs> he got voicemail, Thank yes. you for contacting, contacting RC Racing TV. Unfortunately, all of our team are at the office working in other countries. Press 1 if you have won a competition. Press 2 if you would like us to come and cover your event. Press 3 for complaints. I was just about... <laughs> <laughs> Great mind <laughs> thinking like... I was going to say more. Press 3 to complain about Nick Damon. <laughs> or 4 for any other query. <laughs> or press 99 for... And followed by the building number... Do we have to still dial, dial nine for the outside line? Yeah, yeah. more so now, now that we've got 17 buildings. Yep. And uh, maybe it should be dial seven for information about delivering hats to Stuart Noble. Seven for the hat department. 17 in an 18. My ears are very warm. 19 and 20. I'm actually legitimately concerned about Stuart now because the hat is off. And he's, he's pondering into the distance. Go, Marshall, let's go. <gasps> it's okay. Ollie's put his on plastic on hat on. You lose track time so it, it's, a, it's an unsung rule of RC racing. We always have to have one person with a hat on at any one point. It's for health and safety reasons. In the triples, please, Too many hats triples, could evolve uh, other issues. Too little hat. It's part of the ISO compliance. Yeah. Right, where are we up to? We are up to group number nine, round two of Rally. qualifying. Carl, uh, Carl Johan Svensson, Pavel, UC, Ian, George, Marcus, Alexis, Sylvan and Zacharias in this one. agree with Paul's comment. What was Paul's comment? I just realised that uh, unless I have my headphones on, I can't actually hear what you're saying at all, James. Very good point. Um, that's why I've got my earphones in, because I couldn't I hear what you were saying. pop some other earphones in, because these ones are quite warm for the moment. Is there an age limit, because the, the uh, start again, is there an age limit, because there, there are a lot of young racers, sorry, I've, my eyes have just gone, um, no, I don't think there's an age limit. The only age limit I'm aware of at the moment is the one that is implied by certain countries who don't allow um, racers under a certain age to be involved in motorsport, and they actually class um, RC racing as a motorsport. So you will you will see that some of the younger drivers are actually racing under a different country. I didn't listen to all of that because I was trying to plug headphones in, but I assume the question was there something about age limits. Yes. Is there a lower age limit? I suppose you've just got to be able to drive the car. Is there a lower age limit in terms of RC racing? Uh, no, there is not. There is no lower age limit. There is sometimes an age limit in place for marshalling, though. So uh, youngsters yeah. may need to get an adult to marshal for them. Uh, for safety reasons, really. The, yeah, the, these... These one tenth, you, you still wouldn't want one of those hitting you. No. But if you're racing large scale, like over on our other stream that's actually happening right now, like the vehicles in uh, Portugal, they don't tend to come off the track like the large scale off road. 
they are beasts of um, vehicles. Um, we did stream them last year. I guess we'll be doing it again this year. Or have we done it this year already? I can't remember. I think it's in the next few weeks. Ah, I bet that's where I'm going. Um, yeah, it, it's on our videos in the archives. Be sure to check it out. It was our Carreras in Spain, July last year. Um, yeah, they're huge. They are mass they're massive vehicles. I was actually just watching our other stream earlier, and uh, it was at the point where Nick was uh, interviewing one of the drivers, and you, you want to see the wheels on those large-scale touring cars. They um, they wear like a Formula One car, where bits of rubber are literally hanging off the side of the tyres. Wow. Uh, and they were saying, the guy was saying that they suffer with oversteer. So they, hatch, they have to actually wear the first 10% off by driving them round before the tyres are any good. So they will actually use tyres and then put them in a box ready to then use them at the track. Which is interesting because that's what some of the drivers were doing here to start with. They found that new, new tyres weren't as good as older tyres. But now it definitely seems like new tyres are the way to go, certainly for the top guys. Isn't there a mechanical um, like tyre wearer? Like, they ha like you can cut down the foam tyres on carpet. Uh, you can, I know for on-road, uh, for, for one-tenth scale touring cars, you can get a, uh, they, a few companies do a tyre sander, where you bolt a tyre onto a, it's basically a, a strong electric motor which spins the tyre up, and then you can uh, you can either scuff the surface of the tyre, or you can take the, the mounting ridge off there, um, so you can check those out. Companies like G-Force uh, make those, which you can use. Um, I don't know if there's an equivalent for one-tenth off-road I'm not aware that there is um, for anything similar for off-road I guess you could modify one of the on-road ones uh, obviously there's a larger tire diameter the problem with uh, the off-road tires is of course they're a lot softer so they expand a lot more than uh, the touring car on-road tires but you can normally vary the speed on some of these tire sanders particularly like the g-force one as I said you can vary the speed on that one and um, use that to uh, perhaps scrub in the off-road tires if you wanted to but the drivers are now definitely finding that the uh, the new tyres work better. So uh, they are focusing on new tyre runs at the moment. Not allowed. Sorry, mate. Sorry, Ian. Not allowed here at the Euros. One minute fifty-five to go. So we've got less than two minutes to go in group number nine. Group 10 is up next. 10 is out next, so we're starting to get the big boys out on track. Not much time left in this one. About one minute and ten seconds to go. Carl Johan leading this one. Powerful running second. You see, was third. Marcus is now to third. You see to fourth. Two drivers at the front on for 17 laps. Everyone else is on for 16s. She's still not feeling great, so I am going to jump up, I think, on round 11. Should and we cover the, cover the big dogs. OK, should we, uh, should, we send him back some? should we send him back to the hotel? I've offered. He said no. No. Oh. Did yeah. offer. I've offered uh, a travel back to the hotel. Uh, I've offered um, warm towels. Lots of water. Uh, hugs? Have you offered hugs? Uh, I haven't offered hugs yet, no. That's the last resort, really. Okay. Uh, I've offered emergency uh, medical, private medical insurance. Yeah. I think I've covered all bases. Yeah. Legally, if he kills over now, and you know, we're not liable. Good, good. Looking Nick. after the interests of RC racing. Nick will be pleased. Okay, so while James is going to head up to the camera position in a few minutes time we are coming towards the end of number nine group nine now it's about 10 seconds to go um stew's put his hat back on so i can take mine off that's good and i'm going to open the box of mints i've got in front of me And looks like taking the win in that one will be Pavel in the end with a 17-5-15. 17, 17, That's a good run. Although the top TQ time in the last round was Lee Martin with an 18-lap run.
18 laps. That's a lap quicker than Pavel's just gone. Doing an extra lap in five minutes. Is open, drivers. A little bit naughty there. Saw cars out in the middle of the track. You're lucky the referees have had some food. Aye, aye. Oh. I think it's Stu's going up. Is he? Yeah. You can tell from the way the uh, image is rocking. Oh. And no. that, that tower rocks from a man that's more slight than I. So you can imagine what it's like when I climb up there. He hasn't got any headphones with him. That wasn't very well played. Uh. <laughs> oh, dear. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, next, we've got group number 10. What are you doing? No, he doesn't want rubbish. He wants his headphones. His very sexy headphones. They're black. No more laughs. No more laughs. What? Oh, hang on. That's my <laughs> I've just strangled myself on my headphones. I forgot I had the short lead on. Short lead ones on. What do you want? Oh dear, this isn't going well. <laughs> it's not thumb. It not. It's not thumbs middle. Oh, someone's texting me as well. He's back and he's got a new trick. Magical Trevor. Early leader is Luca. Can he hear me now? Yes, he can. So you can hear me? If you can hear me. You can hear me. Hey, that works. Right, let's let a couple more cars come through. Right. The running order is Marcus, Oliver, Luca, Simon, Zeller. Peter, Moss, Christopher, Fabian, and Yanni. Car number four is our leader, Oliver Speak. Three and a half minutes left now, drivers. Oliver Spike, our leader. Just taking a look at our um, our colleagues on the large scale touring. Yes, it's very interesting to see the different styles of drivers. They tend to look a little bit more mature on okay. the on the large scale. So where are we? We have got half the time to go here in group Oliver, number 10, Luca, round Paul, two of qualifying. Marcus, Oliver Spaeth out in front, Luca Rao runs in second, Simon Moss is third. So the number four car leads this heat. Hmm. This is 
very strange. We seem to have gone one-sided again. Oh. Ah, that's kind of better. Ah, I think we had a loose, and because somebody had just told me about it in the stream, I think I've managed to oh fix it. So my my apologies. Is, we had a lead break, so I've managed to cobble together leads from about for three different purposes to make them into the purpose ah. that we need one for. Right. So leads are now unbroken, possibly. That well, sh should be better. Better. It's weighted towards the right ear, but it should be better. Looks like that looks like right only to me. Oh, it was better a minute ago. Oh dear, something broke. Uh oh. Hello, one two, one two. Oh, the joys. Luca, One, two. Hmm. Simon. I will continue to work on this issue. Okay, I'll let you do that while I get back to the timing on the track. It's now Luca Rao in the one, taking over the lead in this one, followed by Oliver in the four and Marcus in the five. So our new leader is car number one. Hang on, Ollie. One second. Who comes around in front of Stu now? Over the uh, triples. So our leader is car one, Luca Rao, on for a 17 5 11. Oliver Space running in second, on for a 17 lapper as well. Everybody else on for 16 or less. <laughs> it, was <laughs> it wasn't just. Uh, one faulty lead. It looks like we had one dead lead and one faulty lead. Oh dear. Uh, but I've just done some twizzling, and uh, as you can see, oh, it's gone again. Forty-five seconds to go. That's better. No, it's gone. Right. Okay. Oliver, Marcus, okay. Uh, I can't really sit here with my hand on the lead all week. Well, weeks to go. Yeah, we've only got two days to go. Day and a half to go. It is now. 10 minutes to four here in Sweden. A quick update on our time schedule for today. Where are we at? We've got the top guys coming out basically from now on. Then we'll complete that and then go through heats one, two and three. We'll then move into qualifying round three. We'll start off with group number seven at quarter to five local time. So in a little, or basically an hour's time. So in the next hour and a half, you're gonna see the top guys twice. That'll be good. Uh -huh. And then we'll finish off by going one through to six. So that concludes that heat on the track, group 11. So group 10 is completed. Group 11 is up next. Hi, Troy. Welcome back. Hello. Welcome I think back. Troy's been with us every day, isn't he? Should have done a tally sheet. And every time someone checked in, they got a star. And if, we, if somebody hit all six stars... Couldn't be another prize. I would have thought it was something else. Yeah. What prize? Can't repeat the comment you put in, but uh, are you saying that's uh, good or bad? Are you happy or not happy with the audio now, Wolf Rogue? Mm. Yeah. Oh well, looks like we're staying in stereo as well, which is a good thing. That's good. So, up now, group number 11. Nicholas, Ben, Henry, Florent, Carlos, Philip, Wesley, Frederick, and Frederick is the starting order. Sweden, Great Britain, Finland, Spain, Austria, the Netherlands, Denmark, and the Mother Sweden. It's Swedish, perfect. I'm going to add some more people in since we're missing around. So, we have Jeffrey Mark Graham. Hello, welcome to the group. Hello, welcome. Gareth Kirkwood. Who do you want to 
Where's that? David Kirkwood. Hello and welcome to the group. Hello, welcome to you too. If you are a member of the group, as well as getting the other benefits of being part of the group, like news and information, you also It's not Lee Martin, no, he's not listening. Number two was it Carl Two? Carlos in Spain, maybe? I think so. Let's check it when we come on the car. So Steve, can you check out someone that looks a lot like Lee Martin's car? It isn't a person that looks like Lee Martin's car. A person that looks like Lee Martin. No. They'd, they'd be very oh, It's almost focused now. There we go. Thin. Listen up, drivers. I don't know why the race organisers are shouting out the numbers because I know the race system is capable of shouting the numbers. Yeah. In fact, he's doing it now. Is he not doubling up on work? Maybe. Are you flagging? Me? Yeah. I'm just, I'm just... I feel like we're both flagging. I'm, I'm wary not to use too much energy knowing that we've got the top peaks out twice more. Could just have a drink of water, that would help. Would you like a tea, coffee, anything like that? I'm alright, I'm alright. Maybe, okay. uh, maybe another Coke. Okay. Could you very unprofessionally ask Stuart if he would like a coffee or a Coke? Stuart, do you want a coffee? No, do you anything else? Coke, no. water, Fanta. No, it doesn't have anything. Do you want a new camera? No. Okay. Doesn't. Odd. I thought you would have said yes. Um, so. Can I have a new camera? No. It's little Ben out in front. Little Ben? Oh, uh, come with that. Little Ben. Ben Jemison leading this one. Car number five. Carlos Frederick. Nicholas Frederick. Where's he gone? Wesley and Philip. We're look, look, watching the car that looks like Lee Martin, which is actually car number three, which is Nicholas Manson. But the car we need to pick up is car number five over the J Concepts jump. Around the flat bits. Over the VRC roller, down the back straight he goes. Ben Jamison, number five with the associated car. Here in group 11, round two of qualifying on Fast Friday as uh, Nicholas Manson rolls it over. Two minutes down, three minutes left. Three minutes or so left in this one. Group 11 qualifying round two. It's 2014 four-wheel drive electric buggy Euros. We are here thanks to Team Durango and the DEX 410 V4. Thanks to VRC Pro and thanks to J Concept as well. Out in front. They're going to do it 17 and 11. Carlos, 17 and a 14. Florent, 16 and a 3. Henry, 16 and a 10. Nicholas Manson, 16 and a 10 as well. 240 left drivers. We have got about 2 minutes and 15 seconds to go. Ben still leading this one. Carlos is second. Florence is third. Nicholas down to fourth. Frederick, then Henry, Frederick, Wesley and Philip. Our leader goes into the double-double. Taking a wide line. Going through traffic. Our leader is at the end of the main Two minutes now. left. Heading for the off-camera corner in the middle of traffic. That's ben clears leader. the triples now. Respect Avoid some leader. back marker traffic. Over the J Concepts jump. Then around the tabletop he goes. Over the roller down the back straight. Second spot is Carlos. Third is Florence. Fourth is Frederick. And fifth is Wesley. With one minute and 30 seconds to go in group 11, qualifying round two. 
That's when it gets hard. Thank you, number nine. Ben Jemison, still our leader, on for a 17 lap run. One minute 15 on the clock. Ben, you're looking at doing 17 and a 13. Carlos. One minute to go, one minute left. 17 lap runs for Ben, Carlos, and Wesley at the moment. Ben, Carlos, Wesley, Lawrence, and Henry. Some clear track now for Ben. On the main 45 go. seconds Pick left. Some clear track for you as well, Carlos. Ben Carlos still the leader with his associated buggy. Over the triple he goes. Over the TV double, J Concepts Carlos. jump. Still some clear track for Ben. You are on lap number 16 now, Ben. Here comes Carlos. You're starting lap number 16 now as well. Wesley, you are running third. Lawrence, fourth. So about 30, Wesley 20 seconds, left. less than that left. It's still Ben out in front. Carlos is second and Wesley is third. And we are waiting for Ben to come through. He has done, I think. Yep, my screen's not updated. 17, 5, 11 for Ben. Seventeen five eleven for Ben in that one. Good run. Good run for Ben. All two of this man. Track is open, drivers. All right, next up is group 12. We are nearly at the end of, well, we're not nearly at the end of this round. We've got one, two, and three to go after 14. But the big guys are out. Well, yeah, that'll do. Big guys start to come out from this one. Tom Cockrell, Ellis Stafford, Jesper Rasmussen, Stefan Feifhofer, Otto Ospelt, Marco Kon Honkinen, Sandro Bermutt, Oscar Levine and Martin Creel. Okay, no more laughs, no more laughs. Take it easy, guys. We're doing a bit of track repair out there. Take it easy, please. In the double double. So this is group 12. Ben. Ben. ben Jemison, I have the bit in my hand. It's gone. As they uh, do some track repairs for us there on the far side of the circuit. How many people does it take to screw in a 
job time. Okay, track is sorted. Here we go then with group number 12. Group number 12, underway. Work together, guys. Work together now. Break is out. Left goes to Tom. Otto Steffen. Two laps in, Tom still out front, followed by Jesper, Otto, Stefan, Ellis. Tom, you're looking at doing 17 in a three at this early stage? So here we go then. <coughs> Group 12, three laps in, Tom Cockrell on top, Otto Elspelt is second, Jesper Rasmussen is third. So it's Tom in the two down the back straight now. Over the triple he goes. Jesper running in second now. Elliot Ellis is to third. Otto to fourth. Jesper, Stafford, Wolfsfeld, Stefan is your top five. All of you on 17 lap pace. Tom in a three. Ellis in a seven. Otto in a ten. Jesper in 11. 17 lap pace going on here for our leaders. Tom out in front, Ellis in second, Otto is third. Three minutes and 20 left, drivers. Jasper dropping down to fourth. All these lap times are 17 second lap times at the moment. 17.5 from Tom, four from Otto, 17.7 from Jasper. Let's pick up our third place car. Jesper Rasmussen over the J Concepts jump. Gets caught up and spins out, going up onto the tabletop. We are halfway through, two and a half down, two and a half to go. One forty-five to go. Oh, big mistake there from Jesper Rasmussen. Rolls it over. Bad luck for Jesper, dropping him down the field. Tom still out in front. Let's find Tom once again on the track. In front of Stu now, making the right hand uh, over the triple he goes. Into the double double one more time for our leader. No trouble that time round. One minute left. 17506 for Tom. Still predicted for Tom. 17.4, his best lap time. Otto, 17.4 for your best lap time. Tom in the lead from Otto by 0.4 of a second. We have got 45 seconds to go. 40 seconds to go. Tom, Otto, Marku now up to third. Stefan, Sandro, Martin, Jesper, Ellis and Oscar. Tom Cockrell out in front in this one, looking to try and back up his top 10 time for round one. What's he going to end up with? He's on for a 17 in six at the moment. 
Tom is on to his final lap now. Over the triple he goes. Avoids an upside down Jesper there. Through the J concept jump he goes. So Tom is done with a 17 505. Who is going to be second? It looks like it will be Otto. Yes, it is with a 506. Jesper's done with a fast 16. Then Ellis. Who's third is Marku with a 17 in 511. Sandro 17 515. Stefan 17 518. Martin 17 519. And we've got an issue for Oscar. Oscar Levine, it uh, looks like his PT didn't count properly. So race control is going to look into that now and uh, adjust that if necessary. Only showing him with, uh, with nine laps and a one minute, ten second lap. So the track is open for group number 12. Okay guys are warming up for group number 12. And they are now being called to the grid. Hey, bro. No more lap report. Dragon flow report. Stu's not liking that anymore. Oh, dear. Good quality. Drift cars in Japan. They like that now. She's fine. Okay, so group number 13 up now. Yuna, Christopher, Mike, uh, Miguel, Renault, Daniel. Didn't expect that to come from my screen. That's the result from the last one. Uh, Michael, Petri, Joachim, and Peter. That's not worked, has it, James? Qualifying round number... Two and some lap times. There we go. So Una Hassan leads them off. Was third in that first round of qualifying. The youngster from Finland, green and black associated buggy. Oh, oh dear, that triple's getting very, very wrong. That is not what we wanted to see. That's not what we wanted to do on that first lap. We got a couple of laps in, and then we start one of the conditions. It's not going to be Una who's in the mark that mistake. Down to the triple, it will be the other answer. Daniel Kovacic out in front, to be strong in second. Christopher Spencer in third. So we go the car number seven of Kovacic. Who comes in front of our camera now, turning left? Then it's Josh Chamber right hander. Over the triple he goes. Lands that really neatly. Over the J over J concept jumps. Through the flat bit. A flat bit. We are still going down about straight. Daniel leading this one. He's on for a very fast 17 lapper. Oh, rolls it going over the TV jump. And that puts him offline for the J Concepts jump, but gets away with it just about. Over the roller he goes. He drops to second now. Christopher Svensson taking over the lead. That bright orange buggy going up the hill, 
round the tabletop, down the hill, over the VRC roller, down the main straight he goes. Svensson uh, is out in front with his HBD413. Privately entered. As he, oh, he just about gets right out of the dead concept jump. Kovovic second, strong third, Pinnington fourth, and Nilsson, Matthias. Hattonen is down the order at the moment, but trying to get back on terms with our leaders. Car oh, number six are Chris Respenson from Sweden. David Ronnefelk's normal pit man out in front here. Let's pick up our current sec. Who is going to be in second? It's going to be Miguel Matthias in the second spot over the TV jump through the J Concepts jump, making the right hander onto the tabletop. He goes over the VRC roller and down the main straight. Miguel Matthias to the two spot on for a seven. Everyone in this race is on for a 17 lap run. Christopher Spencer is out in front. Strom now looks like he's in second. He is indeed. As we see a mistake from Peter Pinnish in front of our camera position. Spencer leads. Matthias is second. Strom is there in third. There or thereabouts. Identical time to Matthias. Nikolai Sun is fourth, Kovovic is fifth, happening. Uh, if we've got a battle here on the track, oh, a big, big mistake there for Spence, and rolls it over. And that's from our Miguel through on the track. Let's set some time as they cross the line. This time by who is it going to be? What's the running order? Miguel Matthias takes the lead, happening for second. Strong takes the lead now, Pet 3 Strong in the number 5. That is the old, old gold coloured car, I believe. Over the TV jump, then the great concept jump. Over the tabletop, down on the back straight goes our new leader, Patrice Strom from Finland. Miguel Matthias second, Kobovic is third, Hattonen is fourth. We have got one minute, just under one minute to go. One minute to go here in Group 13, Round 2 of qualifying. Strom, Matthias, Kovovic, Hassan, and that's the order. 17-1 from Strom, 17-1 from Kovovic, 17-3 from uh, Matthias, and 17-2 from Hassanen. Thirty seconds left. Our leaders all kind of caught up together. As we have just a few seconds left, it's going to be the final lap now. Everyone is going to make it through onto the 17th lap. And Hatton rolls it over, coming off the triple. And again a mistake as he goes over the first, the TV jump. Then the Jake Concept jump, he has to single, single. That's a lot of time suddenly lost on the last lap for Yuna Hattonen. So who is going to take the win in this one? It is going to be Daniel Kobovic in the end, taking the win in group number 13. 17 504 for Kobovic there. Seventeen five. Let's check that one. Group thirteen, round two. Daniel Kobovic, seventeen five o four point zero, with a best lap of seventeen one. Let's see if that is the best time in the round so far. It is just beating Cockrell's time for the previous heat. So, 17.504. Young Daniel Kobovic, the, uh, the driver, everyone. As we have, well, the top heat, but then rounds, heats one, two, and three. And I don't think they're like to be quite on pace with uh, with the top boys. Group number 14. Okay, 
So, cars are being called to the start line now. The start order will be Lee Martin, Jon Neumann, David Ronnefelk, Robert Battier, Hupo Honegor, Patrick Hoffer, Martin Bayer, Neil Craig, and Carrie Sarmella. Group 14, round two of qualifying. These are the fast boys. So, as we get ready, we've got one car late to the grid. Who's that? That is the nine. Patrick Hoffer. Is there a problem? I don't think there is. We're going to start the race. No, we are going to have to start without. Who are we starting without, sorry? It's Patrick Hoffer. Why? What's happened? I don't know. There's a looks like a problem with his car, but he might be being recovered. Oh, they're going to get it on. Are they going to get it on or not? Uh -oh, no, not he is going way. to miss the start. Bad luck there for Patrick. What a shame. Yeah. Okay. But Gutted. For right. the guys who have started. The other team took the mick out of me for saying gutted the other day. Did the they? Lee Martin instant, yes. I apologise. I've just done someone a massive injustice. It's Carrie Selmella who hasn't started. Uh, not Patrick Hoffer, who is off and running. I wouldn't say that was a massive injustice, Ollie. Well, it's just a mistake. Mm, I don't do mistakes. <laughs> I'm just not as right as I could have been. <laughs> Okay, who is it going to be? It is the Durango of Jorn Neumann leading this one. Lee Martin is second, Hupo is third, Bayer is fourth. Our race leader is the orange, yellow, red and black sort of colours of Jorn Neumann. No, it's not. Don't be silly. Of course not. It's David Ronnefelk now back to the top of the time. Because every time I read the order out, of course it's going to change. So we can just see. Oh, no, it's gone again. So, this time by, it was Ronnefelk, Neumann, Honigal, Battier, Bayer, Martin, Craig, Hoffer. That was the running order with the best lap of 17, 16, 8 from Ronnefelk. Here is Ronnefelk on the screen now. I didn't see if uh, Lee Martin made a mistake, but I'm guessing he did since he is now down the order. So, it is Ronnefelk in... Oh, Lee Martin rolls it over right in front of that camera position. Ronnefelk manages to not be affected by that. So, it is a battle between Jorn Neumann and David Ronnefelk. This time by, it goes to Neumann with half a second advantage over Ronnefelk. Honegal is third, Battier is fourth, Lee Martin is fifth, Martin Bayer is fifth, Lee Martin is sixth, Neil Craig in seventh and Patrick Hoffer in eighth. Jorn Neumann versus Ronnefelt, Ronnefelt now to lead by less than one tenth of a second. Ronnefelt versus Neumann at the moment, that's the battle for the lead in this heat, but who is right behind them? It is Hupo Honigal running in third. He is just one second behind those guys. So any mistakes, any errors, and Hupo is in with a shot as well. The gap that time by, it's up to two seconds. Neumann took the lead. Ronnefelt down to second. Ronnefelt back on the gas though, moving forward as he does through this heat. Lee Martin catching up with Ronnefelt. Is he going to be able to sit with him, make, try and make a pass or something like that. He's only qualifying. Lee Martin made the mistake, so drops behind Ronnefeld. So if he needs to get back in front of him, he's got to do it with uh, cooperation from both drivers. Ronnefeld has not got to let him go through. Two drivers here on for 18 lap runs. Your Neumann and David Ronnefeld both on for 18 lappers. As we believe Lee Martin now moves to third. Is verging on being third. 
needs to find about half a second and he will be third as we have a retirement for Neil Craig there it looks like and a mistake from somebody else who was it that was the number nine of Patrick Hoffman making a mistake and all that means Martin Bayer getting caught up as well So, Hupo still holding third just on the computer on an 18 lapper as well. Who is it going to be at the end of this one? We've got one minute to go. Jorn Norman versus Dave Ronnefelk. Jorn has this one at the moment by one second. Ronnefelk in the two spot. Then behind them, Hupo is third. Robert is fourth. Lee is fifth. Lee moves back to third. Does he hold it as we go through the order no Hupo retakes third we have got 40 seconds to go Jorn Neumann David Ronnefelk Hupo Honigal that is the order so we are now into the final 20 seconds here David Ronnefelk versus Jorn Neumann at the moment it looks like Jorn has got this one he is two seconds up of Ronnefelk last time by so unless he roofs it, I think this one is going to go the way of the Durango driver. Over the triples he goes. Turning left over the TV jump. Then the uh, J-Concept jump as we have another car upside down behind him. Who is it going to be? You're not going to hang on to take this one. Neumann takes the win. 18-5-12. David Ronnefeld, 18-5-14. Hupo going to take third with an 18 lapper as well. Lee Martin, four, 17, five flat. Battier, 17, five flat. Martin Bayer, 5.04. So, uh, oh, Kobovic, maybe top five. Your Neumann taking round number two there. Unless anyone from Heat one, two, or three can go faster, of course, but I'm not sure they will. So we're going to get, uh, it's heat one straight away out next for their second round of qualifying. Remember we shuffle the heats every round. Okay, so group number one coming out for their second round of qualifying. Uh, I know we haven't got the second round complete, but for all intents and purposes, I think this round is complete in terms of the top guys. I don't think anyone from these heats are going to challenge the uh, top runners. So we'll have a look at the overall ranking on my screen. I was about to ask you a question that I think you're going to answer anyway with the information what you, what screen. Be? What's the order? What's going on? So we've got Yawn. So at the moment, Jorn Martin is now shown as over on pole. Jorn Martin? Jorn, no, sorry, Jorn, Mar Jorn Martin? No. <laughs> Jorn Neumann on pole with a TQ and a second. Lee Martin is second with a TQ and a fourth. Ronnefeld has a second and a fourth in his third. Hupo has a third and a sixth, and he's fourth overall. Robert has two fifths, and he's fifth overall. Miguel Matias, an eighth and a tenth, puts him sixth. Tom Cockrell has two ninths, and that puts him seventh. Christopher Spencer has a seventh and a twelfth, that puts him eighth. Martin Bayer has an eighth and a twelfth, that puts him ninth. Una Hatsonen has a third and an eighteenth, 
and that puts him 10th and just in the early final on the outside looking in with a 6th and a 20th is Daniel Kobovic, 6th in that last round. So the youngsters have got a 3rd and a 6th between them, but we can't, we can't use them together. The so one person, what? between them they've got a 3rd and a 6th. Oh, place. Yes. If we could have them together, they'd be 4th. I thought it meant of a 2nd. Well, that's tight. That's what you mean. Savoy in 12th. Strom is 13th. Jemison 14th. Nikolaisen 15th. Olsfeld 16th. Lee in 17th. Pfeifhofer in 18th. Rao in 19th. And Spaith 20th. The internet's favourite driver, Jesper Rasmussen, 22nd. Don't forget, uh, Jesper's got a, fan, uh, a, a Facebook fan page. Yeah, we found that out a little bit earlier on. Pop on over to our RC Racing TV Facebook page and we've linked it there. Do be sure to join up and uh, show support for him. Yep. Meanwhile, group number one is underway. A minute and a half down, quickly down. Yato out in front, Arne Pedi second, Jorgen is third, Roy is fourth, Pavel is fifth, Nicholas, Maximilian and Manolis, that's the running order. Anyone saying anything else interesting on our chat room at the moment? Don't forget, if you're watching on YouTube, you can send us a message to the chat group on the right hand side. And don't forget, all of our coverage brought to you by Team Durango and the DEX 410 V4, VRC Pro and J Concepts. So thank you to them. Thank you to Ephra as well. David Fraser saying, good run for Tom. Must be referring to Tom Cockle. Yes, it was. It was a good run for Tom. Don't forget, if you want to watch some on-road large-scale racing, you can do our, our team in Portugal. Have all of the action from there. You can check them out on the other YouTube channel on Facebook. Oh, on Facebook? No, other YouTube channel. The link is on Facebook or the RC Racing TV website, rcracing.tv. Stay with us on Fast Friday here in Trelleborg in Sweden. Heats one, two and three to work through. And then we're into round three of qualifying, kicking off, I believe, with group number seven. So all the fast guys will be out fairly early on in round three. Then we kick off tomorrow for another two more rounds of qualifying and those important finals, the triple A finals also taking place tomorrow. It's all here on RC Racing TV. So, how are we getting on now? Last lap or so in this one, Arne Pedder in front, Jorgen is second, Roy is third, Pavel is fourth, then Nicholas, Maximilian, and Manolis.
Track yourself and drivers, track is open. Kai Kobriyanta, please race control. Kai Kobriyanta. No more left, please. No more left. So here we go then, group number two gridded up and ready to roll for their round two of qualifying. Wilhelm, Patrick, Michael, Matty, Michael, Eric, Matthias and Simon. Okay, we are about one and a half minutes into this. Wilhelm in front, Matty second, Matthias is third. This is group two in round two of qualifying.
So we have halfway through this one, two and a half down, two and a half to go. Wellheim followed by Matty, Matthias, Mikael, Simon, Michael, Eric. And uh, Patrick. There is about one and a half minutes left now. 16 <coughs> lap run going on here for Wilhelm. So, again, wondering why I can't hear myself. I can't plug my headphones in. Not very clever. If you haven't plugged your headphones into something today, why not let us know? Then we can message you on Facebook. Yes. The reason I was plugging yes. my headphones in. Why is that? Why were you plugging or not plugging your headphones in? We have three people waiting to join the Facebook group. Do we? We do. Let's welcome them along, shall we? Are they here for the competition? Maybe they are. I'm going to start an easy to hard evangelization. David Scott, welcome to the group. Hello to you. Hello, welcome. Welcome along. Nathan Field. Welcome. Welcome to the group. Peter Tauber. Hello to you. Welcome along. Those three people can now enter That's our it. competition. Is that all we got? That's just, just those three. What usually happens is I do them in, in, in between threes and tens, and then tonight we'll come in in the morning and there'll probably be about 20 people waiting right. to join. Well, if you do want to join the Facebook group, go to Facebook and search for RC Racing TV and click join. And one of the reasons you might want to join is because you can enter our competition to win a Schumacher Cat K1 Aero. Just go to the Facebook group, find the post, which I think is pinned to the top, which says, another competition. Read the questions that are on there. Comment your reply in a single comment. You must be a real person. You must not be an animal. You must post a single comment with both answers in it. And you can only enter once. If you've already entered, you cannot enter again. We will only take your first answer. If we see anyone entering more than once, we will discount both answers. What? Yeah. One answer only. Only one you, answer. Is that a new rule? You'll discount both answers? Yeah, why not? Yeah. You've just made that up. I have. You're a law unto yourself. I am, but also, I'm trying to be fair. So, yeah. That lady must be very warm. She's wearing leather hot pants. Leather hot pants. This Where? lady here. Crikey. Wow. I'm bad enough with, with khaki shorts on, let alone leather hot pants. I have leather underwear on. Uh, you do? No. I wonder what that squeaking was on the way <laughs> in this morning. <coughs> it feels so professional, even talking about leather hot pants and leather underwear. He's so in the zone. He just doesn't get phased. Nope. He's in work mode, though, at the moment. Work mode. So are we. We are. But he's in more of a work mode. More more work mode than us. So, oh, hang on. There might be someone else waiting to join. And there is, oh, there's two now. Two more people. Alyssa Oars. Alyssa Oars. Alyssa Oars. We are in awe of you joining us. Thank you very much. Welcome to the group. You're now one of us. Hello to you. Fernando Almina. You have a... I'm going to need Ollie for this one. You have a X-Ray. I can do that because it's got X-Ray on it. An X-Ray buggy. Uh, XB4. Thank you for pointing that out on my screen. Uh, One-tenth. It is a one-tenth. Uh, same kind of design with these... Is it here, the same same kind of design and class that we're Nick looking at today? Goals Absolutely goals. right. No, we okay. looked at an XB we looked at two XB4s earlier in our pit walk. We looked at Martin Bayer and Renault Savoy's XB4s. I'm not the technical person. I leave that to Ali. Hello and welcome to the group. Remember, You're, you no, you can't, are the technical person. You can't okay, like us. No, you but can't you like can us. Join us. Join us. Uh, someone else, James Wright. Four mutual friends. This is the most mutual friends I have had over the last okay. five days of joining people. Friend, mutual friends, Nick Damon, Dallas Matheson, Stu Noble and Mick Farrell. What a coll what a Do party. you know James Wright? What a part... No, I, did we have this conversation earlier in the week? Click on the picture. <laughs> we did. He, I think we should block him for that. He's unjoined and he's joined. He's unjoined and joined. We should block him for that. I take back that shout out. I'm just going to quietly add you. I wouldn't have done that. I'd have blocked him. No. It's all right. I don't. I don't. I don't give up my time freely. For, it's not giving my time freely at all. But if I don't give my time freely for this, for people to to add themselves twice. 
there's a certain amount of rejoins that we do and once you go over that it's a bit like putting your pin in wrong three times ah you, you then have to ring up ring up the bank there's a special <laughs> form that you have to fill out once you've done this three times ah. it gets filed into the in tray in building number 40 no we haven't got 42 buildings no we don't building number four Building number four uh it's building number four floor two that's, that's what uh, i was that's, that's 42 yes i know it's 42 but it's building four floor, floor two, two. Um, and then we have to go through to the unlock department. Yeah. They unlock your account uh, and allow you to add again and, and reset the counter. But you are banned from future competitions. Yes, banned. So, banned. banned. Uh, and when you join, when you come and view our streams, you have to wear a dunce hat. You do, yes, yes. Unfortunately. Yep. So don't unjoin and rejoin. No, 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 no. Picks, guys. Picks. Come on, share the fun. Picks of what? Carl Latham. Um, what what do you what want picks off? Yeah, what do you want picks off? We can we can. Pretty oh, much. unless this is your leather pants. Oh, my, right. Okay. Uh, Carl Latham, please explain. Boys getting excited about leather hot pants. Uh, what boy doesn't? Uh, the best should win, no matter who. But then again, Lee was the fastest and had deserved it. Mm. Don't think Yawn is Bavarian, so. Uh, that relates to an earlier comment. Uh, oh right. Okay, board of Germans women. Uh, German, uh, German, uh, board of German women. <laughs> German <laughs> Germans winning. Is well, there a difference between German if you're a board of Germans winning, why don't you pick up a buggy and get good at it yourself? Yes. Just make sure you don't uh, pick up a large scale uh, touring car. No. Uh, as we've uh, just seen on our sister channel, um, our parallel channel, uh, has been a. A slight issue where a vehicle has left the track and ended up um, sat with the spectators. No one's been hurt, uh, yes. but quite funny to see a full-size vehicle. Well, I don't, I don't, to be honest, I don't find it funny at all. I think oh, it's quite sorry. dangerous. Um, and sorry, Ali. If I was there, I'd be asking some questions of the organisers how that, how that could happen. Because if you saw that here, that would be quite a big issue, potentially. could quite uh, easily have injured someone. Yeah, this is quite a safe track, really, because the only place that they could come off is just in front of our camera stand. They have actually been very sensible with the uh, track layout. We've, uh, we, they've used the back wall to basically protect the back straight where the cars are going fastest, which is really good. And uh, most of the jumps are in the centre of the circuit, so they're way away from kind of any spectators, which is very good to see. So yes. well, well designed track in that respect. Um, come on, guys, keep up the girls, man. You don't find, you don't tend to find. It's not. If, if I was on the internet looking for looking for girls, I generally wouldn't have come to RC Racing TV no. live stream. No. There's there's probably other websites out there with pictures of girls on. Yes. There is photographic hotel lady, who I think was Kath. Oh, what was her name now? I could go back to the comments. I think it was the first day, but I'm not because it'll take me ages to find it. Right. Um, you're teasing us with your chat of pretty ladies, but no pics. I see they want those kind of pics. It would be very unprofessional of us to zoom in on the ladies that are here with our camera. Yeah. yeah as a cameraman, you have to do it in a very crafty way. There has to be something else in the shot of relevance to what you are filming. And yes. then that way you are allowed to, it, it kind of finds the loophole in the legal system. Yep. Yep. Always uh, about the legal rules. Well done. I know. Yeah. So if there was a lady in the, with, with a car in the background... Or don't forget, if they tune in after half past nine tonight, we don't have to have the cars there. So we talked earlier about our, uh, our post-watershed show that we could always do. With, <laughs> with plenty of uh, not necessarily RC-based <laughs> chat. We've got the cameras. Mm. Have pardon? <laughs> It would, I would be better if I could lose these pig trotters, Martin Owen. Okay. Okay. He, no, this is bad when even the chat room gets affected by four o'clock madness. Yes. Talking of four o'clock madness, it is now ten minutes to five here wow. in Sweden. So if you're watching on the archive and you want to jump ahead to, uh, in fact, let me see. We are no, they don't want to jump ahead. They want to sit here and watch it all. We do. I know, they probably do, but you may not. Uh, this is Group 3, round number 2, which should have started, which should have finished 
15 minutes to go. So we're probably running 15 minutes behind. We'll try and make it up during this next break, I am sure. If you're looking for the top guys, they're due to be on about quarter past five. So technically in about half an hour. But say we are running a little bit behind time schedule, so maybe just over half an hour if you do want to just jump ahead and look look for those. It's group number three finishing up now. It's Ralph taking the win, Frederick in second, and Jonathan in third. Yeah, I saw that interview. What interview was that? Hal RC. He's referring to Martin Owen's pig trotters. I don't know. Maybe. That's what I was going to look at earlier. First of all, I think there might be some member requests, unless my eyes deceive me. No, there are. Wow. Um, Andrew Curtis Rich, I'm sure. I've added you before. Brent Ouslus. Ouslus? Hmm. Uh, hmm. Indeed. Hmm. Joined only a month ago. Oh, you are wearing a Schumacher top, though. Are you a Schumacher driver? I don't know. But still, hello, Brent. Welcome to the group. Hello, um, welcome along. The pig trotters did belong to Dave Church. Ask him about it. No. Maybe later. He usually drops in, doesn't he? In the he day. only drops in at some point. Uh, if if we think, if we remember, we'll ask him then. Okay. Let's uh, not have too many in jokes. Let's try and keep it open for everyone. Yeah, I don't like in jokes. Yeah. Because you've got to be in it to know about it. Yep. Let's come up with general doing. jokes that everyone can enjoy. James Wright, two minutes ago. Thanks for the ad and thanks for the shout out. You can have another one. Hello, James Wright. Hello, James Wright. With the ch oh, no. oh, it's you, you cheeky shout no, out. I'm not, so. I'm not doing a shout out. No. No, take no. that back. No, you can't have a shout out. Whoa. Someone watching from Sunny Athens. Sunny Athens. It, I tell you what, it's sunny Europe at the moment. Um, Portugal oh, looks sunny. Sweden oh, looks sunny. We can see oh, Athens oh, looks oh, sunny. Oh, and I know that there was a heat wave of all oh, things in the UK yeah. last night, and I guess it's followed through this morning. Good news for Europeans all over Europe. Yes. Wow. Frederick Rasmussen. Are you Jesper Rasmussen's father, brother, cousin? I don't know, but that's one crazy... Oh, while he would level those stickers around the monitor. Would I? Are I they colour know. coordinated and in the appropriate size orders? <laughs> no. no, I would not like that sticker. That's, that is a proper sticker bomb, which is calling away, but doesn't fit in with the conversation me and Stu had at midnight a few days ago about no. stickers. And it's left-handed. Oh, uh, yeah. We don't judge him because of that. No, no, he's not. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's got the mouse pad on the left. That's not a mouse pad. It is. It's a magic mouse pad from Apple. It's uh, isn't it a drawing one? No. No. Oh. It's the Big Apple one. The Big Apple one. The Big Apple, not the New York one, just the Big Apple one. Right. <laughs> Have we posted the the, uh, 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 the um, proof of the first competition? Nope. <sighs> We're supposed to, aren't we? Yes, we will do. We we'll have do it. it. We have it all. We'll post it up for some time. It's been. Uh, it conforms with ISO standards. It does. ISO, I think it was ISO nineteen thousand four hundred and twenty-three. Yeah, I was. Um, I just got really confused then because I just looked down at my screen and there was a red dot on there. And I, wanted, I thought someone behind me was being funny, shining a laser pointer at my screen. It's the reflection of the light on the bottom of my microphone reflection <laughs> off my screen. So it's me that's causing myself I would to go, love to have watched you there? for five minutes turning around, just hurling abuse at people. Yeah. You think you're funny? Uh, you're not owning a pie, and then you turn back round. It's there again. Oi! That little circular joke could have gone on for a long time. Could have done. Still got Pop Americano stuck in my head. Pop Pop Meh, 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 meh. Um... Riveting stuff, Andrew Selvaggi. Uh, I think that's probably more of a sarcastic comment towards our commentary at the moment. It is. We could be quiet if you want. Yeah. I'll tell you what I could do, which is somewhat more relevant to racing. What's that? I could go and talk to TQ Drive from our number two. Jordan Neumann. Yes. We'll do that while we've got a lull in Where the traffic. Is he? Well, he is probably in the pits, talking to his mechanic. I don't know. Let's have a look. We're going to peer into the pits. 
Yeah, he is over there. You can see he's got he's got basically oh, if you yeah. look over the pits, look for the person who's got yawn in massive letters, fluorescent letters about You can't the... read that, you can just see it's fluorescent yellow on blue and he's wearing a grey hat which we know is yawn. Go, be free. Okay. Um Right, let's leave the media centre. And we'll head down into the pits now. And we'll grab a very quick word with Yawn. Yawn is right in the very centre of the pits. Uh, walk down here is sitting next to Gerd, as always, discussing something, looking at the car. They are no doubt making some changes to it for the next round. As they are working through the car. Jorn, um TQ in round number two. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Car must have been, uh, well, did you, did you actually end up changing anything for the second round or was it the same as the first round? No, it was the same as the first round, just new tyres and I, I drove much better. You drove better and that was the key. Um, what have you learned from driving better? Is there anything now you do want to change going into the third round of qualifying? Yeah, I'm looking for a little bit more steering in the 180 turns, but other than that, the car is good. So uh, just a few small tweaks, I guess, and just try and get more seeing those really tight corners. Um, but in terms of the buggy jumping through the air, it seems to be jumping really flat, really easy to jump at the moment. That must help you quite a lot. Yeah, if you if you land it like after the triple, especially perfectly, then it's fine. But if you over jump a little bit, then you need more steering. So it's to find a good balance is the key, I think. So talking to Gerd now, trying to figure out what changes you're going to make. Um, so it uh, looks like you've got the differential apart there, so I guess that's some changes. It's from Olofsky. He asked for help. That's why he made the new differential. Uh, okay, so not a change for, for you then. So uh, you get, what sort of changes are you going to make? Is it going to be to the to the shock setup or just to uh, some geometry or something? We still discuss. We don't know yet. <laughs> okay, well, I'll let you get back to discussing that. And uh, good luck in round number three. Okay, thank you. Yeah, your Norman was fastest in round two of qualifying as we're about to get round three underway. We'll kick off with group number seven. Uh, I don't know if James is talking at the moment or if he's uh, thinking of talking. No, he's not. You can do if you want to. Okay, I'll talk. Apologies for these uh, intermittent audio issues that we're having. I've got a dodgy wire uh, and no way of buying or getting a new one, unfortunately. Right. Uh, luckily, uh, Andrew was commenting on the riveting stuff. It was more towards the pig trotters. He didn't ah. say completely towards the pig trotters, just more towards them. More towards them. Uh, which I'm, I'm happy with. Yeah, that's fine. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Hal Larsey. By the way, I'd like to hear about Renault Savoia's new centre diff, which is on the XP4. Did we cover that earlier? Yep, we did indeed. We did indeed talk to uh, Martin Bayer and looked at Renault's car and Martin's car. Interesting to see Martin not running the centre diff, and Renault is running the centre diff. So scroll back through the uh, the archive, and it was during um, our kind of lunchtime-ish pit walk. I give me one second. I've actually managed to find the. Find the, the bit. Hang on. I just need to. Here we go. Hang on. I think. Oh. My apologies. I just found out that you can't put. You can't put links in the comments. I was just about to put that there. Uh, I can tell you though. Track is open. It'll be on our Facebook group very oh, shortly. It's in seconds. 12,610 seconds, not that that helps. Oh, I'll, brilliant. I'll put that up. Um, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? Ryan Bridgewater, can you give a shout out to everyone from Frankly Model Car Club? And everyone racing in a TMSC. You just have. You just have. Hello. Good luck to anyone racing in a TMSC. And hello to Frankly Model Car Club. Sean Taylor. 
in an on-road race, what's better for winning... T- oh, I see. There's a comma missing. On, in an on-road race, what's better for winning? Two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive? If you want to watch more on-road racing, check out the, l- the large-scale stuff over on our sister YouTube channel. And uh, you can see the uh, large-scale guys in action there with the on-road racing. Maybe ask them. They can, uh, they can have a walk around the on-road pits and see what people say there. I don't think one's better than the other one. I think they're just different styles, different classes. Um, four-wheel drive is going to have more grip and get more power down. And I guess a two-wheel drive is going to be a bit more tail-happy. I don't know. I don't think you can really say one is better. It's personal preference. Um, Andrew Salvaghi, during the, sec- during the next round of qualifying... Is it possible to get a different angle of the second double? The way some are whipping onto the downslope seems to be getting a lot unstuck. Another angle would be nice. So the second, where is he asking? The second, second double. Uh, we are a bit limited, Andrew, on power and length of cables, unfortunately. As amazing as these venues are, uh, the one thing that hasn't been so great is the amount of power extensions available but we have we have borrowed about 17 cables from the from the organizer so i can't complain um where do you think they mean uh um, andy maybe you can let us know whether do you mean the joke concept jump um, i think i know what he means. means tv double i'll go, in the and, I'll go and change so it i don't think he means the durango double on the left hand side but then whether the tv double is the one he means which is the second the second one is they would go round the circuit or if it means the J Concepts jump, the second one in a in the double double section, I don't know. I would have said we've got a pretty good shot of the uh, the down slope on the TV jump, so it probably means the J Concepts jump. But I would want to clarify that before we go and move any cameras, if we can, in fact, if cover we that, can. because I don't think we can probably move many cameras that much further that way. <laughs> Plus, cameras always look better when when cars are coming towards you, not away from you. So you have to bear that in mind when placing them as well. I'll be back in two minutes. Where are you going? Little boys' room. So we're currently looking at group seven, practice three, practice round three. And don't forget, I'd like to thank EFRA, EFRA.WS, the governing body behind these races. Thanks to Team Durango with the DEX 410V2. Thank you to VRC Pro. And thank you to jconcepts.net. Without them, we wouldn't be here today to bring you all the action from Trelleborg in Sweden. For those of you just joining us, you may notice we are indoors and we are in an ice hockey rink which has been converted but only until I think Saturday night, Sunday morning when they rip it all up as it has been here for two months. They've had their fun with it but the uh, ice hockey team have asked for the rink back. You'll be pleased to know from my dribble that Ollie is back. How did that go? That was very nice, thank you. Excellent. I've just what? mentioned sponsors, so don't worry about that. What have I missed? Not a lot, really. Thank 
that would be qualifying. So, right. kicking off uh, round number three of qualifying now. Thank and you, uh, it's group seven to start this one up. Sorry to interrupt you there. It's okay. Um, you're out in front. Alexander is second. Kim well, is third. All those guys on for 16 lap runs. Good way to start this round. Now, James, I do need to do some more podcasting at some point. Yes. So, what would you like me to do? I don't know. I can do it in short bursts if you want. Can you commentate and do a podcast at the can same I time? Contact? No, I can't. No. Mm. Annoyingly. Are you talking to drivers? I'll be talking to some drivers, yeah. We got 30 seconds to go in this one. Someone else, Canon Lens Watch. Pardon? Canon Lens Watch, someone else has got the. Oh, someone has got a nice big camera. This one's got the lens that I've been drooling over. I don't know if it's the actual one. Yeah. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Where film's that from? Pardon? There are many like it, but this one is mine. What film's that from? Oh, is it a film? Yes. Uh, films aren't my thing. Hmm. I shall list my films that we often discuss in order. Um, and uh, you can see if it falls into one of these categories. Um, obviously, you don't include Die Hard in your list of favourite films because it's not, it doesn't count as a favourite film, it's just a lifestyle. Okay. So, it's just a given that Die Hard is... It's not just the best film ever made, it's just the best thing ever made. Fair enough. Um, Does anyone um, on the YouTube stream recognise that line? There are many like it, but this one is mine. I don't think it's from any of my other favourite films. I doubt this one is a favourite film of yours. Um, which means it's not going to be from Pirates of the Caribbean, nope. Speed 2, nope. Mean Girls, nope. Legally Blonde, Easy. No. Nope. Devil Wears Prada, E.T. No, no. What kind of films? Mean Girls? Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, what rating is it? It is PG. Oh, okay. Um... Other favourite films of mine, Star Wars. Jarhead, close. <laughs> Jarhead is close. Jarhead is close. You're on the right ilk, but the wrong film. Um, I, I know what Jarhead is, I've not seen it. It's so bomb, No, it's not Bond Disposal, is it? Or, or is it? It's, uh, it's like roadside stuff. In What's that Jarhead? What's the, oh. It's like a war film, though, isn't it? It is a war film. Yes. Um, Thomas Tanner. Full metal jacket, correct. Yeah, never seen that. You get one James point. That's all I can offer you, I'm afraid. One James point. How many James points do I have? None. None. Is it a James, is, James point? Uh, 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 is this is this like? Is this like? And this is gonna. This might take you back and see. It, and it's gonna be a massive plug for another broadcaster, unfortunately. But I don't know if anyone. And this is gonna be massively. This is a completely British reference. Anyone listening abroad, I'm very sorry. Um, there might be British people living abroad. They might be. Uh, do you remember Scott Mills points? Yes. Yes. And then often when Sarah Cox would cover for Scott Mills, she would give away millions of Scott Mills points. <laughs> no, I didn't know. <laughs> so that. when you disappear off the mic, am I going to give away loads of James points? <laughs> no, don't ruin no. my scoring system. <laughs> the scoring system consists of one person having one point. So what's the home team for the ice rink? I don't know. The home team for the ice rink are the Vikings. Is it? It's a good guess then, isn't it? I thought that would be more of a Norwegian thing. Uh, Mickey asked for Metal Jacket, correct. Bex, Bex Terminator for Metal Jacket, correct. That's three. All of you, Mickey asked Bex Terminator and Thomas Tanner all have one James point. Good stuff. I know it's the Vikings because there was a picture of someone up there with Vikings quite clearly on their top. Over there. Where? Yeah, on the wall. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the ice hockey player. A bison? A bison? Yes. Oh, you're very loud in my ear. What Pardon? There we go. Turn it down a bit. Is, is what? It's a person. It's a, 
It's a picture of a person. Are you getting excited? Why have you gone loud all of a sudden? Because you're just being stupid. I'm not being stupid. There's a bison on there. There's not a bison on there. It's a person. If I had a cameraman, I could show it looks like a bison from afar. It's a person wearing an ice hockey uniform. It's not a cow-like creature, is it? Uh, Lyrics Dish has gone. I think this deserves five James points. Yeah, you can have five James points. This is my rifle. rifle. There are many like it, but this one is mine. My rifle is my best friend. It's my life. I must master it. And I must master my life. My rifle without me is useless. Such a good film. Okay. If anyone's put any quotes from Mean Girls on there, I will pick them up straight away. Mean Girls. Don't Google it. Is it, a, is it a film about some girls that are like not very nice to each other? Basically, yes. If I get bounced off Swedish firewalls here, I'm going to be very upset. Oh, what? There's lots of pink. On Wednesdays, we wear pink. So, Ollie's favourite theme, film here from 2004, Mean Girls. Um, it's, I'm glad this is not my favourite. This is just a conversation starter. I don't Katie Heron is a hit with the plastics. An A-list girl... Click? Cliche? Click. Click. At her new school until she makes the mistake of falling for Aaron Samuels, the ex-boyfriend of Alpha Plastic Regina George. What the actual? <laughs> Start Lindsay Lohan. Mother of word. <laughs> what? Have you not seen? You wait till no, your kids no, get a bit older. No. It's what? No. My children <laughs> will be educated not to like such films like that. I'm sure it's a very well directed film. It's not for women. It's not young girls. It's not. Not grown men. <laughs> Neither of those categories do I fall into. What Ollie did in his uni days is a mystery. Often to me as well. <laughs> uh, no, that's just a that's a typical answer I give. If anyone asks me what my favourite film is, because it makes me go, yeah, meh, yeah. what, really? No, no. my favourite film of all time, as we've discussed a number of times this week, is still Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes, it's very good. I like Shawshank Redemption. Not seen it. Uh, what group are we on? Eight. Group eight qualifying round three on Fast Friday. We are a cameraman down at the moment, so we will be having moving camera again soon for some of the higher groups. We will. Our apologies for that. We've been we've been plagued with illness in the RCTV team. I'd like to add, it is rather warm in here, so um. Rather warm. Rather warm indeed. Um. Should change our should change rifle with RC car. <laughs> this is my RC car. There are many like it, but this one is mine. My RC car is my best friend. It is my life. I must master it, as I must master my life. My RC car without me is useless. That works. That works pretty well. I think Phil's going to steal that idea for a, for, an, for a neo boogie article. Are there any great quotes from RC racers? There are many from Stu Noble. I <laughs> think of one. Well, now you've said that, you're going to have to tell everyone what it is. It's <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> so in Italy. <laughs> we'll say no more on that. It's still in, in Italy. in Italy. Yes, we're not saying any more on that matter. Wow. Wow. 30 seconds left, drivers. Any other great quotes from RC drivers? Um, I do remember interviewing someone, and I cannot, I'm trying to think what it is, I'm trying to put this all into context now. I'd interviewed someone who just TQ'd a round of the Euros, and it was the first time I TQ'd around, I asked them how they felt, and they went, yeah, it's all right. And a very like, oh. meh. Oh well, what's a what's a breakfast? Meh. One of those. Meh. Yep, one of them. One of them. Meh. As we see, Kev Lee taking this one on a 17 lap run, 17 in 516. Do some RC stuff for a bit. Very quick one. 
Larry was second. Miko, then Marcus, Neil, Bartek. Famous Bartek. So, how does that stack up so far here at the 2014 four-wheel drive off-road European Championships? We are brought to you by Team Durango and the DEX 410 V4, by VRC Pro and by J Concepts. Don't forget, you can enter our Schumacher competition on our Facebook group. Group number nine is next. Group number nine. So, group nine is up now. Trying to give you as much warm up time as possible. What was that song? Engine, engine number nine. All the New York trams in line. If my tram falls off the track, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Do, 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 do. No one else, please. No one else. No? Okay. Um, hmm. I, I, something I was going to say, which I won't. There's another, there's an, interesting, that, that song does take me on to a very interesting story, which is not at all appropriate to broadcast on the air. <laughs> what? Does take... Okay. How does that story get to a non? How does that song get to a non-broadcastable story? I'm trying I to think. Of the, I, what? We need to discuss later. Open a new tab on here. Oh no! This, is, have to be really, this, this is, is an inside joke, isn't it? Because we're not going to be able to broadcast this. Of course, it is. Yes, uh, but it's our inside jokes. So it's fine. Okay. Okay, we're typing something into YouTube. Yeah, don't, don't read anything of this out. I think... I'm not. Plug your headphones in to that one. Then I won't be able to hear you. You won't. But I think it's... I think it's... That one. Oh, there's an advert first, obviously. Group number nine, on the track. The, uh, Actually, the advert is in Swedish as well, because okay. it's picked up where we are. Zach Gabrias with a quicker cell map. Yeah, I think, I think this is right. Um, I believe this song has that quote in it. It uses a sample. What you, what the song you're singing is a sample in this, in this track. Yes, and this person came to play at our university once, and an interesting incident occurred. An interesting incident occurred. Okay, I'll, I'll ask you about that incident That's later. That's a conversation then. much later on. What? The mind boggles. The mind boggles indeed. So you could say that Ollie's got a scoop on Fat Man's scoop. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yes. Moving on. <laughs> yes. Moving on. Moving on swiftly. Has anyone's car, car caught fire like in your last competition? What competitions are those? I've no idea. No. I've no idea what you even mean by that, I'm afraid, Sean. Uh, has anyone's called? Don't know. What heat are we on now? I will tell you by clicking a few buttons. And I can tell you we are on group number nine, round three of qualifying here at 2014. Four wheel drive European Championships from Trelleborg in sunny, sunny Sweden. So, 117 lap run going on here for Carl, Lo Yo Carl Johan Svensson. Everybody else is on for a 16 lapper.
please keep interacting with us as we go through the rest of today. Don't forget to stay with us all the way after the uh, the last. Well, after we go through these heats, we'll have heats one through to six as well. Uh, just seen a very interesting thing. Oh, you've got, head, you've got headphones plugged in somewhere else. You can't even hear what I'm saying. James can't hear me, but I'd like to say hello to Andrew in South Yarra, Australia. South Yarra. No, that's not where I thought you were. Sorry, I thought I may have been nearby, but I haven't. Uh, RCTV set up while in hospital, keeping me busy at 1 a.m. in Australia. Uh, sorry to hear you in hospital. Hope you get better soon, and hopefully we're making you better. Because, well, I'm sure our exciting chat is making you better. And if not, why not? Comment on the uh, Facebook stream as well. Uh, Facebook? Oh God. Comment on the YouTube stream. So we come up to the point where we can say one minute to go, drivers. One minute left in in Carl Johan's heat. Yeah, Carl Johan's heat number nine, leading this one on for a fast 16. Sylvain running second on for a four. Pavel on for a five. Yussi also on for a four. 55 seconds to go, 45 seconds to go. Someone says audio gone quiet. Sounds dropped. Can you hit me? You could just about... Oh, it has gone a bit quiet, hasn't it? Let me just try turning this up a little bit there. Can you hear me better? Oh, it's all on one side again. I wonder why this has moved. Sorry, that's better. That sort of... What? Oh, no, no. This one here, is that better? That, let's have a bit more lead on that one there. Oh, that's not helped either. One, two, is that... Oh, 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 I was going to just help this one better if I'm talking while I'm trying to adjust the levels. And you should hear us back now again. Sorry about that. Uh, where are we? What have you missed? We have missed nothing at all. You have, you have missed nothing. We were talking rubbish as usual, but the important stuff is group number nine on the track now finishing. Carl Johan Spenson taking this one. 16 5 flat. Sylvan 16 503. UC 7, uh, 16 503. Alexis 507. Pavel 507. George 509. Waiting for Zacharias to come through to finish with a 16 lapper in 517. Marcus only with 15. That is nine done. Next up is number ten. Up next, group number ten. Um, so, what else is going on around the world? Oh, we've got another camera there. And we'll switch to the other camera as well. So, there's a third camera. Ooh. Ooh, look at them jump. I think a marshal is going to stand right in front of that one, though. Do you think the organisers would mind putting Heat 14 on next? I'm leaving work at half past. No, it's not how it works. You run through the heats in order. We shuffle the heats for each round. So up next is going to be group number 10, round three of qualifying. They run through, this round is running through from 7 up to 14, and then 1 through to 6. So group 14 is out in probably, what's this, 11, did I say 11 starting now? 10 starting now. 10 starting now. Uh, we are running about 10 minutes behind schedule. No, we're not, we're running about 11, 12 minutes behind schedule. So group 14, if you're looking for it, will be on at 17.50, 55-ish, that sort of time. So uh, not too much longer to wait. Within the hour, you will see the top guys out. If you leave, 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 why not stay at work a bit longer, do some extra work, and uh, yeah. Stay, stay at work, do some more work, and uh, enjoy the racing as well. That would be my plan. Look good, wouldn't it? Boss would be pleased.
if Stu Noble was here, I would show him this picture I've just found of a car, and he would go, wow. Never matter. Never matter. So, here we go. Oh, James Parry has shared the link for Jasper Rasmussen's fan page on Facebook, which has already which has got 20 likes now. 20 likes. Group if you like Jesper Rasmussen, you want to cheer him on, just he's got a fan page on Facebook. Just search for Jesper Rasmussen or go to facebook.com slash Jesper Rasmussen RC. The internet's favourite RC driver. Yep, stay at work longer on a Friday. Why not? It's only half four in the UK, assuming you're in the UK. If you're in the Europe, it's half five. Have a drink in the office. It works. Or, what you could always do, if you're going to leave the office, watch us on your phone. You can watch us on your iPhone or Android-powered phone, any smartphone or tablet. Take us with you. Such is the power of YouTube. You can watch us anywhere you like, pretty much. Unless you're under the sea, probably can't watch us there. Or in a tunnel. If you are watching us from a tunnel, Three let us know. And which tunnel? Three, Simon Moss. Orange so Nine here Nine we Nine go. Nine. Group number 10. Nine. Five laps down, one minute and 30 Nine. seconds of racing in. Peter Forster from Simon Zeller, Nine. Oliver Spaeth, Simon Nine. Moss jumping to the top Nine. now. Nine. On for a 17.506. Peter Van is second, Simon is third, Oliver is fourth, Christopher in fifth, and Luca is sixth. Here comes Simon. Two minutes down, three minutes left. Simon is looking at doing 17 in a nine. 17 lap runs going on for Simon Moss, Peter Forster, Simon Zeller, also Oliver Spaeth, and Christopher Nicholson. Simon Moss, Peter Zeller, and Oliver all on 17 lap pace. So this is group number 10 in the third round of qualifying. The last qualifier for these guys today. Don't forget we go up to 14, then back down one through to six. Stay with us all throughout today because we are then going to have a quick wrap-up show at the very end of today as well. Very quick wrap-up show. Well, I'll just read out who the top 10 is. And I might podcast a bit during one to six. That would be ideal, to be honest. Uh, so you can see all the action. James can talk you through some of it. And uh, we'll see what's going on. James, how's our, uh, how are our viewing figures looking? I wasn't plugged into the, to the soundboard. Oh, how are our viewing figures doing? Oh, very well, thank you, yeah. Excellent stuff there. It is, of course. So, wherever you're watching, we know we've got lots of fans from all around the world. Thank you to everyone, wherever you are tuning in to watch this. The 2014 four-wheel drive off-road European Championships. And, uh, sorry, a little advert break coming up now. We are brought to you by Team Durango and the DEX 410 V4, VRC Pro, J Concept, and of course, EFRA. Now, simple head break. Simple, isn't it? We're doing this all for free for you, thanks to companies like them. So please do support them because they make all this possible for us. So, out on track with one minute and a little bit to go. Simon Moss leads it. Peter Forster second. Christopher Nicholson in third. 17 laps only on the board now for Simon Moss as we come into the final minute of the race. This is group number 10, round three of qualifying. And we are... Oh, my sound goes a bit funny. As James plugs himself in so he can listen to what I'm saying, so I have to be nice again and polite. Uh, it's a battle between Christopher and Simon. No, an issue for Simon Moss there. I don't know what's happened. Simon Moss looks like he's out of this one. So it's now going to be all oh, trains at the top. Marcus Lind, Christopher Nicholson, Marcus Lind, Peter Forster, Oliver Spice. That is your top four. 17 more runs for Christopher Nicholson at the moment. Come on, Ollie, you can make it into the B finals. I am not racing. I'd like to just say to John Coleman. Do you think the organisers are going to put them on the I've done that. Are you going to call it John Coleman? Yeah, I've done that. Okay. 
well on top of all the ways you can stay up to date with what's going on. And don't forget, you can also check out the RC Racing TV Facebook page. And if you miss it all, you can watch it back on the archive whenever you want. I apologise for my conduct. That's quite all right. I will let you off. And we've got a 685 appear on the screen. So hello to you, 685. That's a transponder number. Someone still hasn't registered. Trans oh, no, someone's gone out too early for the next round. See, what James just does there is he taps me on the shoulder, points at the camera, and then walks off. So I'm guessing that means he's going up onto the camera. So we'll get some moving camera as we go through 11, 12, 13, and 14, which are the fast guys in this round. After that, it'll be one, two, three, and four. As I find it time for another generic mint. So we are about to get underway with the next group of on and track action, which is Group 11, as they get ready for their next qualifying run. Track nice and empty at the moment, and they are gridded up and ready to go. Uh, just wait for a few people to clear the track and we should be ready to go racing here. We are almost ready to rock here with. This group, and off we go. Ben Jemison, the number five buggy, leads them off. Taking us round for lap number one. The yellow and blue of Ben leads them out into group 11. Round number three of qualifying here on Fast Friday from Trelleborg in Sweden at, at the four-wheel drive off-road European Championships. It's the British driver who we are watching at the moment. A first lap of an 18-2. Solid lap, but he's going to need to pick the pace up if he wants to uh, get one of those top placings. He's got a shot at making it into the B or the C main. We think probably he's a solid C main driver. We might make it into the B. But after one lap, it's going to be Nicholas Manson who leads, followed by Wesley Van Helmen, Henry Salmon. Ben is fourth after two laps of racing. A few mistakes from some cars behind, though. So our leader now, car number three, Nicholas Manson, who is going to be coming over the Durango double. Not quite yet, unless I just missed him go through. Let's pick up Wesley Van Helmen, who takes over the lead, who goes over the TV jump, then the J Concepts jump. Now lands a bit funny on the end, end of the J Concepts jump. Up onto the tabletop, over the VRC roller, and down the main straight he goes. This is Group 11 qualifying round number three. One minute and 30 seconds down, three and a half to go in this one. Henry, Wesley, Carlos, Philip, Nicholas, Ben, Frederick, Frederick and Florence. That was the running order last time by 17 lap runs for the first three people going on. So the running order is now Wesley to the lead once again, the number four car. Wesley is going to be coming round in front of our camera position now. The uh, light yellow and blue car turning right over the triples he goes. Just clearing the triples then onto the TV jump. The J Concepts jump is next. Then the flat bit up onto the tabletop. Let's another car up the inside there, over the roller and down the back straight.
Ben Jemison's got himself back to third. So the order is Wesley, Henry, Ben, Carlos, Frederick, Nicholas, Philip, Frederick, and Florence. We have got half the distance to go. Two and a half down, two and a half to go. Wesley, Henry, Ben, Carlos, Nicholas, Frederick, Philip, Frederick, and Florence. As there is a car upside down in the middle. Who is it? It's going to be, was that our leader? It may have been, I can't see the numbers. No, it was not. It wasn't that it looked like. It may have been Carlos who was upside down. Our leader, Wesley Van Helman, keeps going. Henry Salmon is second. Two minutes left in this one. Two minutes to go. Let's pick up Ben Jemison as he moves to the two spot now. Going to come over the TV jump. Then the J Concepts jump. Through the flat bit. Onto the tabletop he goes. Off the tabletop. VRC roller. Down the main straight. And then over the Durango double. So Wesley back to the point, Ben to second, Henry is third, Frederick is fourth as we have just over one minute of racing left here in group 11, round three of qualifying at the 2014 four-wheel drive off-road Euros brought to you by Team Durango, the DEX 410 V4, VRC Pro and J Concepts and of course thanks to Efra as well. Wesley Van Helm and Ben Jemison battling for the lead in this heat. They are both on 17 lap runs. Nobody else is on for a 17 lapper at the moment. Don't forget, we've seen a couple of 18s being popped in by the drivers at the top of the timesheets in the first two rounds. Lee Martin took round one and Jorn Neumann took round two. These guys are looking at a C final pace at the moment. I think that's kind of where this might end up putting them. As Ben goes a bit sideways, lets our leader go through. But then our leader makes a mistake, which catches Ben on the slide. But they both get away with it, live to fight another day as we are running out of time here. 20 seconds left. This might be the final lap. Are they going to make it on to the 17th lap? That incident is going to have cost them some time. So they go over the jumps in the middle of the track now. Onto the tabletop. Ben going to come out. Ben run an extra lap. Yes, he does make it onto lap number 17. Wesley also make it onto lap 17. They are split by about one and a half seconds. It looks like this heat is going to go to Wesley. Unless he makes a mistake, Ben rolls it. Ben spins it as they come uh, off the TV double. Over the line, they're going to go to complete this run. Who is it going to be? Wesley Van Helman takes his one, 17 in a 5.10. Ben Jemison, 17, 5.14. Henry Salmon, 5.15. Frederick Hovgaard, 17 laps in a 5.18. Everyone else was 16. Carlos, Florent, Nicholas, Frederick and Philip. That is group 11 done. Next up, group 12. Okay, we are about to get underway with group number 12. So drivers bring their cars out now for group number 12. As we have a very interesting shot of a marshal, marshal's bottom on camera number three. That's uh, Wesley Van Helman there, so we'll move that camera shot back and wait till he moves to his actual marshalling position. But this is round three of qualifying, the final round of qualifying for today. Don't forget, we're going through to 14 and then back one through to six. As we get ready, as there's a car that is crashed at the J Concepts jump. Nobody at that corner there. This is fun, I can switch between cameras. So we can now not look at what James is filming for a bit. That's nice. 
So, ready to roll with this one. And it's going to be Tom Cockrell, Otto Elstock, Stephen Fogel, Hamaku, then Jesper, Sanjo, Ellis, Oscar, and Martin. Tom Cockrell leads them off. This is driver for Team Schumacher running the Pat K1 Aero. Don't forget, if you want to win one of those buggies, you can do the competition running on our Facebook group at the moment. As he rolls it, coming off of the triple jump on lap number two, Tom is sitting eighth overall after two rounds of qualifying with two ninth places. He will need to improve those in order to stay in the top ten, we think. But straightaway is getting back past that Here other car. That is the car of, I believe, Otto Olsfeldt. He's nipped back past again. So the running order is going to be Otto, followed by Ellis, Stefan, Jesper. Tom is behind that, I think, as they all drop down the order. Reshuffled around on lap number three. Who will it be at the top? Stefan Feifel for Ellis Stafford, Jesper Rasmussen. Let's pick out Ellis Stafford running in the second spot. Car number three. As Ellis comes around in front of our camera position, white, orange and blue, turning right, over the triple he goes. Then the TV double, then the J-Concepts jump. Ellis Stafford running a next second place at the moment. I think yes he is. Cockles back to third. Jesper's into fourth. The Intex favourite driver into fourth in this one. We are two minutes down, three minutes left. Stefan followed by now showing Tom, Jesper and Ellis. Let's pick up Jesper running in position number three. Goes over the TV double. Up onto the hill. Round the hairpin. Off over the roller. Down the main throat. As you avoid the very weirdly jumping Otto Elstock there. And uh, gets a cut at the beginning of the day back marker there. So that's going to all mean that Tom Cockrell goes back to the top of the pile. Ellis Stafford is moving up to second. There's a five off that we've said. Let's see if I can get Stefan for you. Car number nine. I think I see him over at the Ellis. the white and blue turning right. Then over the triple now. Through the uh, first infield, over the TV double. Then the big concept jump. Round the flat bit, up onto the tabletop. Off the tabletop, over the roller down and then straight. Stephen Five popper into the three spot, four spot, five spot now for Stephen. Every time we come back from there, I'll drop him down the order. It's Cockrell out in front, a British 1 2 with Ellis Stafford behind him. Mark Keaton Sinners is third, then the Austrian, Martin Trail, Danish driver, Jesper Rasmus, and Austrian 7 5 Otto Okay, Ulster, Eskola, Veen, Bolton, Sweden, and Sandro Bernhardt from Switzerland. Tom Cockrell, though, the race leader. Car number two. Red and white in front of James now, turning right over the triple E goes, landing that one. Then it's time for the TV double. The day concepts jump comes out very quickly next. Through the flat bit onto the corner tabletop he goes. Over the VRC roller, down the main straight. Half the field, six drives in fact now, on to 17 lap runs. Cockrell, Stanford, Red Newton, Honkin and Creole, Firehofer and Levine. No, Levine's now got off of 17 lap pace. So Cockrell leads his 17.503. Very, very impressive run for Cockrell if he keeps his pace up. Ellis Stafford on for a 10. Jesper on for an 11. Marku on for an 11. Crail 13. Fifafa 18. Uh, Levine is on for 17. The other guy's on for 16. As Levine makes a bit of a mistake in front of 
Cockrell but manages to recover. That's not an issue for Cockrell at the moment as time is running down. 35 seconds to go. Cockrell makes a big mistake landing off the TV double. That slows him over the J concept jump as well. He has to single, single that. Is he going to make it onto the extra lap? Let's have a check on the lap times. How is it going to end up? Cockrell losing some time there. He loses three seconds on that lap. He hangs on to the lead just from Elias Stafford. Time is running out. This is the final lap for everyone at the moment. When they get to the line, they will be done. Who will it be? Tom Cockrell taking this one. 17 laps, 5.06. Waiting for a few more cars to come around to finish. Ellis is done, 5.08. Jesper, 5.13. Good run for the internet's favourite driver. Marku, 5.13 as well. Losing out to Jesper by three tenths. Levine with a 5.16. Martin Krell, the only other driver to make six, 17 laps in that one. Cockrell hangs on to that one. 17.505. Next up, number 13. It's like the B heat. Thomas Tanner, are they running on control tyres? Yes, everyone is using J Concepts tyres here. It is open inserts. No traction compound is allowed. Traction compound is specifically banned. If you need traction compound, go and race on road. So next up, group 13 for their last qualifier of the day. Someone's car seems to have been taken back to the pit to have some work done on it. That looks like Miguel Matthias' car being rushed back into the pit there by one of his mechanics uh, to have some modifications done. Looks like some scissors coming out, trimming something. I don't quite know what. But we are now into the start procedure, so I don't know if he's going to get to the grid in time. And if he is, he might have to start last. They are sprinting around the far side of the track. He gets through to the track. He is going to have to start last. So Miguel Matar should have led that one, but unfortunately going to have to start last in this one. Here we go then. So, group 13. Let's get rolling. Miguel Matar should have been off first. But because of being late, but he's late to the grid there, so he has to start last in this one. Here we go. Hey, Bert. Miguel Matthias should have been the first car off, but having to start last, going to have to work his way through the traffic now to show his speed. We've got a lot of people to keep our eyes on in this one. Let's get them two laps down and we'll give you some lap times as we get everyone up to speed. Group number 13, round three of qualifying here at the 2014 four-wheel drive off-road Euros brought to you by Team Durango and the DEX 410 V4, VRC Pro and J Concepts. Thank you to all of them for making this happen and also thank you to Efra for having us here. And as we get two laps in, the running order will be Christopher Svensson in the six out in front, that bright orange buggy. We are following him now over the triple he goes, privately entered HBD413 over the J Concepts jump. Onto the tabletop, off the tabletop, down the main straight, he goes. Second spot is Olovsky, third pot, spot is Strom. Then Savoya, Hattonen, Nikolaisen, Matthias, Kobovic and Pinnish. One minute quickly down, four long minutes to go. As we've got a problem for Svensson, looks like a broken shock on that number six buggy. He is out of this one. Is that a broken, yeah, is a broken shock or shock just come off? Maybe a nut missing or a screw broken there. 
Bad luck for Christopher Svensson. We're going to see him plummet down the order. You can watch it on the screen next to it as his name drops all the way to the bottom of the chart, which means we have a new leader. Car number three, Michael Olofsky, clears the triples, goes left over the double, and then the J Concepts jump. Red and white car with the yellow front wheels and white rear wheels. Needs to look some new wheels next year, I think. Those colours don't really work in that order. Over the Durango double, the Team Durango driver with the DEX 410 V4. Over the triple, he goes. Through the TV double, all a bit sideways on landing, and then that puts him very offline for the J Concepts jump. And that's all going to mean we have a new leader in this heat once again. So we will go back to the tabletop jump as Una Hassan comes round. Over the roller, he goes. Down the back straight, over the... Durango double in front of our camera position now. Car number one, Yuna Hatton, the young Finnish superstar, once again leads this heat. Over the J Concepts jump he goes. Round the flat stuff, up onto the tabletop, off the tabletop, over the roller, down the main straight. Hatton now leading. Orlovsky showing in second at the moment. Well, that might change as we go through this one. Halfway there, two and a half down, two and a half to go. It's a battle between Olovsky, Strom and Hattonen for the lead. We are watching Hattonen at the moment. Let us pick up our new potential leader as we have a problem for Daniel Kobovic as well. Kobovic looks to be out of this one. Rolled upside down in the uh, infield section. Coming on to the straight. That stranded dead car of... We've got, in fact, we've got another pile-up going through the double-doubles. There's Daniel Kobovic. Upside down, not going to get a good score in this one. Hatton into the lead again. Let's check the running order as they come through to complete another lap. It's going to be Orlovsky, Hatton, and then Niklaisson. As Miguel Matthias gets caught up in some back markers there, that's the issue you have with uh, missing the start, having to start right down the grid. As uh, oh, our two of our leaders make some mistakes, Pinish in front of Hatton and two team associated drivers. Over the roller they go, down the back straight. Pinish is just in front of him, about to be lapped by the young Finnish upstart. He lets him go nice and cleanly. Excellent driving there from the former European champion, who's now uh, being, I guess, overshadowed by his younger teammates here at the European Championships in 2014. Michael Orlovsky now showing as the leader once again. Una Hassan battling with him for the lead and Petri Strom. We have got about 35 seconds left in this one. So this is a battle. Let's pick up our new leader. Orlovsky goes over the J Concepts jump, through the flat bits, the red and white buggy up onto the hill, off the hill, over the roller he goes, onto the back straight. He comes round here. He's in front of the Durango double, in front of James now, turning right over the triples. Team Durango driver out to the lead. It is super, super close between the top four drivers. They are all looking at 17 laps. Who is it going to be in this one? This is group 13. We've got one more bunch of fast guys to go. 17 lap runs going to hear from most of these. 17 in three for Orlovsky. 17 in four for Hatton at the moment. This is some seriously quick, quick runs for these drivers. Off the tabletop. On to lap 16, 17. Has Orlovsky made the extra? Yes, he has. Orlovsky finishes with a 17.503 to take the win. Hatton in second, 5.04. Strom, 5.07. So a 5.03 there. For Orlovsky in that one. As uh, someone very important has just walked into the commentary box. Stu, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm like a 9 out of 10. No. 9 out of 10. So that is a ne that's nearly a thumbs up. Yeah, it's getting there. All good. You've had a nice nap then, haven't you? Yeah, I've had a little sleep. Good stuff. Right, you're just in time for the big boys. Not necessarily in terms of height or weight, but uh, in terms of skill. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> you're going to go and photograph them, aren't you? Yeah, sure. You know what you've missed? Bear watch. You haven't, but let's do one now. He's on the track. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> You've missed this. Hey, Bert. <laughs> we are all big Sesame Street fans here. Don't worry. So, a 17... Oh, I could stand on the table. I just realised that. I could stand on the table, but I won't. 
No, there's lots of important computer equipment there. Don't stand on the table. Don't be stupid. Hello to everyone watching on the YouTube stream or on Facebook. I'm not going to look at that now because we've got the more important matter of the top heat guys on the circuit at the moment. 17 laps, 5.03 from Michael Orlovsky in that last one. I saw the crowd congratulating young Malin, who is uh, nine years old today, and giving it up to race at the European Championships. And uh, oh, what's this? We've got a box of a box of uh, looks like little cakes and some balloons. And I'm sure she, she's sitting about I don't know forty fifth in the meeting or something. Yes, uh, I mean in the tour drive event, of course, she raced Ellis Stafford in the final former European champion. Uh, to be fair, Ellis didn't have a great two-wheel drive event, but that's uh, still a good result. So Stu's going to take some photos of her, no doubt. Okay, this is uh, group number 14, the top guys in this one. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, Olovsky is sitting fastest in the round with a 17.503.886. Will anyone beat it? Only one way to find out. Let's stay tuned for the next five minutes as the top heat blasts off here for the 2014 European Championships. Fast Friday, the fastest of the fast out on track now. This is surely the best track conditions we are going to get all weekend. Who is going to lay down the lap times? Let's have a look as they go around completing lap number one. In first place, it is going to be who? I can tell you it is Ronnefelk fastest followed. No, it's Bayer fastest followed by Ronnefelk, then Neumann, Lee Martin, Neil Craig, Robert Battier, Hooper Honegal, Patrick Hoffer, and Carrie Somella. So Martin Bayer, defending four wheel drive European champion, is the fastest man over on lap number one. And we asked for Bayer watch before this run, and it's paying off dividends. Martin Bayer in front of our camera position now, the orange and blue coloured car number six. Over the triple he goes. Then he's going to turn the left and then over the double, the J Concepts jump. He's got Robert Battier who is fighting for position with at the moment and that is slowing both of them down and has allowed a new leader to emerge. Lee Martin, car number four, now going to take over the lead. Lee goes through the flat bit up onto the tabletop inside of slower cars. Gets good driving there, letting him go nice and early. Not holding up either of them as they go over the Durango double. Oh, Lee gets caught up on a pipe but the car behind helpfully marshals him there. Lands it off the triple, then the TV double, then the J Concepts jump. The running order as we go part, well past the one minute mark. It's going to be Lee Martin, Jorn Neumann, then Ronnefeld, Conigal, Bayer, Craig, Battier, Hoffer, and Salmella. That's the order. We are one and a half down, three and a half to go here. Group 14, round number three of qualifying on Fast Friday from the 2014 four wheel drive European Championships. Thanks to Team Durango and the DEX 410 V4, VRC Pro, and J Concepts. And now it is a Durango. 4.10 V4 that goes to the top of the timing sheet as Jorn Neumann now moves into the lead. We'll pick up Jorn for you on the track. Jorn is going to be the buggy coming down the back straight. No, I think we're going to have a change of order again. Yes, Lee Martin to the lead. Ron Felt second. Jorn has had a slow lap there. Dropping, dropping down the order like a stone he falls down and then rolls it over again marshaled by his Polish teammate. That's going to cost him bags and bags of time. Not bags of seed, but bags of time this time. Lee Martin has got the track to himself. Lee Martin going over the triple. Can we zoom out a little bit and see all the clear track around Lee Martin? Look at that acres of space in front of him. He's got a car, let's see, one, two, about three, four seconds in front of him. And that's still the very rapid car of car number nine of Patrick Hoffer, who is not going to catch for a good few laps yet unless Patrick makes a mistake. But Lee makes the mistake, clipping the end of the triple. Hupo Honigal moves to the two spot and is closing in on Lee Martin. David Ronnefelk is third. Battier in fourth. Craig is fifth. Neumann down to sixth. Then Bayer, Hoffer and Salmella. That's the running order as we have got just two minutes left here in group 14, round number three of qualifying. And there's a few small mistakes I'm seeing further down the field. But our race leader, no mistakes for Lee. This time by, he puts in a 17.6 second lap. 
A few drivers dipping into the 16s as Honigal is the first and only driver into the 16s in this run. So we need to look at Hupo Honigal now. The blue and white and yellow coloured car through the flat bit onto the tabletop he goes. Off the tabletop, over the VRC roller, down the back straight. Hupo Honigal, former European champion. He has he says two-wheel drive is his preferred class, but he has been faster in four-wheel drive the last few years. Trying to get the job done, trying to get a TQ run in this round number three of qualifying. Let's check the gaps this time by as Honigal. My timing screen updates, and it says the gap is one tenth of a second between Lee Martin and Hupo Honigal in front. That lap is now Hupo Honigal by just one tenth of a second with a 17 1 that time by. Both Hupo is on for an 18-lap run. Lee is on for an 18-lap run. Nobody else is on for 18 laps in this one. Everybody else is looking at a 17-lap as Jorn Neumann has officially retired from this group. So no score here for Jorn in this one. Who is it going to be? Lee Martin versus Hupo Honigal. David Ronnefeld trying to get in with the mix, but he is two seconds back on our leaders at the moment. Lee Martin, they're going to be catching up with Martin Bayer next. The current European champion goes wide. Let's Lee Martin up the inside. A nice, smooth move there from Martin Bayer. Letting Lee Martin go, but gets back on the power. Trying to use Lee's pace to drag him around as they go over the Drango double. Here comes Hupo over the Drango double. It is still Hupo in the lead by about two or three tenths of a second. Lee Martin has got to get the hammer down now as he slides the buggy through the flat stuff, up and off the tabletop. Over the roller he goes as we are into the final few seconds. This is now the last lap for everyone. Hupo and Lee make the extra lap. David Ronnefeld misses the extra lap. It's a two-horse battle over the final lap. Lee Martin landing it off the double, off the second double. Up onto the tabletop he goes, off the tabletop. Lee Martin launches at the line. Here comes Hupo launching at the line now. Who is going to take this one? It is going to fall to Hupo by just one tenth of a second. 516.7 versus 516.8. Hupo Honigal taking round number three of qualifying there. Pipping Lee Martin by one tenth of a second. Behind them, Ronnefelk, 17.502. Orlovsky going to be fourth in the round with a 5.03 from the previous heat. Battier going to be in fifth with a 5.04. Hupo Honigal takes round number three here at the Euros. Lee Martin second. That's going to shake things up a bit now. So it now stands... Lee Martin and Jorn Neumann tied on points at the top with a TQ and a second. Hupo with a TQ and a third. Ron Felk a second and a third. Hatton and a third and a sixth. Battier a fifth and a fifth. Petri Strom a seventh and a ninth. Cockrell a seventh and a ninth. Matthias an eighth and a tenth. And Svensson a seventh and a twelfth making it in. Orlovsky with that fourth. Hasn't got anything to back it up just yet, but if he does, he'll be right up there. We've still got six more heats to go here in round number three of qualifying at the 2014 Four Drive European Championships. Groups one to six are the guys to run through now as the top drivers come out to Marshall. That gives me a chance just to quickly catch up with where we are in the world of social and media. If you put those two words together, you get social media. And in fact, I'm not even going to do that because Dave Church. You're going to come up and join me here. Let me turn that microphone back up for you. Yeah, I thought I'd come and join you. Stop looking at that computer. It's making my brain melt. That was a fast round then. Oh, my God. It's, it's, it's testing what little skill I have, but absolutely fantastic to Position's watch. changing every lap. It, yeah, it, it is like watching a fruit machine and watching the, <laughs> the time tumble around and try to make sense of it and look up at the track on a shorter lap, you know, a 17-second lap. You look down for a second, and then you look back up, and it's changed leads, and they're on 17-lap pace. And then I look down, and you're on your in-lap, and no, they made it through for 18 because I'm not supposed to talk when the, the computer's calling the finish times because they might miss the number and carry going, <laughs> carrying going and being in front of a car. So I stopped and looked down, and it didn't call the number. And I was like, oh. Oops. <laughs> so that was uh, two guys making it onto the 18th lap that time, Lee Martin yeah. and Hupo Honigal. Incredible. One tenth, less than one tenth of a second splitting there. Yeah. Don't get much closer than that in off-road racing at all, do we? No, it that is some tight I, stuff. I know Lee had a bit of a problem, but man, Hoopo just drove the wheels off of he that did. time, didn't he? 
It absolutely did. Uh, what I noticed there, Michael Olovsky from the previous heat, yes. he is going to end up fourth in the round, I think. Wow. And that was a bit of a scrappy heat, wasn't it? It was, yeah. You could have, you could definitely say he could have gone quicker. A yeah. couple of small mistakes, a couple of back markers and a few other cars getting in each wow. other's way there. So, <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, see, because I've not even seen this. I just had to walk away yeah. and have a little bit of no, a break. I just managed to pull it up as you were. Thank you very much. I saw very you wandering over. So uh, we're now showing you. Yawn on top with the TQ in a second. Yep. Pulled off in that one. I don't know if he broke his car or just realised that he wasn't going to get a good yeah. score. So may as well park it up and uh, save the car. Yeah, yeah, stay out of the way is also. Not risk breaking it, I guess. And have to. Well, I mean, also, it's like very much driver etiquette because if he's going around not you know, focusing on pace and he messes up someone else's run. Yep then people look down on him like he might have done it on purpose. Yeah, that's very true. So Absolutely. Uh, Lee Martin sitting second with a TQ and a second as well. Let's have a look. Let's compare their times. Uh, it's so Jordan's best time is an 18 in 12, his TQ run, and Lee's is an 18 in 16. So uh, yeah. four seconds difference. That's what it might come down to at the end. It well, might do. It did. never know. Did it? We had yeah. a tie in our two wheel, didn't we? So we did indeed, yes. Uh, although we weren't in a position where we had three different TQ runs yeah. in two wheel drive, so yeah. uh, well, it's possible with the four wheel drive now, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, is that an indication that uh, the field is closer in four wheel drive? Do you think? I do think so. Yes. I think that the, you know, with, with the four wheel traction, yep. um, more drivers are able to be more competitive. Um, Fantastic. And I guess we need to mention the defending champion, uh, Martin Bayer. He's 11th at the moment, BQ. Wow, He's gutted. got 8th, 12th, and a 14th. Yeah. Going to have to step it up tomorrow, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was quick, but I don't think he's been able to put in the consistent laps. No, I think that's what's going to, as we, we said a week, basically, it's consistency, mm. the key on this track. Uh, I suppose what jumps out at me, though, is Petri Strom there in 7th. Yeah. Because he's from, like, Heat 12 as well, isn't he? Or heat he is. 11 or something. Yeah. He's in a lower heat, so... Uh, you know, Miguel there. And Una Hattonen is not in the top heat either, sitting wow, fifth yeah, overall. Yeah. Wow. So he's... Someone said that he could only do two-wheel drive. Yeah. It's a fifth overall. I know he's... <laughs> I'm sure he's done a lot of four-wheel drive practice recently because I heard he has been practicing a lot. But from what his dad told me, at the warm-up, he yep. only raced a four-wheel drive like four times or five <laughs> times. That I was a month ago, five weeks ago. I... <sighs> I, I just don't know what to say. I mean, you've got you your slide back you coming say? through. It's just what can you say? Uh, it's, it's and then you've got the eight scale boys. I mean, I know Rana yeah. Falk, uh, <coughs> pardon me, Batier and Miguel. Wow. Yeah, three of them in the main well, at the moment. Christopher Svensson as well. He's mainly a. He's mainly one eighth. And uh, <coughs> kind of privateer, I guess, as well for Christopher. Well, I'm guessing so, as he's driving a hot bodies this weekend. Yes. And I thought he was Kyle showed all up. Yeah. But I know they couldn't get him one of the new ones. Right, so okay. So maybe he thought the other one wouldn't be as competitive as a hot body and he was just waiting for the new one. So until he gets a new car, just running that car. Uh, it is, you know, very new out, so it's difficult yes. to get the whole world filled up with them when they Absolutely only have right. a very yep. few numbers. Yep. So They're obviously going to go down their pecking order list. And uh, yeah. Ronald Felk's obviously got one, but uh, yeah. his, his pit man-ish, who's in the second well, heat now, so yeah. they can't actually pit for him and put his car <laughs> down. <laughs> But, uh, Fantastic. Swede sitting over there having good fun with this, I think. And, uh, I'll I tell you, I spoke to Jesper Rasmussen, who I'm yes. just looking at in 19th. Yep. And I said to him, Jesper, they, they absolutely adore you on the on the internet chat room. Why? He goes, don't know. <laughs> but he did have a big smile on his face. I yep. do think he likes the attention. I don't know if you've seen this or not. We found he's actually got a fan page on Facebook. Has he really? Yes, he has. It's not one you made, is it? He has got a fan page on Facebook. Excellent. Which has got quite a few members already, as we as we pointed out. Well, invite me. I'll go join as soon as I get back over there. 24 people like Jesper Rasmussen, sports person. Wow. Yeah. Look at him. He's a good-looking guy. Isn't he, he is, isn't he? It's must be some fairly recent pitch as well, because that's, uh, that's his car number from his qualifying yeah, here, yeah. isn't it? Wow. So, yeah. He's working quick here, you know. The, um, the public ask and they get, didn't they? Indeed. But, uh, yeah. Very popular guy there. And actually, we had a chat with him in the pits when we did our pit walk. And, uh, yeah. Such a nice... In fact, he was actually sitting there helping out uh, Daniel Kobovic. Was he? Yes. Wow. So, uh, you, you know, I don't know how old Jesper is, but not that old. And still no. able to help, you know, still choosing to give up his time to help out some of the people yeah. a bit younger than him. I don't think he's driving a car yet, like a real, a real live no. full-size car. So I, don't, I don't think so either. 16, maybe? Yeah. Um, you know, most of us... Well, what were you doing at 16? You weren't out, like, nearly making a final at European Championship. No, no, I don't, no, we don't think we were. No. But... Um, 
Wow. So no, I, that's I really think cool. I think that is to be that is the story of this event is just the rise of the youngsters. Yeah, absolutely. I've never it, I've really never seen anything quite like it to be honest. I don't any think, of the years I don't I've think been anybody to. has. Not maybe the odd one or two, but what do we got? Four or five here that have just yeah really pumping in some super good runs. Uh, so yeah, Yuna is sitting fifth overall. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> sitting fifth over, yeah. fifth overall, and that's not just a fluke. That is after three full rounds of yeah. competitive racing. Uh, Where's Daniel? He's 16. Daniel's 16th. Michael's not that old in yeah, 15th. Yeah, Michael's very young as well. Uh, Jesper's in 19th. Wesley in 20th. Wow, another super young talent. It's well, we can't call Ben young anymore, can we? We can, we can for the purposes of this thing. All oh, right, okay. L little Ben. No. Where's um, where's Malin at? Can you scroll down a bit, please? Yeah, let's try and jump straight to. Do you like my little birthday birthday thing? Yes, that was really nice. So forty third. Wow. <laughs> that's, wow. That's, I don't think we'd be in. We we wouldn't be in the forties, would we, if we were here? No, I wouldn't racing. even be here. If <laughs> I was nine years of age. Hang on, look who's below her. Former European Peter champion Pinnish. Peter Pinnish. Wow. So she raced. She raced Ellis in two wheel drive. Yeah. So she might end up racing <laughs> Peter in four wheel drive. I mean, uh, she's high up there. You know, what What are her scores then? 38th, 40th, and 48th. So, again, a consistency. That's the thing that's coming yeah. through there. It's not, again, not she's not had one lucky run or something. No. She's been, she had three three and scores that are going to put her around that place. And she's in a tough heat. I think she's yeah. heat seven? Seven or eight, yeah. Yeah, seven. So and 43rd. Wow. I mean, I just... Absolutely gobsmack. You know what can you say? Wow, it's got to be absolutely melting the internet worldwide, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it has. I mean, all the comments we're getting is about the young kids at the moment. Everything we see on the on the chat. Yes, people have got their folks at the top and they're rooting for either Yorn or Lee. It seems at the very top. So yeah. A few people, the X-ray fans, rooting for rooting for Martin. But um, it's the amount of respect these youngsters have gained is is just crazy. It's just yeah. uh, sorry. Just looking at my phone. I'll tell you in a second. Oh dear. <laughs> okay. No, no, in. no, no. We'll tell you now. No, it's um. From Daniel Person, ah, yes. who is my longest Swedish friend, right? who couldn't be here this weekend. Oh, that's a shame. Or this week. This week? It's a w um, whole week long, really. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, he's a legend, but that's what he keeps telling me to say. Right. Um, he is a legend. BBQ, as he's known by. Ah, yes. ATM, but we can't go into that. Okay. That's like a cash point. Yes. But. Ah. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it obviously withdraws a lot of money. Yes. yes. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. it. He um he had twins. Well his wife Aww. had twins or his, his woman, wife, girlfriend. Congratulations. Yep, and um it's been quite tough on him because he's running a business as well. Yep. And uh it just wasn't possible for him to get away and come down here. That's a shame, but uh no sir. It is a shame. I was trying to talk him into coming down tomorrow. Yep. I know just it's tough on the his missus. See if he can pop down for the day. Couldn't he get someone and he I know he could hop on a plane and be down here, you know, in less than an hour. Yeah. I'm sure we could have a whip around to cover his costs. I'm sure they'd just come and show his face. Love to see him here. Definitely. I, I know they would. He he is sadly missed. Indeed. You know, full stop from the racing scene where he's been out of it. You know, doing the family thing. Yeah. One of what, the great characters, I guess, say? in uh, particularly yeah. in the off-road racing. And uh, yeah, he'll, he'll be back. You know, he'll be back with with the the kids. Yes. And. Uh, you know, maybe they'll be future champions. Well, maybe so they'll be doing what uh, Malin is at uh, yeah. five years of age. Who knows? And uh, t interesting talking of kids, I just had a chat with uh, with Lee Martin. Obviously, Lee's uh, yes. become a dad second time fairly recently. Yep. And uh, his older one, Scott, apparently already has four or five cars that are his own. Not just his dad's <laughs> old ones, but his own ones. And uh, if you haven't seen the video of um, on Facebook, and it's, I think it's also on Neobug as well, and on our Facebook group, of the McDonald's yeah, jump. That was awesome. Um, that, that, that's a Mugen Truggy that was used, and is apparently it? Scott Clown claims that is his. Oh, right. So okay. <laughs> his dad's not so sure about it, but uh, <laughs> he knows he's going to be up racing very, very soon. So probably if he's got any of his talent his dad's got, then he'll be yeah. up there racing very, very quickly. Exactly, and I'm sure he'll be nurtured and, and taught in the right way. Yep. All the years of experience that, you know, Lee was kind of self-taught. He had a lot of people that helped him along the way. Yes. But... Um, could you imagine having that sort of knowledge and talent and connections and being able to pass it on and you know the time and to be able to dedicate to a, to a young, young yeah. your young son like that would be just amazing. Fantastic. So well, uh, just real quickly, Daniel, I know you're listening. If you can make it down, please do. Yes. Just come say hi. Come say hi. Just come. You down are a legend. Hi. You know you're a legend. 
Yeah. And we'll get you on here and you could come sit where um, I am. Definitely. And you could chat. Absolutely. There you go. What what about that? For you yeah. know, If that's not going to get him down here, nothing that's will. That's got to force him to come <laughs> down here. I mean, I've sat over there. It's been a busy day. We've had a lot of a lot of work to do because there's been a lot of missed laps with transponders and stuff. Yeah. We're trying to be really fair. We've given everyone the opportunity to put them back. You know, we, we've got a backup system. So okay. a lot of... Made a lot of mislaps on the main system are showing on the backup system and then yep. we can count through it and verify it but there's a lot of manual counting and maths and it all has to be done correctly and they've just been working so hard over there bless them stefan is a great guy very very talented absolutely yeah, actually got a little bit stressed oh really <laughs> yeah. if he's getting stressed then the other things are getting pretty yeah. bad um so just want to quickly explain what what's what the issues are i guess people are facing so their transponders not picking up the, si the transponder loop not picking up the signal correctly from some yeah cars. i mean you know, learning quite a bit about how it works, the way a transponder works. Um, it sends out a signal, and I, I must admit, I've learned today about them. I would think it just shoots the signal straight down to the ground, and it picks up when you go across the loop, which is a wire buried in the track. And it does send the signal straight down, but more in a cone-type shape. Okay. And apparently it doesn't send signals very good through metals, aluminium or, or steel. Yeah. So... Actually, if you put the transponder higher up, it has a chance of sending down the cone-shaped signal around the outside of the chassis, and you're getting a lapse back. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So we've been helping a lot of people, moving them, advising them. So and I guess a lot of the four-wheel drive cars are now running aluminium chassis. Yes, Which is exactly. then weakening the signal, I guess, if people are mounting on the aluminium parts. It is indeed. So we're trying to run the meeting, call the cars in, start them off, fix the laps, advise people on putting their PTs in the right place, yep. along with all the other problems and <laughs> questions, or problem, questions and things no, that deal with. Normal things you get, yes. You know, it's been a, it's been a roller coaster ride. I mean, I'm having a great time. You know, and I, as you just sat there and said about the, the kids and, you know, when's last time there's been so many kids, I just <laughs> thought to myself, wow, how lucky am I to be here yeah. and be part of it and uh, say, yeah. I was there and I got to commentate on them and I speak to them and they all come over and, take photos with them and yeah gives me chills i tell you the best the best moment i have had so far to be perfectly honest of this euros was uh when daniel won the b final in yeah. the two-wheel drive class he came out and the number of people that were going up and giving him high yeah. fives yeah it, it was it was just people from every team yes every exactly. country we going up there it's just the appreciation that and the the family of the racers kind of uh, absolutely draw together and i think that's great and now i know i'm, to be honest, I'm glad i'm not then because <laughs> Whether they feel it or not, but the pressure's going to be on them now. They probably yeah. won't notice it because they're kids, and that's yeah. probably an advantage. But everyone is now watching those go those guys. They are. They, they absolutely are. I mean, I spoke to Craig Drescher a bit about it. Yeah. And he said they do have lots of plans to do a lot more um, traveling and international-type meetings. Mm -hmm. That would be great. These, these kids are 10 years of age, and they're, like, planning world tours of them already. <laughs> You know, it's, it's got to be massive headline world news. I'm probably yeah. saying the same thing over and over, but sitting here watching them, you know, you watch them in the pits and they run around and they play and they're kids. Yeah. they got such a cool demeanor about them and the way they handle themselves. Yeah. I'm certainly impressed, like, if they, they crash on the track and get behind, you know, a superstar and the superstar leaves, you know, half a, half a gap and they just stuff it up the inside and yes. try and straight <laughs> past the superstar. Yep. Yeah, we've you certainly seen that. Think, oh my God, you know, Ellis Stafford or, or whoever it might yeah. be. And you'd be, oh, just got to move out of his way. They're not. They're like, I'm faster than you. I'm going. Yeah, it's, it's, it really is quite remarkable. And I don't know whether it's, it's well, we were going to say it might be the track and them being used to two-wheel drive, but they're now out there in four-wheel drive yes. as well. So it's, this is genuine pace we are yeah. seeing from them. It's not a one-off flash in the pan. So no. I really... I'm really looking forward to see how far they go, to be honest, in the next year or yeah. so. You know, I mean, or can you scroll back up the list? What, yep. What's unit counting then? Because that, that might be him in. You know, he might uh, be He's there. got a third, a third in the first round yeah. and sixth in round three. So nine points should get you into the main. Yeah, th that's pretty much job done for him, isn't it? Yep. Wow. <laughs> I mean, uh, just looking down the list to see who else might be able to bump up in there. You know, Martin Bayer could do it. Neil yeah. Craig's been fast. Yes. What's he counting? Actually, that's surprising. Neil Craig with an eighth and a thirteenth. So, so really, you know, tomorrow's, he's got to start from scratch tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, he'd need, you know, a couple of top fives or at least, you know, a, a win in a round to have a chance just yeah. to make it in there. Yeah. Uh, Martin El Bayer El again the same. Yeah, sorry, Martin Bayer, the, the same thing. Um, Ellis has gone well, but... 
What's yep. the countdown on that? Uh, point at the scores. 10 and 14. Oh, all right, I'm with you. 10 and so a 14. <laughs> so with a 10, a you got to say no. Yeah, you have. That's 10 is his best score. You know, Michael Orlowski, he's got a he's chance. Got, he's got the, Yeah, he's got that four in that last round. So, you know, another solid top 10 at the and moment may well be enough to get him in there. And what's that for Daniels? That is six. Daniels got six as well. So wow. if he can get another another six, maybe enough to get him in. Yeah. Um, I guess normally we look at around 16 points-ish to make it into the main. What was it for a two-wheel drive? I think it was about Ooh. 12, wasn't it? You could always look that up. That would be a very sensible thing to do. Yeah. Very unlike us. <laughs> we like a bit of sensible. Bear with it. Computer's working. Yeah. Well, you're pretty good on the computer, better than me. I have to look around these pages an awful lot. I know <laughs> all the buttons I need. Yeah, so 10th in the main, in two-wheel drive, was Tom Cockle with 13, 13 points, a fifth and an eighth. And there's a pretty big gap after that. Yeah. So, uh, so fairly, fairly safe. Pro probably 12, 12 points, a good big save, yeah. we yeah. think. But it depends how all the rounds fall, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And if it's different people taking the fast, the fast point in this round, then it's going to be less points needed to get in. So... Wow. Amazing. Really exciting, yeah. Yeah, it is. And we've still got another day to go. Yeah. More qualifying and then the actual race. Two more well. finals and then we get into the serious, well, more serious stuff of the actual finals. I was going to say, the, the qualifying is just so exciting. Could the racing be even more exciting? Well, you know, if we're going to have 10 cars running nose to tail around this difficult circuit, yeah. as we saw in two-wheel drive, anything can happen. That's it, and you know, with his confidence, you know, if he's starting if you've got fifth, sixth, seventh on the grid, he doesn't need, like I say, he doesn't need a, a second invitation to yeah. put a move on somebody. Absolutely, those guys are not scared of the uh, the expected favourites. Yeah. So we'll see. Right. There you go. So not long left, and we can uh, go yep. have a nice dinner and we can a nice cold drink somewhere. Absolutely. I think uh, we're going to go and check out that Thai place you went to last yeah. night. Was that good? It was good, but it was really hot in there. What was it? Yeah. Proper. We'll Del Scorgio. We'll get a couple more drinks on the table for us. Yeah, that's a good idea. Good. Yeah. Might One that. to tap on your head and cool you down like yeah. that. All right. I wanted to go off the bits and talk to yep, Hooper, so he did go that round. Daniel. Daniel Pearson. Get yeah, down here. Get, get on the plane. Go and get on the plane. The legend. He's a legend. I keep saying that. Legend. Yeah. Get on the plane. Well, thanks very much, guys. I'm going to go straight over and like that uh, Jesper fan yeah. page. Yeah, Jesper Rasmussen fan page on Facebook. Go and check it out. Yeah, fantastic. Right, well, yeah. thank you very much, Ollie. Not a problem, DC. All right, and, see you uh, in a bit. We'll see you a little bit later on, or probably tomorrow. All right. You'll, you'll be here tomorrow, won't you? Got yeah. some work to do then? I think so. Yeah, I might pop back. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see how Malin does. See though. how Malin does. That is why we're all here. All right, see you later, guys. DC, thank you very much. Right, so as I said there, I will run into the pits now and grab a word with our TQ driver from round number three of qualifying, Hupo Honigal. Um, let's see if we can find him. I bet he is rather happy. But I can't even see, he's not even at his pit table at the moment. That's, oh, that's because he's down chatting to his good friend Yorn. Here he is, down here at the far end. And so we've got a few guys wearing cars. Hupo, I'll have a quick word with you if that's alright. TQ round number three, must be really pleased. Yes, I am, of course. A little bit shocked as well, or do you think you always had the pace in the car? Well, I have the pace in the car for top three. If, uh, like, Jorn does not make a mistake. I think he's the only one who's really quicker. So it's going to be really close then as we go into tomorrow. Two more rounds of qualifying. Um, you're going to make any changes either to the car or your approach as we go into those rounds now you've got that one TQ run? Well, we, I think we have another practice run tomorrow, so I will try something and, yeah, but even better. Uh, did you ever expect, I guess, the first year with your new team to be in a position where you're now? I guess you've got to be said to be challenging for the European title. Well, after, after I tried the cars first time, I thought I knew they are good, so... Uh, Pretty much, yes. Well, that's, it's good to see you've got a team now. You've got a team that's going to you know, put you in that position to, to fight for the title. Um, I guess good luck in the last two qualifiers tomorrow and uh, see how far the good you can get. If you can battle this guy here next year, John Norman, Lee Martin, all the other drivers, it's really, really close in forward drive. So um, thanks for talking to us. And uh, any final thoughts? Why are, so, why are drivers so close in this class? 
Well, uh, everybody gets uh, already four days of practice, even, included with two wheel drive, so four wheel drive is always clo uh, closer together. Because everyone's learned the crap by then. Yes. Well, good luck tomorrow, and we'll catch up with you then. Thank you very much. I hope I will take you round number three of qualifying here. We're here at 2014 Four Wheel Drive Off Road European Championships. We are brought to you by Team Durango and the DEX 410 V4, by J Concepts and by VRC Pro. Thank you to all of them, and of course, thank you to Effort as well. Thank you to all of you for watching along with us. I'm going to head back up to the box now, and uh, I'm actually going to see if James can take over for a little bit, because I need to do a little bit of podcasting before we go tonight, as we move into the final few rounds, final few heats in this one. Uh, let's just check where we are up to. So this is group number three. And we're going to run all the way through to group number six. So you've got about four groups left. So, and that's it for today. I can do three groups. I should have enough waffle to last. Okay. Okay. Right. Where shall I start? I don't think there's any people waiting to join the group. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't already, you can go to our Facebook page. Uh, if you're not a member of our group, Type in RC Racing TV, three words, top left, search, click join. Once our uh, team of high phone monkeys have confirmed that you're not, in fact, a spammer or a seller of counterfeit goods, um, we, will, we will join you. So that case, you can't like us, but you can join us. Um, once you've done that, uh, head over, take a look at Ollie's post, which is very near the top of the page. I believe. Let's have a look here. Okay, so it's pinched the top. Um, and it's from Ali, so it's another competition. Basically, you have two questions to ask that transfer. Uh, how thick are the fiber shot mounts on a few of Cat K1 arrow? That's question number one. Question number two, how long did it take between ordering our lunch today? It was yesterday. Cafe to receive in the food in minutes and seconds. That's our private question. Pop those answers into the uh, into the comments of the question, and who knows, you might win yourself a few matter cat competition for your guys' puppy. Cat for one hour. And to find out some information for question number one, you might want to pop to the two matter website. It might be on there. It might not. Who knows? To be able to enter that competition, you need to be a real person, not an organisation or a pet, for instance. You need to be a real person because we like to give real things to real people. If you're an organisation, and that's the organisation, I'm sure you've got plenty of trials already. Um, yeah, so come join us. Pop over to the comments. I thought you were going to tell them, you kids. I did see some comments earlier that I wanted to mention, but also, before we go any further, before I forget, uh, here's dedication for you. A big shout out saying, Hello, watching you from a copter and combine harvester near the track. That's R H R Bird. Is that our track? Are you at? Or near your track? I'm not sure. Either way, that's dedication for you, watching from agricultural equipment. Um, yeah, I don't think there's uh, anything to stop that yet. There's been some nice speakers, we've been in an aquarium, but from a tractor. Do tractors have Wi Fi? Or are you just picking up 3G? I wonder. Well, I hope you've nearly finished playing, you've earned that time, harvesting your field anyway. Um, and uh, if you haven't, I hope you get that done soon. So, let's have a look back through the comments. Yep, here in the flow better. Sorry about the whole stereo mono. It was. We had one cable dry and one go faulty, but hopefully I'm, I'm keeping my eye on it now. And when it uh, goes mono again, I have to quizzle them. Uh, that's all I can do. Uh, we've only got 24-ish uh, hours left anyway until we pack all of our equipment up, head back to the hotel, and fly back on Sunday. What will we do on Saturday morning? Who knows? Still on my Kia. Um, 
Are they running on compelled tires? Yes, I think that Andrew Stelvagri has answered that for you anyway, with open insert. Can they use traction compound? I heard Ollie say, no, if you want to use traction compound, they're going to race on road. I did point out at the time that it was a bit of a handbag comment. Uh, from Nick Donovan, hey guys, the call has had a small start in the corner telling you overall top 10. It would be cool, but two things there. The more you put on the screen, the less you are going to see. What I would recommend uh, is going to myrcm.ch. Find the event that you are watching or you are interested in and all of the live information on there. Current standings. Uh, you can even get, uh, I, say, I say live timing, almost live timing. Um, very similar. Uh, if you want more information on what's been shown in the top right-hand corner now. Um, so yeah, I would head over to there. I think we need an international slash pit crew race. How do you mean? I'm not familiar with that. Not, is that where people behind the scenes have a race? I want to get my hands on one of these actually, because this is my favourite class of all the classes that I have been involved with from a media point of view. Um, Are they using slips with this compound? No, I think that was answered a bone. Yes, it's, yes, but it's 15. Uh, they are using simple green to clean the tires, which seem to use a lot. Oh, uh, winky face, yes, I wonder why. Tires are J Concept Barco V2, front and rear. Hi guys. No. Um, don't mind uh, giving shout out to uh, to other remote control car organisations or events that are going on. Uh, it's good to support the whole of the RC world, but uh, non RC related things, unfortunately. Yeah, we uh, we don't give shout outs to them. Uh, that reminds me, talking to shout outs. Hello to EFRA of EFRA.WS, the governing body behind uh, the Euro uh, champion, the European Championships that we're watching now. Hello to Team Durango with the DEX 410V2, uh, which has been out on the track today, may be out on the track now, lots of drivers using it. VRC Pro, and of course, hello to the guys over at jconcepts.net. Uh, I believe you were watching from your offices in America. I don't know if you still are. I'm assuming you are. Hello. So, we have group four, five, and six. And then we are done for the day. We finish qualifying tomorrow morning, and then we go into the finals. Same format as the two-wheel drive. Everyone has one final, except for the A finalists, which have a practice run and an A1, A2, and A3 final. Depending on where the drivers position, those three the winner of the A final can be decided after the second race. Sometimes it happens that way, sometimes it doesn't. Of course, don't forget, 
you can head over to neobuggy.net where Phil's been uploading loads of photos, articles, and videos from the week's event. Oh, Andrew Salvaggi, RCTV set up whilst in hospital, keeping me busy at 1am in Australia. Wow. That's dedication for you. God, you really are in hospital as well, I can, I can tell. It's dedication, that deserves a like. I wonder what the... Uh, I wonder what the um, guys are doing on large scale. Are they still broadcasting? It looks like they are. Nick asked me what time we're going on tomorrow. We'll be on tomorrow from 10 a.m. local time. That is 9 a.m. UK time at GMT. <laughs> Fanta. Are you guys not getting tired of seeing all the RT racing? No. No, we're not. It is a long week for us. I think this is the only event of the year where it's back to back. Um, so, yes, we do two events the two wheel drive and the four wheel drive. Usually, it's a, we usually do a, a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, usually. But it is a long week. But no, we don't get bored of it. 
So much lag. So much lag on the stream, Fanta. Hmm. Group five with three minutes left. That means there's five, eight. Eight minutes left till the end of the day. Don't forget to enter the competition if you haven't already. Tim Edwards, why does it keep freezing? Oh, I don't know. The connection looks good here. What I would suggest is pressing pause for about 30 seconds and then pressing play. Don't click live and that will give you effectively a 30 second buffer. I would recommend doing that. Don't think we'll be doing. Don't think we'll be doing any pit walks tomorrow because we have to set our equipment up in a different way so that we can record the footage, to make highlight clips, and for the TV show. No doubt Ollie will be going off and taking the microphone out for a wander, um, but it's just more difficult to take the camera on final days, so we won't be doing that. I hope that this week we've um, gone into a bit more bit more technical detail for you. I've, uh, I've learnt a lot from Ollie. Uh, the questions I've asked Ollie aren't kind of set up or, you know, they are uh, genuine questions that maybe the, uh, the not-so-experienced RC racers out there might be wondering, things like, mid diffs and brushless motors and all those kind of things um there'll be more kind of coverage like that as we do the different events uh, throughout the rest of the year um feel free to feedback if there's things you would like to see or things you would not like to see anything we can do to improve your viewing experience we'd definitely be interested in hearing from you No problem, Tim. Fifteen seconds left of group three. Oh, group five, sorry, of qualifying three. Fanta, I should have been with and helped Jasper, but I could not take the whole 
I could not take off a whole week. What do you do for a living then? Do you have a job? Are you at school? What could you not take a week off from? How do you know, Jesper? on the track, the last qualifying heat for today. Let's tell you who the early leader is. Dimitri, Max, Oscari, Tobias, Oliver, Tony, Felix, Sammy, Lars. You might be able to hear Ollie in the background slightly during his podcast. That will be available soon on rcracing.tv. I'm best friends with Jesper and train with him all the time when I'm not working. Aha, I didn't realise you knew him that well. Three minutes left of group six. Who is car number three in this race? Uh, Tobias, Tobias Nilsson. Just watching him out the track at the moment. He's racing 
very fluidly. Just kind of standing out because he's overtaking loads of people and racing very, very well. And he's down in group six. Don't get me wrong. It's not a bad thing. Just surprised with that style of driving that he's down there. Maybe he's just not got the speed. He's definitely got the right technique. Who knows? over 45 minutes and we'll be closed in the building so have that in mind please So that wraps up Fast Friday here 
at the 2014 four-wheel drive off-road European Championships. Thank you to everyone for taking part on our Facebook group, on the YouTube chat, and just for watching along throughout the whole day, however much you've seen of it. We've had three fantastic rounds of qualifying, three super, super close rounds of qualifying, and who would have thought we'd be standing here at the end of this day with three different drivers taking a round win? Lee Martin took round one, your Neumann taking round two, and Hooper Honegel taking round three. That stacks up for a really intense day of qualifying tomorrow. The battle for pole position really is on. I want to say a big thank you to all of our sponsors, Team Durango and the DEX 410 V4, VRC Pro, and, of course, J Concepts, as a couple of the organisers now get a chance to drive around the track as the track is closed for all the competitors. We'll be back tomorrow here on RC Racing TV. Make sure you join us then. Two more rounds of qualifying and then the important three-leg A-finals. All the action is right here, live on RC, RC Racing TV. We kick off 10 a.m. Swedish time, 9 a.m. time in the UK. Join us. You will not want to miss it.